the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal is a corruption of Mumtaz, T-H-E Mahal, the name of Shah Jahan's queen, whose tomb it forms. It is situated at Agra in the northwestern provinces of India and is a mausoleum of white marble decorated with mosaics, which, for the richness of the material, the chasteness of the design, and the effect, at once brilliant and solemn, is not surpassed by any other edifice, either in Europe or Asia. The building on the outside is of white marble with a high cupola and four minarets. A lofty hall of a circular form lies in the center of the inside, under a dome, in the middle of which is situated the tomb, surrounded by an open screen of well-worked tracery composed of marbles and mosaics. The walls are also of white marble, their borders being decorated with flowers and mosaic. The materials used for the mosaic work are lapis lazuli, jasper, heliotrope, a sort of golden stone not well understood, with chalcedony and other agates, carnelians, jade, and similar other stones. A single flower on the screen, says Mr. Voise, Asiatic Research's vol. V contains a hundred stones, each cut to the exact shape necessary and highly polished. The mosaics are said to be the workmanship of Italians. It is singular, remarks an eminent historian, that artists of that nation should receive lessons of taste from the Indians. 856 appendices, views of Arabic and Persian writers on gems and stones, the formation of stones, Arabio, Uzur, Persian, Sung, Hindi, Puthur, fine pieces of earth are transformed into stones when they remain close and compact for a length of period and take into their elementary watery substance, the elements of heat and dryness. Of the four elements that combine to produce stones, viz, heat, cold, dryness, and moisture, the predominance of one or more over the others gives rise vo the difference in their color. For example, white is the color of those stones in which cold and moisture exist in large proportions. Where they do in small proportions, the stones become blackish. Where heat and dryness prevail, the stones get a red hue. Where they have less predominance, the resulting color is yellow. Where the proportion of heat is greater than that of moisture, the stones turn black and hard. But where both these elements are in small proportions, the stones assume the color of the ijibird. Where the heat and moisture are in equal proportions, the stones take the color which is produced by the mixture of white and red, where these two qualities are in unequal proportions. The stones differ in color and quality, viz., where heat preponderates the treatise on gems, 857. Stones become blacker and harder than those where it does not, and where moisture prevails, they become whiter and softer. The inequality of the elements in the composition of the stones in particular portions of them determines the color and quality of the parts so affected. It is simply an error on the part of European writers on jewelry to assert that the use of stones externally or internally has no practical influence over the human body or mind. The diamond, its properties, varieties, ANSI, Arabic, Emshersha, Persian, Almesha, Hindustani here, and Sanskrit, Hiraka. The diamond is a very hard and dry mineral and is found in a variety of colors, white, yellow, red, black, and greenish, called in Hindustani tabli, the white specimens full of flaws are found in abundance. The red, yellow, black, greenish, and the flawless Kalish ones, i.e., those stones which do not show through them tinges of any other color but their own, are rare. The spotless Kalish stones of a white or any other color fetch the highest value in the market if they are of a good large size. The birthplace of the diamond lies principally in the Deccan, about KLKNR, Golconda, John PNN, Pana, and the Kokaf Mountains. The way to find out the exact locality of the diamond in the Deccan is to dig up a hole in the ground and fill it up with water, then watch at sunrise the part which a sudden flash of the lightning may illumine at that time, and then to unearth the treasure which is sure to lie buried there. The brilliance of the diamond cannot be noticed in its primitive state, but it has to be brought out by the skill of the huck or the cutters and polishers of gems. The diamond is also found in T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-G-E-M-S, 859. The new island in the south known as Borazil, Brazil, but these specimens cannot approach the produce of the Golconda mines in clearness and hardness. The quality of the white diamonds cannot be ascertained until they are cleaned by the hooke in the wedding instrument, by being first stuck to a piece of wood by means of shellac, and then rubbed over by the dust of the black variety. Like the tail and a species of yellow arsenio known as the Bansi Patri Haritala, the diamond is full of joints which are in some cases so impercoptable as to defy detection. In others, they are visible to the human eye and can be opened out by those only who are acquainted with the nature of the thing. Those who assert that the diamond CAN be out by glass labor under a grievous error. 
Whenever it breaks, it always does so in triangular pieces. This stone obtains different names, accord, ing to its classifications. Nasadari are those which resemble the carbonate of ammonia in color, and whose inside is clear as looking glass. Cabrast are those which have a silvery hue. Those that are white, but have less of the intensity of color than that of the Nansadari, go by the names of Kadan and Jayon. Some people give the palm of excellence to the last variety. Such specimens 88 have the ulur of the iron in them are known 88 Almash, HDF. The diamond is incombustible, but it can be burnt by the Hindustani Hakima, medical practitioners, in combination with other. 860 appendices. Substances, the powder so obtained being said to cure several kinds of diseases. The diamond is a dry stone and possesses the coolness of the fourth class. Some ascribe to it heating properties, marvelous and medicinal properties. Iron worn, the diamond has the virtue of imparting health to the body and of dispelling fear. It assuages the sufferings of a tedious labor pain and brings on safe and speedy delivery if tied around the thighs of the woman about to be confined. It destroys all enemies if worn in the arms and cures epilepsy if worn in the arms after being cut into a hexagonal shape. If, in combination with other ingredients, it is used as a denifrice, it renders the teeth bright and hard. But it is better not to use it for such a purpose, as the presence of a single particle in the stomach may produce death. If kept close to the teeth, it causes their fall. It is a fatal poison. If by accident someone takes a quantity of it, his life should not be considered safe until he is made to vomit it out by means of drinking. A quantity of fresh cow's milk without being boiled, or some heated clarified butter obtained from cow's milk, or by any other means, such as by applying the fingers to the inside of the throat. The soup of some fatty flesh is then to be given to the patient to complete the recovery. Ruby, eh, YCT, its varieties ANSI. The YCT is one of the best of gems and a favorite of men. It is found in a very, thank you of colors, red, yellow, kabood, i.e. black, ish, green, white, and of the color of pistachio nuts. Of each of these colors, there are different degrees. Of all the specimens, that which goes by the name of Romani, or the color of the pomegranate, is considered to be the best. It is very hard, spotless, and has reflecting powers like looking glass. The largest and the properly cut ones fetch the highest value. Of red YCTs, the following are some of the subdivisions. Circo Homri, or very red. Circo Ordi, or rose red. Circo Nrungi, or of the color of the orange. Circo Jeferni, or of the color of the saffron and Circo Namui, or of that of the ripe lemon. The following are some of the varieties of the Kabut. Kabut Ashram Guni, or of the hue of the sky. Kabut Koheli, or of the color of Serm, a powder AP. Applied to the eyes. Kabut Diberti, or of the color produced by the combination of blue and chimney, and Kabut Pesti, or of the color of the peas. Tachio nuts, a rare specimen. That kind of YCT, which is hard, clear, and has its color, whatever. 86% appendices. It may be evenly spread, without showing the faintest tinge of any other, commands the admiration of all jewel mongers. The yacht is next to the diamond in hardness. The following is the order in the scale of hardness among the varieties, kabood, red and pesty ones, and the white one, of the red specimens, circo homri, circo ordi, circo narungi, circo jafrani, and circo lamui, of the kabood ones, kabood ashimni, kabood koheli, and kabood lajaburdi. The perfectly red specimens are called in Hindi, Amnik, or Padam, and in English, Ruby. The yellow ones are known in Arabic as Bordke, in Hindi, Pokar DJ, and in English, Zobas, Topas. The blue ones are designated in Persian, A8 Neelam, in Hindi, Nilmund, and in English, Saphir, Sapphire, P. The Yakut is found in the mines of sulfur and mercury. It is known that this stone is met with at Pegu, but the place about the mines is perfectly uninhabitable, as the earth thereof is black and hard and frequently emits a sulfurous smell, is surrounded by large trees, and is dry and rent in parts. And, lastly, is the scene of a good deal of storm and thunder in the rainy season. The fakirs, wandering mendicants, and the poor, who with difficulty collect stones from these hardly accessible mines, have, according to the laws of the country, to sell them to the king. If private party buys them surreptitiously, and the fact becomes known, the whole of his estate becomes escheated to the treatise on gems. 863. Government. It is said that a certain King Bad once attempted to proceed to the mines with and grant. And the moon enters the Pisces and use it as a ring on the little finger of the left hand. The eye can secure freedom from all diseases and calamities. This ring is also good for assuaging the pains of delivery when worn by the laboring woman. 
if this stone be cut into the figure of a fish at the period of the moon's entering the cancer and be fixed near the fishing hook by means of lead, it will enable the fisher to land a good number of fishes. It is asserted by the medical authorities that wine taken in a cup of this stone does not intoxicate the drinker. The turquoise, Arabic, Ferazuj, Persian, Pharos, its properties, varieties, ANSI, the turquoise has the color of the cerulean. Vault, it is to be found in Nishapur, Kozund, Kerman, Jal, Ajayan, in the mountains that surround Shiraz and the Vivinda provinces. The largest, clearest, and consequently the best stones are met with at Nishapur. The test of the purity of its color is that it should look bright by day and pale by night. The turquoise is divided into eight classes, viz, Fata, Azari, Solom, Durlu, Shemenjian, Abdulhamd, Inleshi, and Gunjnid. The first five varieties have the khaki or earthy color. The rest are found in the mountains of Vinna and are considered to be inferior in quality. The turquoise can be manufactured by mixing five parts of fresh sulfur and one part of mercury, putting the mixture in a cold ground for a period of seven years, and exposing it for the whole time to the rays of the sun and of the star called Zohul. Those stones that are found in Kerman and Shiraz have a tinge of the white in them and are therefore designated Sabnagi or Sherboom. Those that come from Nishapur, Kozund, and Azro Ajin have a dash of the blue in them, and hence their name, Nilboom. The produce of the Kerman mines nowadays turns out better than that of the Nishapur ones. A treatise on gems, 888. The turquoise has the dryness of the first class and the coolness of the third. Marvelous in medicinal properties. The turquoise possesses the virtues of the Bish stone. It cures all diseases of the head and the heart. By application over the eyes in the shape of surma, it increases their luster, prevents the fall of fluid therefrom, brings back the color of the pupils if they get white, and restores natural vision to those who are almost blind at night. It is an sovereign remedy for hernia, swellings, flatulence, dyspepsia, insanity, and ulcers inside the stomach or abdomen. In combination with other ingredients, it would relieve and cure the pains and swelling of the body caused by assault. Whether taken with other drugs or simply with honey, it has the power of curing epilepsy, spleen, stricture, ando. In cases of poisoning or snake bite, a derm or an quarter tola weight of turquoise should be given with wine. For scorpion bites, a third of this quantity would suffice. But as the above prescription may cause harm to the stomach, it should always have added to it a quantity of cattle. Hakim Aristotelis, Aristotle P., has limited the dose to one-eighth of a tola. Worn on the fingers as a ring, the turquoise brings about happiness of mind, dispels fear, ensures victory over enemies, and removes all chances of getting drowned or being struck with lightning, or of being bitten by snakes or scorpions. He who, after looking at the moon on the Pratapada, the first day after new moon, casts his eyes over this stone, becomes the master of fabulous wealth. 884 appendices, a gate, Persian kick, its varieties A and C, the hardest, clearest, and best specimens of. This stone are found in Yemen. Others are too, be met with in Kambalaya and in the banks of the seas surrounding the empire of Rome. It is found to be of various colors, red, yellow, white, black, party-colored, and bicolored. But none of these colors is durable. Circojagri is the name given to those stones, the redness of which is more intense inside than on the surface, SDF suck, to those that are clear, and have reflecting powers like those of the looking glass, Anisbag gay suk, to those which are not very clear and have not the reflecting powers of a looking glass, black, to those which are partly white and partly black, and JT of KT, such as have joints like the talc and can be separated scale by scale. When taken out of the mines, the akik exhibits very little color, but shows a degree of clearness and reflecting power. The following is the mode of coloring it. Put an akik inside an earthen, or in its absence, a copper vessel, half filled with water and tightly closed, and expose it to a brisk fire from the sides and a slow heat from the bottom, till the stone attains the desirable color. The lapidary's work would not affect this color at all. Sudri are those specimens. Treatise on gems. 885 which have the figure of a tree or hill in them, Jatap KTT, are also known as the Juza. There are other specimens which can be cut breadthwise and which are, if possessed of circular marks, called Uzur Solemni, and in Persian, Bibiguri. All these varieties are hard and form the ingredients of the Bish stone. The Aki possesses the dryness and coolness of the second class, the former in eight less developed form, marvelous and medicinal virtues. Various qualities are ascribed to this stone by the Mohammedan authorities. It cures insanity when administered with water or with the sherbet of the fruit shoe, a kind of apple. It proves eight sovereign remedy for hemorrhage in the genital organs or in the rectum. 
for the spitting of blood coming out of the heart or stomach, for the unusual discharge of the menstrual fluid, for worms in the stomach, for swollen, hard boils and porous ulcers, gravels and spleen, when taken with some medicine or with a quantity of water. As a serum, it adds luster to the eyes. It prevents the bleeding of the gums and renders them hard when applied to the parts as a burnt powder mixed with that of the bod stone and that of the Mar W. Juris peep softens the anger of the wearer and prevents his quarreling with others. The use of such stones, Akik Lahamik, as have the reddishness of the water after washing raw flesh in the shape of finger rings prevents bleeding of all kinds. The wearer strikes terror into the heart of his enemies, obtains his heart's wishes from the gods, and becomes free from pain in the breast. He who attends the royal court, rubbing over his mouth the oil of Jaitul, he, with camphor, musk, and kick, secures very great honors and the favor of the king and of all others. The Akik confers upon the wearer all the blessings that the use of the turquoise does. Its internal use may do harm to the stomach, but this can be avoided by mixing it with katir, or, in its absence, with the basid stone. It, of, basud, Arabic, kojul, gr, kojulanun, lat, Kularen, pure Arabic, Nasef, Pers, Basud. T would be wrong to say that the Basud is the root of the mergent stone, coral. It has a distinct identity. It is a hard substance, full, pores like the nests of wasps, and is found in the seashores in the kingdoms of Yemen, Ambien, Persia, Maldives, and of the other adjacent islands. The Basud, mistaken by some people for a kind of seaweed, is brought by the waves to the shore where, with the help of air, it gets hard. To separate this stone from merge, with which it is often confounded, the following experiment will be found useful. Grind both the stones into. Find powder and put each in a separate glass mixed with water. The vessel holding mergen will be found to contain gelatinous substances sticking to its bottom, whereas the one containing basud will show no such thing. The best specimens of basud are red, clear, and have the reflecting powers of the looking glass. The white vridis are good to look at, the black ones become very hard. Basud possesses heat of the first class and dryness of the second. 888 appendices. Marvelous and medicinal properties. Used as a medicine, baud is a good astringent and prevents excess of urine or motions. It takes away the mischief-making influence of the devil over the human mind. Cures all kinds of ulcers, epilepsy, insanity, caused by the combination of phlegm and bile. Dyspepsia, gravels, spleen, piles. Spitting of blood of all sorts, discharge of bloody motions, stoppage of urine, and so forth. Half eight mescal, i.e., 24 mashes of basud mixed with half. The quantity of the gummy substance produced by the neem tree and with the white of fowl's eggs is an efficacious remedy for the spitting of blood or for the enlargement of the spleen and C and C. This stone takes off all fleshy protuberances caused by ulcers and already moves all signs of them when rubbed over the parts affected. The powder, prepared from burnt basud, hardens the gums and takes off the swelling thereof. As a, a serum D, it gives luster to the eye and cures lacrima. The powder got by burning the stone cures itch and prickly heat, if put in bathing water and poured over the body. Mixed with balsam oil, it cures deafness when applied inside the ears. Spleen, swollen body, worms, and leprosy can be got rid of by taking four dangs of burnt bod with sikun zemin, but as its use may engender stomach diseases and give rise to troublesome belchings, it would be safe to put 41 mashes of carrot into the compound. Tied over, a treatise on gems. 889, the abdomen, this stone is said to cure all diseases appertaining thereto. If anyone melts this stone with equal weight of gold and of silver and wears a ring made of the melted stuff, at the time when the sun and the moon approach the star called Zosh DRD, he is safe from epilepsy and witchery and will have no trouble in life. If anyone burns the black basid and uses the powder obtained with the water intended for his bathing, he attain great physical strength. The process of burning basid. Break the stone into fragments and place these in a vessel made of curry. Put this vessel over, night in an oven such as is used by those who bake bread. Take the pieces out in the morning and grind them thoroughly. Care should be taken that the stone does not get destroyed by being burnt altogether, in consequence of its remaining inside an overheated stove for accounts of. Medicines that can be prepared with this burnt powder be curd beating kabir. 890 appendices, be shub, Arabic, Uzrul Busuf, Persian, Eshem. Its properties, varieties, and C. The shub, sometimes called the shut, is a very hard stone possessing 
in different specimens a variety of color. In the order of quality, the species known as J. eon, hard and clear as a looking glass, comes first. Next, subjuman zerdi, the color of which is a compound of green and yellow. Next, subjuman safti, a mixture of green and white. And the last, kfuri, are the white specimens. The ishub has the dryness of the second class and is cool, marvelous in medicinal properties. I are taken internally. The ishub drives away fear, increases the powers of the digestive organs, cures insanity, and monomania of that kind which puts the patient under the impression that he is being beaten and abused by all men and impels him to return the compliments. If worn, it cures stricture and the vomiting of blood that comes out of the chest. If worn on the neck, it cures the spitting of blood issuing from the lungs at the time of coughing. Gravels can be got rid of by making the sufferer take one dang or the weight of 16 barley corns of the ashes of burnt eshub. A treatise on gems, 891, along with the white wine. If tied about the thighs of the woman under painful labor, it would. Help her to a speedy and easy delivery. If worn on the arms, it dispels enchantment and prevents the fear of lightning. It would ensure release from all bodily pains if it could be worn after an image of a man has been engraved upon it at the period when the moon enters the Burja Tusi. For the purpose of wearing, the quantity prescribed by some should represent 44 mashas in weight. Other kinds of stones. 1. Arabic, Khuzrul Khmer, Persian, Songi Soruk. LL, the LL is a variety of the diamond and has the color of the roots of the coral. The slightest dose of it is likely to be poisonous. 2. Arabic, Khuzrul BBI, Persian, Sukur, Song, and Songi Zokum. This stone is found among the stones in Arabia and has the color of the tusks of the elephant. Rubbed into a paste and taken internally, it cleans the body and gives it a brightness. It also stops vomiting blood. If powdered and applied against all kinds of ulcers, it cures them entirely. As a denifrice, it keeps the teeth clean and strength. Bends the gums. 3. Arabic, Yisrael, Chia. The best specimens of this stone possess a white color and belong to the second class of heat and dryness. Of one of its chief virtues lies in its power converting all watery substances into dry matter. A treatise on gems. 893. It prevents omitting blood, and its powder cures all ulcers and the swollen parts of the body, if rubbed against them. If taken with spirits of wine or with any sherbets, dose, too dange, or the weight of 32 barley corns, it proves to be a sovereign remedy for gravels or pallor. Arabic, Khosrala Shaka. This stone is either red, black, or yellow, but whatever may be its external color, the stone will always show inside a mixture of black and sky blue when any of these gets broken. It is both cold and dry. Its powder has the same medicinal effects as the hurl ashaf. As this stone comes to be of constant use to shoemakers, it has been designated Huzral Ashakaf, the term Ashtikaf in Arabic, meaning the shoemakers. 5. Arabic, Husral Afroj or Huzral Afrodi. It is a kind of stone which does not sink in water. It is found in Islambul. Istanbul, in the Roman Ottoman Empire, its powder heals all ulcers, and as a denifrice, it strengthens the teeth. Taken internally, it has an astringent effect. An internal dose of one dang, or the weight of 16 barley corns, is an antidote to poison by scorpion bite ando. 6. Arabio, who's Rolfrek. This stone is neither too heavy nor too light in eye weight, and neither too hard nor too soft. It has streaks of lines inside it. It is found in. Afresha, Africa. If with its qualities as to weight and see as described above, it is found to possess in yellow color, the specimen is considered to be the best of all. It has the quality of dryness in a very little degree. Its burnt powder mixed with water cures all ulcers of the body when rubbed over them. But if it be applied to painful parts, the pain will gradually increase. To guard against this fresh trouble, mix it with honey or spirits of wine. If the powder be mixed with wax, it will cure all ulcers caused by burns. 7. Arabic, Huzerol and Gez, I are rubbed in water, this stone will render it red like blood. It cures the swelling of eyes and lacrima, if applied to them, after being rubbed in milk taken from the teats. 8. Huzerol Braki, this stone is very much like the cowrie. Some specimens look like the palm of a hand, but they are very thin. The stone is said to be born of the lightning in such places as Kofi. When the lightning fluid falls on the water, which fills up excavations and small holes in the ground, it floats on the water for some time and then sinks under. It, the stone, is found in these places when the water dries up perfectly, dropsy and inflammation of the navel and of the whole stomach. It can be cured by means of this stone, 
if used in the following way. Grind the stone into fine powder, mix it up with water, and then dry it in the sun. Continue doing so till the powder soaks in four times as much water as was first put in, and then apply the powder around the navel and the parts affected. Nine, Puzzer Old BHR. This stone is white, round, and hard. It contains a kind of seed inside, which makes a rattling noise when the stone is shaken. It is always found on seashores and is considered by some to be a kind of sea animal cast up to the shores by the waves when it is dead. But nothing definite has yet been known of the thing. It cures gravel when taken in quantities weighing two dangs or 82 barley corns. 896 appendices. 10. Whose rule bow heard. This is a stone of a black color and is so thin that by the slightest contact with fire, it becomes hot. It has no healing properties in itself, but in conjunction with proper medicines, it is found to be efficacious in curing ulcers and swellings of any part of the human body. 11. Puzzrol Baram. This is a black stone found in Khorasan. Taken internally, it cures the spitting of blood. As a denophorus, it strengthens the gums. 12. Puzzrol Bar. The bar is a white, round, and clear stone found in the seas in the county of Hejaj. If rubbed a little in water and taken, it brings on copious urine. Tied over the bladders, this stone can bring gravels out of persons suffering therefrom, with the urine which it renders free and clear. A similar kind of stone is found inside the mother oak, pearl in the oceans in Jiddah, but it is black and very much inferior to the bar. No one has yet examined the properties of this stone. 13. Kuzral Bukur or Kuzrawal Bukur Hindi, Gadahan. This stone is found inside the bile of the cow. In size and color, it is like the yellow of the fowls. Egg. It tastes very bitter when it is taken out of the stomach of the cow. It gets dry and becomes very hard. It also assumes a black color and gets wrinkles all over its body. This stone is sometimes long or round or triangular in shape. It can be converted into any shape when taken out of the stomach where it remains very soft. Its weight ranges between one and four mesh calls. The ver. Choose of such of the stones as are born in the teats of the cows have been fully described in the work, known as F.D. Izuhur, the existence of this stone in the body of cows is traced by the general ward symptoms. Such cows as have the stone in them get gradually emaciated. The color of their bodies becomes yellow, that of their eyes, yellow and white, and they keep constantly bleeding. Of the animals so affected, only one or two percent happen to have the stone inside their stomach. The best specimens of these stones are large and hard. Hirobukur belongs to the second class of dryness and heat, but Hakimaltki P places it in the second class as regards dryness, and in the first as regards heat. 898 appendices, its medicinal properties. Huzarel Bukur is less powerful in the art of healing than the stone called Hozarel Tees. It ores all boils, swellings, ulcers, and gravels, as well as excessive discharge of urine and menses. It also relieves the disease which is known to affect the left thighs of little children in Bengal and in the northwestern provinces of India, and which is designated in Persian as RDBO, cough, EIHBI. If applied to the eyes by itself or with other medicines, it improves the vision and cures lacrima. Rubbed over the body, it cures piles, ulcers, and white leprosy and other discolorations of the skin. It brings on speedy relief from prickly heat, itch, and other skin eruptions. If it is ground with a little quantity of water, in which the spice donut has been kept for some time, and then applied to the body. In order to make hairs grown gray with white leprosy, resume their natural color, root them out of the head, and put there on the paste obtained by rubbing the stone with spirits of wine. It stops lacrima if a particle of it, of the size of a lentil, mixed with the juice of the vegetable called chicken, is taken into the nostrils as a snuff. If two bits of it, each of the size of a lentil, be taken after bathing, with some laxative for some days, and be accompanied with the diet of the flesh of strong and plump fowls and kids, the patient must ere long become a strong fat. Man, head complaints are sure to follow if the internal use of this stone is not attended with that of Kettered. Doses of two kirats, 16 mashas, and one mescal, i.e. 100 wheat corns, are poisonous in their effects. The stones that are taken out of the bile of the COW are productive of better results than those found in the heart of that animal. 14. Husserl Beller. This well-known stone is white and clear as looking glass. It is harder than lead. It can be worked into cups, drinking glasses, plates, and lenzero for microscopes. And, kept close to in person, it prevents his dreaming bad dreams and being a subject to sudden starts while asleep and dreaming. 
gazed upon fixedly for some time, this stone cures lacrima. Rubbed over the teats of women, in which the milk is dried up, it brings on a copious flow. It becomes very clear after being steeped in sheep's milk for some time. Out round, with a thick point in the center, and gradually thinned down the sides, and then fixed on the openings of the microscope, it helps one in looking over a great distance. If a glass is cut in in similar manner and used with the same view, it serves the same purpose. Treatise on Gems, 901, The Views of the Modern Hindustani, Jaharis, Jewelers, The 84 Sons. IR would appear from what has been gathered from the Hindustani jewelers of the day that nothing like original authoritative views on jewels were known among them from time immemorial. The views of the modern jewelers are based partly on Sanskrit, partly on Arabic, and partly on Persian authorities, supplemented by their own opinion, arrived at by practical experience. As to the value, quality, or defects of gems, these views have come down by tradition from generation to generation and are now accepted as the recognized opinion of the Hindustani jeweler. The names of the gems enumerated by them are, for the aforesaid reason, found in some instances to be in Sanskrit, in some other in Persian or Arabic, and in a great many in Hindi, or a dialect of their own. The Italians and other nations of Europe have collected a much larger number of precious stones than those enumerated by the jewelers of Hindus then. The term by which modern jewelers designate jewels and stones is called sung. The number of sungs known to the jewel merchants in this country and in use among them is 84. These are the species that the Emperor Humayun of Delhi was able to collect and with which Shah, a treatise on gems, 908. Jehan decorated the Taj Mahal with mosaics representing the figures of birds, animals, trees, and so forth, thus giving evidence of the vastness of his wealth, the depth of his regard for the Empress, and the extraordinary skillfulness of the Indian artists. The cruel hand of time has now defaced much of the beauty and splendor of the Taj Mahal by causing the disappearance of most of the stones that formed the mosaics. The names of the 84 sungs, which have presently been collected from Hindustani jewelers, will be found in due course. In consequence of the inability of any single jeweler to enumerate all the 84 specimens, they have been collected from a variety of sources. And it is therefore not unlikely that among these 84 kinds, there might be some which have in one place been set down by their Hindi names and in another by their Persian designations. Jewelers divide gems and stones into two classes, viz. beer and gud i.e. transparent and opaque. These two kinds are subdivided into three classes, viz. Kusmi Dadevil, Kusmi Doyam, and Kusmi Sijam. The nine precious gems as recognized by Sanskrit authorities come under the head of Evil. Other stones used in jewelry come under the class Doyam, and the rest, out of which cups, mortars, pestles, and the like are made, come under the designation of Siam. With the exception of the pearl, cat's eye, and coral, all stones are generally cut into any of the a treatise on gems. 905, four shapes or ots viz, KUTB or the oblong shape, athonis or the octagonal, sonro or the shape of the heart, and gird or the circular shape. The KUTB is called chukon, when the stone takes the shape of a square. The athonis is called THS athonis, when the facets of the octagonal cut are so small as to render the surface almost circular. And tall athonis, when the stone is cut into an octagonal figure a little elongated. And when the sonro becomes almost triangular, the cut is said to be tekon sonro. When it takes exactly the shape of a pian or beetle leaf, the cut is called pian at. When the gird takes the form of a BDM or almond, the cut is known as BDM siege. When it is oval, the cut is called TLNTT. One, heard the following are the varieties of the diamond gold, rose red, bunaspati, green, nilbajra, blue diamond, basanti yellowish white, guruk, a very hard diamond with a thin skin called CHL or a bruck on the surface. Such eichoating may be taken by soft diamonds owing to the unskillfulness of cutters. The wearer of a diamond defective in this respect is liable to death. Kulthi, safed white, BHR, ash colored, hill yellow, kale black as ink, kuf of the color of the catarrhal mucus, and yogi, a treatise on gems. 907, the following four defects in the diamond are recognized Apashin, i.e., the fissures observed inside the diamond. Three. Chiti, i.e., the red spots mixed with black observed inside. Keldi chiti, i.e., the black spots seen inside. Lat dash, the red spots. Urcheti, the ash colored spots. C. Gr, i.e., holes observed on the surface of the diamond. The mur, i.e., very minute spots. 
visible at times in any portion of the diamond. According to some jewelers, conrolled or irregularity in the cutting of the facets is reckoned ag one of the defects of the diamond. The tumuli sometimes passes muster for the diamond. 2. Ebnik Cholbarna, deep red, binost, red, with a tinge of black, a defective specimen. Tanjvat with fissures, a defective specimen, Golgun with a shade of yellow. Atlasi, Atasi, Kyrd of the color of the Katechu. The following defects are recognized in the ruby. Sheer fissures, Dudhuk, milky imperfections. A brook, scales like those of the talc. Daba, absence of water. Binawi prek, issues and milky imperfections combined. Judith, the presence of a yellowish hue in addition. K5, to any defect. And JRL, the presence of rose red or black color in addition to any defect. The neurum sometimes passes. Muster for the ruby. Three, the Sunni conic shet, like the eye of the cat. DHMK shet, smoke colors eye, sin K shet, black, you. K shet, of the color of the gi, kalkuk, born in the new. Mines and hrai, having no lines. The following are the defects of the cat's eye, shear, fissures, judder, lines covering all the surface. The door, transparent, in some portions and opacity in others. The carcatake sometimes passes muster for the cat's eye. Four, Modi Miani, blackish. Sermai, a little blackish. Chunker or TMT Chai, with a tinge of red. Gurabi or Kirker, small size and not perfectly round ones. Bikaran, lead colored. Kachi, pale colored. Kel, very white, and found at Basarol, singly yellowish. Tudguri, bluish. And JDM Kree greenish. The following ats or cuts are proved. Viz, Sir, Gull, Kumar. Bicolored cat's eyes have inauspicious properties in them. One such specimen is in the possession of Roger Rajendra Mullock of Chorbig in Calcutta. The stone is alleged to have caused the death of his third sow who used to wear it. The author of this work has in his possession one cat's eye, which bears upon its surface the mark of the letter S, the first letter of his initials. NPR. Each of these four cuts is divided into five classes. The following are the names of the 20 kinds into which pearl is thus divided. Minus one, kulk. Two, sir. Three, chaucer. Four, sujan. Five, gbh. Six, kari gbh. Seven, tir gbh. Eight, and a nine, kumur. Ten, kari kumur. Eleven, tati kumur. Twelve, buttle. Thirteen, ans. Fourteen, sintians. Fifteen, chikneons. Sixteen, chiptions. Seventeen, pr. Eighteen. Chuck PRD 19, card PR 20, Tilly. The following are the defects. Guruj, holes on the surface. Lahair, small holes. Birkin, both large and small holes. Cord, very small holes. Guru, depression in portions. The TMT Chai and Taguri specimens are good, but the Kel is the best of all specimens. The Belty Modi, or the imitation pearl that comes out from Europe, sometimes passes muster for the genuine pearl. Five. Goma, there are no varieties of the zircon. Sheer, chit, and abruki are the defects observed in the stone. The tertiary sometimes passes muster for the zircon. Six, Mung, there are no varieties of the coral. The mixture of any color with red, which is its true color, is reckoned to be a defect in the coral. One, the kaharba sometimes passes muster for the coral. Seven, PNN pern, merguch, toric, pale KNA, and JHJ. Each of these varieties is divided into two. Classes viz, Kai and DHN. The former represents such specimens as have a tinge of black in the green of the stone. The latter, such as have a tinge of yellow in the green. The latter specimens are admired. The following are the defects of the emerald. Chur, Reka, streaks, brook, a shade of smoke. GNJH, imperfection in the water. Such as the presence of bubbles and C, Bahini, natural and perfect. Shuns hidden by the ingenuity of the setters or cutters. DMBH, marks somewhat like the spiders, web on the surface. The Puigu sometimes passes muster for the emerald. Eight, Pukraj saved white, Zurud yellow, and Nil blue. The defects recognized in the ruby are also recognized in the topaz. Besides, there are two other defects, viz. Yogia, presence of a tinge of red with the yellow, and Darunya, presence of yellow in certain parts and of some other color in others. The sonel sometimes passes muster for the topaz. 9. Nil pern and ne, each of the two. Varieties is divided into three classes, viz. Subjapan nil with a tinge of green. Elpan nil with a tinge of red. And deep blue 
The defects peculiar to the ruby are also recognized in the sapphire. The lily sometimes passes muster for the sapphire. 10. Cross Sanskrit name Sparamani, color, black. This stone does not admit of good polish. 11. LR, a variety of the ruby dot like that of the rose. Color, red, is called LL when it exceeds 24 ruddies in weight. 12. Lily, an inferior variety of the sapphire, shows a faint tinge of yellow. 13. Dramuli, an inferior variety of the topaz. It is found to be of various colors, but all of a light description. 14. Tertiary, a very soft stone. Color, yellow, with a dash of reddishness. 15%. Sonel, an inferior variety of the topaz. Color, golden. 16. Donal, the sonel is called by this name when it shows the color of the smoke. 17. Nurum, a variety of the ruby. Its color is a mixture of red and yellowishness. 18. Sindri, its color is rose red with a tinge of white. 19. Cathal or Jamuni, its color is black with a tinge of red. 20. TMR, its color is red with a tinge of blackishness. 21. Sangisham, it is divided into two classes. Anguri are those of which the color is white with a mixture of green, carpri, those that are purely white. The latter specimens are better than the former. 22. Sangori, it is found to be of various colors, having streaks of white on the surface. Jewelers carve cups and scale weights out of them. 23. Akik, it is found to be of various colors. Toys, cups, handles of sticks, and other such things are carved out of this stone. 24. Imi, its color is deep red with a tinge of blackishness. It is much admired by the Mohammedan nobility. It is said that the Emperor Mahom Shah had once purchased a piece of Imni of 10 ruddies at 500 Rs and given it to a jeweler to be tested. The jeweler asked the emperor to test it himself and directed him to tie round it a piece of thread and throw it into the fire. This being done, it was observed that the thread did not catch fire at all. Upon seeing the result of his experiment, the emperor exclaimed to the people present, Behold the way in which this stone should be tested. A treatise on gems. 919. 25. Patut bouge, uh, a variety of the crystal color, white, this stone shows. Forth in the front, a rosy hue. If a rose is placed behind it, the crystal image of the idol set up by Rai Lukmiput Singh Badur in the temple at Morshidabad is the best specimen of this species of stone. 26. Sung RTA variety of the emerald, it, does not admit of good polish. Circular plates, cups, and sea are formed out of this stone. 27. God, uh, its color is white with a yellow tinge resembling the teeth of the cow. 28. Single, a variety of the ruby. Its color is a compound of red and black. 29. Solemn color, black with white streaks. It is much liked by the Europeans and the Jews. 80. Alem, the solemn, is called by this name when it has an ash like color. 31. Husrul, Yehu, or Hoover. Its color is like that of the clay. It is a good remedy for diseases of the urine. 32. Tellied color black. It has a sleeky app. Appearance, such as is shown by things rubbed over with oil. 33. Bilar color white it is called crystal by the Europeans. It furnishes the materials for chandeliers and the like. 34. Virgit's color is much lighter than that of the emerald. Its mine is situ, aided in the country of Tantor in Hindustan. According to some jewelers, burge and tor belong to the same class of stone. The latter, however, shows forth a tinge of yellow. 35. Raguja variety of the emerald of a beautiful green color, but it does not possess what is technically called a very pure water. It has a larger number of mines and fetches much less value than the emerald. 36%. And it, its color is black with a mixture of ashiness. This stone is very heavy in weight. Beads for rosaries are made out of it. 37. Sung Musha color, white, or like that of the mud or of the mouse. Cups and mortars for grinding medicines in are formed out of it. 38. Sung Deer color, black. Mortars, cups, and hilts of swords are formed out of the stone. 39. Petoni color, green, interspersed with dots of red. 40. Dunfermong, its color is green like that of the pistachio nut. Beads for rosaries are made out of it. This stone consists of three kinds. Put a few drops of lemon juice over a piece of steel and rub this stone over it. If the mark produced by rubbing it 
is found to be of the color of copper, the stone should be considered as belonging to the Locri kind, if the mark be of the color of silver. The stone should come under the class Miri. If the mark be of a golden hue, the stone should be designated Telii. 41. Sung Sink, its color is either red, yellow, or blackish. Dots of dot white. Yellow or red are observed on this stone. Cups and mortars are formed out of it. 42. Sung River, it has an ash like color. It is found in the mines of Mokair and Diyar and brought over in large quantities to Jaipur. When its color is observed to be a mixture of red and white, it assumes the name of Mo KRN. 43. Somaki, color, blue. This stone does not. Emit of good polish. Dots of a golden color are observed on some of the specimens. 44. Zuberzud color, green. Mahomedan gentle. Men have a great liking for this stone. It is found in the same. Mines is the cat's eye, but it has not any streaks over it. It is very transparent. 45. Pai Zuhur, its color is ashy white. It heals. Ulcers caused by the action of poison when it is rubbed over them. 46. Zuhur mist, its color is green with a tinge of white. A cup formed out of this stone neutralizes the effects of poison that may be mixed with the thing placed in it. 47. Feroza turquoise. Its color is sky blue. It is not a stone, but a kind of conquer. It is used for fingerings and other such things. 48. Sankudrit, color black with white and yellow veins. 49. Gub color white. The description given for Sangori applies to this stone. The gub, however, is softer than that stone. 50%. Kasodi, color black. This stone is used for testing gold, a treatise on gems, 927, 51. Sun kit, its color is white like that of the conch shell. It is used by Europeans for lockets and held in much favor by them. 52. Dar e Najaf, its color is like that of the green, patty husk. It is used for fingerings and emits a very good polish. It looks like the Zuberzuf, but its color is either deeper or lighter and much clearer than that stone. 53. Sirkari or Sung Jirdhut, its color is like. That of clay, dolls, toys, and sea are made out of this stone. This stone quickly heals up all bruises if it is rubbed into a paste and applied over them. 54. Darshan, its color is like that of the sin. Nimon. It is used by Mahomedans for beads for rosaries. 55. Sung Siderit is of two kinds. It has different colors in the specimens and has dots of gold intermixed with them. It bialk, capable of being imitated by lead. 56. LJ bird color, blue. Dots of gold are observed in portions of the surface. 57. Sung Mokri color, black with a tinge of white. Its surface looks like eight spider's web. 58. Bloodhead color red, like that of the magenta. Finger rings are made out of this stone. 59. Sung BNS color, light green. The stone is softer than Sung Isham and admits of good polish. 60. HBS, its color is green with a tinge of gold. It does not admit of good polish. This stone is used for medicines. 61. Safari color, sky blue with a slight tinge of green, like that of the crow's egg. 62. Aubrey color, golden with a shade of black. People of moderate means make finger rings out of this stone. 63. Chidi, its color is black and it has golden. Dots and streaks of white over the surface. Its color is like that of clay. 64. Pathur, 65. Sung else, a kind of marble. 66. Sung SBR color. Green with ash colored streaks on the surface. 67. Jajem, a variety of solemn color, ash, like with streaks of an ashy color on the surface. 68. D and teal color, white with a mixture of yellow, like that of an old conch shell. The stone is found in the mines of the diamond and is very transparent. 69. Pungun color, black with a tinge of green. Toys, figures, and sea are made out of this stone. 70. Ratak or Ratov color red, if worn on. The neck, this stone is said to cure giddiness of the head and such fever as comes on only at night. 71. Upal, it is found to be of various colors, having a shade of blue over the surface. 72. Gundri, it is party colored like the cloaca. The fakirs, singing mendicants. 73. Miriam, color white, it admits a very good polish. 74. Ajivit's color is rose red with large dots over the surface. 75. Dumri, its color is like that of the Ketechu. Mortars, pestles, and sea are made out of this stone. 76. Only a color rose red with a tinge of black. Mortars, pestles, and sea are made out of this stone. 77. Blunt, 
Its color is pale rose red. This stone is elastic like the India rubber. A specimen of this stone is in the possession of Raja Rajendra Mullik. Ditto, 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 ditto. A treatise on gems, 933, 78. Sungjur color green with a mixture of black, 79. Kajar color black with a tinge of green. Mortars made out of this stone are used for grinding pearls and see in 80. KNSL color white with a dash of green in it. It has very good water and is found in the diamond mines. 81. Muk in test color white with a tinge of black. 82. Haki Kulber. Its color is a mixture of green and yellow. This stone is born in the waters and is used for beads for rosaries. 83. Sung Serm color black. The stone glyph turns like silver. Its powder is applied to the eyes by the Hindustanis. 84. Sungsia color black, figures and statues, and C are made out of this stone. Besides these, there are several stones of an inferior variety, such as Lulk, or BST, Subjay, Donk, Jurd, Dusri, and C, found in the Vindhya Mountains and other places. A platform made of Luka, over which the throne of the King of Gore is said to have been placed, can now be seen in the Emerald Bower, the country seat of the humble Maharaja Yotendra Mohun Tagore Bahadur. CSI. It was brought over from the ruins of the capital of Gore in Malda. B Treatise on Gems, 935. Conventional terms used by the Jahari's in valuing Gemma and Jewels, MN or Ban or Aaron Fo Rupee, Son or Thelpo, two rupees. Eko Yandi or Bieber Po, Yurunsen Po or Pielo Chit Bull, BHL Lele Dows, MN Brabate Dows, Son 1%. Eko Yandi F, 18. Aaron Simpo Chit, 16 Bull, 17 PHL, 18. Lil Breite Dows, 19 rupees. Sin 20. MN Barhada, Sut 21, Son 22. Echo A 23. Aaron 24. Simpio 25. Chitty 26. Bully 27. Thal 28. Lil 29. And C, and C, and C. The term MN1 may signify either 1, 100, 1,000, or 100,000, and so on, according to the proper worth of the jewels, the valuation of which has to be determined. So, with regard to other terms, these terms are used by Hindustani jewelers among themselves in the presence of lay customers in order that they may be kept in the dark as to the real price of gems. 988 Appendices Nepal How the language of Nepal differs widely from that of Hindustan, the names of, jewels, and the manner of examining them as known in this country are just the same as in India. The fact of Hindustani jewelers taking over jewels to this country and selling them at high profit precludes the possibility of anyone but the very rich buying them. Mines of turquoise only are observed in this country, but the specimens found here are not of a good color and are consequently of less value than those seen in the mines in Persia and Afghanistan. Turmult is sometimes seen in the borders of Tibet, where pearls and corals are taken from Nepal for commercial purposes. Cinderade, a light-colored variety of the ruby, is also sometimes found in that place. This stone is sold in India at two or three annas, a ruddy. Sung USD, Sung Dari, and other such stones are found in the hilly regions of Nepal. The people of Nepal are excessively fond of pearls. Burma and Siam. Three grams, according to the Burmese jewelers, there are. No written works on gems in the Burmese language, or at least if there are any, they are in the material supplied by Major Bisanath Upadhyaya, representative of the court of Nepal at Calcutta, from Moko Mia Sahib of Mandalay. A treatise on gems, 939. Royal Palace and are not accessible to the general public. Burmese jewelers always examine precious stones and gems by sight. They are well conversant with the method of testing the ruby, sapphire, and topaz, and such other stones as are born in their country. They have learned something about diamonds from India, and of the rest of precious stones. Their knowledge is limited, perhaps, beyond the names which they have converted into their own language. Air, the diamond is divided into four kinds. Biz, B-U, white. B, yellow. Annie, black. And ant, red. The black spots in the diamond are known among the Burmese by the term myth, fissures by the word pajim, and absence of water by aina. Unlike other nations, the people of Burma keep the raised portion, kai chun, of the diamond on the top and the flat surface towel on the bottom. The best specimens are those that are known as lead, i.e. heavy stones of the first water. Ie Konde, the Tolnigat is, called the aid and the Gurdigat Kobi. The square cut is termed akobaladyun, the best cut recognized. The diamond is designated in Burma by the word chine, which is the Burmese for arsenic, perhaps. 
on the ground of both possessing the property of destroying animal life. There are no diamond mines in Burma. Zeraminus 5, 940 appendices, Emnik. The very red specimens of the ruby are called Menyugunikanu Yanke. The rose red ones, called Pinyin, are not considered so good. Aniamoi, Niji, and Nida are the different names which the ruby assumes according to the degree of excellence which its color possesses. The following are the names by which the defective varieties of the ruby are known. Iod, those that have their red color mixed with black. No, those that have milky imperfections. Aizoi, those that have their color deep in one part and light in another. Ayla, those that have no water. And Ivo, those that have defective water. The ruby mines lie at a distance of 10 days journey from Mandalay under the mountains in the northern portion of the country. The number of mines lying there is three. These are called Mono, Kadi, and CHPKN. The Mono mines produce the best specimens and foreigners are interdicted access to them. These mines are leased out to some of the rich people of the country. Specimens exceeding 1,000 rupees in value are not allowed to be taken out of the country without the knowledge of the king. Those that are sent out are done so with some stratagem or other. Rubies in their rough state are called can you S or I, I when cut, they are called TBL, and when polished but not cut, they are termed Penjin. The weight of a ruby now in the possession of the king is one tikal, one tola, six annas, and three pies. Nil. The names of the best specimen of sapphire are nil, nikadon, of the color of the wings of the bird known in Burma as Nekshdi and Sion, of a faint tinge of green. The Burmese agree with Hindustani jewelers as to what constitute. The defects of the sapphire, the topaz and the sapphire come from the same stock and differ only in color. Names of the nine precious gems. English, diamond, Burmese, ruby, drain, cat's eye zircon, bud mirchon, snow, pearl, gomak, coral, poly, emerald, tad, topaz, mia, sapphire, outfi, NLA. Burmese jewelers assert that the same system of testing gems obtains in Siam as that which is adopted in Burma there appear to be no strong grounds for not accepting this statement. Siam was at one time subject to Burma as its language, somewhat similar to that of the latter country, and produces the same kinds of stones as are found, 942 appendices in Burma. It stands to reason, therefore, that the Siamese system of examining gems is not you like that of Burma. Sapphire mines have recently been discovered in the provinces of Batambone and Chanabun in Siam, China, and Japan. Why regret? that we could not obtain from the people of China living at Calcutta such an formation regarding their jewelry as one might desire to possess. The few merchants who live at Pollock Street failed to give us any information. Our inquiries, however, met with some success at 8 Pollock Street, which represents the firm of Messer, Hangpo, and company the gentlemen connected with this house were inhabitants of Canton and were good enough to impart us such information as they had at their disposal. The following lines embody the result of our inquiries at the above-mentioned office supplemented by such other light as could be gleaned from histories and works of travel. The topaz, ruby, and sapphire are mostly found in China. The topaz is used by all the noblemen of the country. The Chinese sapphire does not possess as good water as the Siamese stone, but its color is pretty good. The diamond is observed, a treatise on gems, 943, in certain portions of the empire, but not in large quantities. Cat's eye is also sometimes seen. It is somewhat blackish in color and its 66 line is not particularly good. The Chinese trade in jewelry, which they bring from India and America, the seas about China and Japan abound in corals, and the neighboring people deal extensively in them. It is customary with the rich in China to wear costly apparel and birthday anniversaries, such as are dressed in red wear the yellow stone, i.e. topaz, such as are clad in yellow use the red. Jewels, i.e. ruby or coral. Five principal gems are recognized in the Chinese religion, viz, ruby, diamond, pearl, emerald, and coral. The sapphire and the topaz are classed with the ruby, the difference being in color only. Like the Hindus, the Chinese believe in the fact of these five gems being respectively presided over by different deities. The rich men in China make use of jewels with a view to prolong their life. In order to bring about good or to prevent mischief being done, some people wrap up the five principal gems in small bits of paper in which are respectively written the names of their presiding planets, together with those of the moon and of the 27 stars, and suspend them before the entrance to their houses. Others burn the contents of the papers and use their ashes with wines, according to the laws of the country. No one could wear jewels more precious than those.
used by the royal family. It is related that during the reign of Kiaking, Kianalung, his favorite minister, had the audacity to enter the palace wearing a big rare pearl on his person. His body was hacked into 10,000 pieces, the whole of his estate confiscated to government and his family all, banished out of the empire. The pearl is the most favorite gem of the Chinese. The hand fan is one of the indispensable personal ornaments used by noblemen on festive occasions, and these fans are invariably found to be studded with small pearls. Small pearls are also used in the fringes of umbrellas and in the body of the umbrellas themselves. They enter largely into the workmanship of the red silk cloths whereon the rich men sit as also into that of any apparel which they USO for covering their body. Like some other nations, the Chinese use pearls for medicinal purposes, chiefly with the object of obtaining physical strength. Pearls of all shapes, such as the Pacific produces, are often set in gold, converted into the figures of cats, dogs, men, and sea, and placed in the Buddhist temples and other sacred places. The skin of pearls of a less value are sometimes put by the rich over windows, lids of boxes, handles of fans, and frames of pictures. China abounds in various descriptions of marbles, porphyry, jasper, quartz, and other inferior stones. Japan yields a considerable amount of revenue to the government by its mineral products. No, diamonds have been found in this place, but agates, carnelians, and jaspers are met with, some of them of great value. Nearly all parts of the coast of Japan supply pearls, frequently of great size and beauty. Pearl fisheries in Manchuria and elsewhere and such like sources furnish an important addition to the imperial revenue of China. Names of the nine precious gems as known in Canton, English, Chinese, Diamond, Ruby Chunzi and Kcatsai Sipliusiak, Zurichan Maoji Gn. Pi's, Pearl Chunt, Coral Sahochi, Emerald, Topaz Luxik, Sapphire, Salangsiank, Chengsik, Afghanistan. Nems and jewels are in less use among the people of Afghanistan, Turkestan, and other countries in Central Asia than among other nations in the continent of Asia. As a consequence, no works exist on the subject of jewelry in Pushtu. From Mulvi Abdul Hug, the son of Mala Habibul, a learned man in the court of Kandal Kwan, governor of Qadabar. 946 appendices, the language of the Afghan nations. Jewels are called in this language by the term jahar. The examination of gems is conducted by sight only by hakims and Mulvis of note. And no nobleman in this country would purchase any jewels without consulting with them. It is the opinion of these connoisseurs that none but the virtuous has any right to the use of jewels. Aljabarud, Kik, Paroj, Feroz, and Sung Mukshu are generally found in the country of the Afghans. The last mentioned stone is to be seen in the city of Kandahar. Ruby is found at Badakhshan, but it is far inferior to that of Burma. Pearl is called six. Six, Murgular in Afghanistan, Thea, Mond, Emerald, Topaz, Ruby, Zircon, Safiro are never born in this country. These stones are known to the people by their Persian designations, the Pushtu language having no words to represent them. The cat's eye is called by the Afghans by the term Pishi Tursi, but it is not a production of any mines in this country. Piraj, turquoise, this stone is found in abundant quantities. According to the learned Mulvies, cataract in the eyes is cured some time after two turquoise set in. A silver ring and dipped into. Water is applied over the parts affected, the application being accompanied by the chanting of the Namo of the Almighty. Sung Mukshid, a very favorite stone with the F, Gans, and used by them for beads, for counting their prayers. A rosary consisting of the best specimens of the stone fetches from RS200 to RS250 in value. The Hakims use this stone rubbed into a paste as a remedy for cholera. Kahar, the color of the stone is yellow like that, of the champa flower. This stone, IG used by the Afghans as a capital tonic, the KHRB is found in Arabia and Egypt and is known to sell for from RS, 3 minus 8 to RS 10, per tola. It is used also for beads, for rosaries, merge in the coral. It is given by the Hakims as a tonic with powdered gold, lodgebird color black with dots of gold on the surface. The Sirdar is another. Noblemen grind the stone into powder and mix it with the paint with which they have the walls of their rooms painted. Worn on. The neck by young children, the lodge bird protects them from witchery. It is also used for medicinal purposes. Solemn beads for rosaries and finger rings are 
made out of this stone. The Solomon has the power of keeping off all earthly woes if it is. 948 appendices kept in the house. It ensures the owner victory over his enemies. Malas of known miraculous powers can give life to this stone by incantations and can by means of such and stone. Disenchant O person who might have fallen victim to witchery. It is said that this stone can be continually kept alive if it be put within a small box in which vermilion is usually kept. Sukrat Sarf, the name of a stone found in Baitul. Muktadas, Jerusalem. Color, white. Weight, about 25 or 30 mons. This stone is said to be situated above the earth and suspended in ether. The Afghans make reverential bows to the situation of this stone. Zur Al, the sacred stone of the Maho. Medang at Mecca. It is said that the original color of this stone was white and that the polluted touch of the sinners coming frequently on pilgrimage has rendered it black. The Hindus call this stone Hakshisvara Siva, as it looks somewhat like the phallus of Madeva. Egypt. Then the Mohammedans unfurled their ban, WXX Nurs, and directed their religious expedition. From Mecca to the west, they introduced the corn into Egypt, Turkey, Morocco, and such other countries on either coast of the Mediterranean as could be successfully brought under subjection. The study of the corn necessarily involved the study of Arabic, in which language the sacred book of the Mohammedans is composed and ultimately led to the systematic cultivation of that language. Gradually, Arabic began to take deep root in the country and to be blended with local dialects. It is not a matter of wonder, therefore, that the language used in naming the varieties, defects and sea, of gems and jewels by the people of Egypt, Tunis, Morocco, Abyssinia, and other such places is partly Arabic and partly local. Almost all the countries belonging to the Mohammedans or originally conquered by them have their language based either on Arabic or Persian. Most of the countries east of Persia have had Persian for their dialect. As in India, Urdu is the result of the mixture of Persian with Hindi, so there is in each country. To the west of Persia, hybrid language. Materials received from Sayyid Abs, an Egyptian merchant at present of Calcutta, 950 appendices, which is a combination of Arabic with the language of the locality. As Hindustani jewelers use Persian expressions in their description of jewelry, so the Egyptians use certain Arabic terms in connection with the designation and examination of precious gems. There are some works on jewelry in Egypt written in the modern dialect of that country, but the Egyptian Mulvies of the present day cannot enlighten us on the views held on the subject by the ancient authorities. Om Z Diamond. This is the strongest light, est in weight, and most brilliant of all precious stones. It is iridescent like the crystal prism. It is divided into four classes of color. Biz, white, yellow, black, and red. The best specimens of all are those that are white, like the quicksilver and very light in weight. The next in quality and value are the yellow ones. The black specimens are the hardest of all and are of less value than the yellow ones. The rose red varieties are pretty good. The presence of a kind of insect of the appearance of black dots inside a diamond constitutes one of the defects of the stone. The use of the diamond with gold imparts to the wearer health and vigor. The BDR is palmed off on ignorant customers as the diamond. It looks exactly like the diamond, but is of very little monetary value. 2. O ruby. Color red. The L is a warm and dry stone. Its color is divided into four classes, each class being designated a daris. The very lightest color is called the first daros. A little deeper color is termed the second darwaz, still deeper, the third darwaz, and the deepest of all, the fourth darwaz. The hardness of. The stone is proportionate to the depth of its color. The following are the defects of the ruby, very dazzling color, due fissures, USTF, shady imperfections, and NKA's very light color. The nobility prepare serum from the stone. The ruby taken with majum, electuaries, adds strength to the body. The gomita sometimes passes muster for the ruby. 3. I cut adruf, a variety of the ruby. The qualities and imperfections are to be judged by the same rules as are applicable to the ruby. 4. Why cut asphur? This stone is divided into three classes, viz, turquoise yellow, viewed white, and kamori rosard. The qualities and imperfections of the stone are the same as those of the ruby. 5. Uh -huh. an inferior variety of the ruby. The same rules as to qualities and imperfections as are applicable to the ruby hold good as regards this stone. 6. Zumurud the emerald. 
its color is. Stakel cooter, i.e. very green, like the ruby. It is divided into four darvas. The fact that a serpent immediately falls to licking a real emerald as soon as it happens to come across it is the best test for a true specimen. The external use of an emerald secures to the wearer unbounded influence over mankind. The Zuberzuda is sometimes mistaken for the emerald. Its color is green mixed with yellow. Bijahur, a stone of a green color mixed with black, is again sometimes mistaken for the Zuberzud. The internal use of this stone, rubbed into a paste, neutralizes. A treatise on gems. 953. The effects of poison, dirty nujuf, and white stone is sometimes passed off as a bashur. It has, however, no place in jewelry. 7. Lulu the Pearl. It is Maka Porco, i.e. Consisting of three scales, Tukil, Ujanu, i.e. heavy in weight, and Mamakolis, i.e. round. The best specimens are those that are Supokifi, clear, and Abayu, white. Those that are defer Alhamar, or yellow with a tinge of red, belong to the second Darwus. To the third Darwaz belong those that are Asvad, or white with a tinge of black. Pearls are found at Baharin, a place near Busora. The pearl has two cuts, viz. The bamokolas are circular shaped and the alto lac can or the drop shaped. Irregular cuts are called a bouge and are not liked. The absence of any of the qualities enumerated above constitutes a defect of the pearl. The pearl powder taken with electuaries strengthens the body and adds luster to the eyes. Eight, merge in the coral. It is found in the seas in the shape of a tree. The best specimens are those that are very red, very hard, and very heavy in. 954 appendices. Weight. The degree of the inferiority of the coral is proportionate with the lightness of its color. The coral is called useri or hakik, kulbahar, when its color is black. Cut open the top of G lemon and put a piece of coral inside and then cover up the opening with a paste of clay. Put this lemon under fire for some more time until it gets white with burning. Take it out, and after grinding the stone well, use it as a serm for the eyes, mixed with electuaries, and taken, the coral gives great physical strength. Nine, kick YMNT the red specimens belong to, the first class, the yellow ones to the second. The green ones are known as the antos, the black ones as the solmani, and the ash-colored ones as the girt, the worst variety. Gri is in our, uh, B.O. term the S.B. An extraordinary specimen of a sky blue cat's eye has been presented to the author of this work by Saeed Abibs, formerly. An Egyptian merchant, but now a kakir. This stone had been presented to the Saeed by an Arab prince as a reward for his proficiency in playing upon the musical instrument Serad. There are a thousand different kinds of stones, but these are not taken into account in jewelry. Names of the nine precious gems. English, Egyptian, one, diamond, LMH, Baghdadian, LMH, two, ruby, LL, Yaka, three, cat's eye, you know here, you know here, four, zircon, Ladu, Ladu, five, pearl, Lula, comms, six, coral, mer, mergent, seven, emerald, who's real high or eight, topaz. Zumaru, why cut Sfer? Zumaru, why cut Asfer? Nine, Sapphire, why cut Druk? I cut Druk, North and South America. T H E H E rules as to the testing and valuing of pre. Sea stones in the New World are not the same in all the countries that it embodies. Those places that have been originally colonized or are still possessed by the British are guided by the British standard of testing jewelry. Those that belong to the French, Dutch, Danish, or Spanish are amenable to the laws of the respective states to which they belong, and so on. The republics have the same laws as to the use and identification of precious stones as obtained in the countries whose inhabitants form the bulk of their population. 956 appendices. The aboriginal natives, whose number is gradually getting less, the light in pearls and corals with which they have been known to decorado themselves. A N T A R T I C A and Polynesia, Antarctica, which represents the group of islands lying within or near the Antarctic Circle, and Polynesia, which consists of a vast multitude of small islands scattered over the Pacific. 
have not been much known to us as containing mines of any precious stones. These are inhabited by wild people, most of whom tattoo their bodies and decorate themselves with skull and pieces of bones strung together. Australasia. In he British possessions in Australasia are AUS, Australia, Tasmania, New Zealand, Norfolk Island, Auckland Isles, and Chatham Isles. The inhabitants of these colonies are, for the most part, British and are consequently subject to the same rules for the identification and valuation of jewels as obtained in the mother country. A treatise on gems. 957. Malaysia. This consists of the islands that are generally reckoned as belonging to the eastern archipelago. The aboriginal inhabitants of these islands are chiefly Malays and partly Papuas or Oceanic Negroes who are almost complete savages. Some of these islands are foreign possessions. Portions of Java and Sumatra, for instance, belong to the Dutch, the Philippine Islands to Spain, Labuan on the west coast of Borneo to the English, and so forth. The mode of testing and valuing jewels and of using them in these places is partly the same as obtained in the countries from which the colonists have respectively settled, and partly a mixture of the rules that are in use in Burma, Siam, Ceylon, India, and other neighboring countries. Borneo is known to contain diamond mines, Salon. The jewelers of this country are called Chulis by their brother professionals of India, as the jewelers of Hindustan use for their language of jewels, Sanskrit, with a mixture of Urdu, together with the dialects of their respective localities. So the Singhalese Chulis use Sanskrit with a mixture. From Amud Sadkato Saheb, a Singhalese jeweler, 958 appendices of PLI, their national language, together with the provincial dialects of the people. In Ceylon, works on jewelry in the PLI language can, if searched for, be met with. We have fortunately been able to secure a copy of a Singhalese work on stones called Ratna Pariksh, composed in the PLI language. What we propose to give here is not, however, the reproduction of views enunciated in this work. The views orally received from Singhalese jewelers of the day form the subject of our present notice. Nine precious stones are recognized in Sanskrit authorities, whereas eight stones are reckoned as the principal ones by the Chulas of Ceylon Gameda being rarely used in the country and not considered as belonging to the class of the precious stones. The term ratnam is used as a general designation for jewels. Most of the names of the stones are based on Sanskrit and used as such both by the Hindu and Mohammedan jewelers of the country. Thus, Raka is called Bajram, Anika, Mikyam, Enlam, Enlam, Baidriya, Baidriyam, Pushparga, Pushpargam, Marakata, Pucha, Mukt, Mutu, Prabla, Pagalam. It will be observed that the first four words are exact. By Sanskrit, the fifth is a local dialect and the last three are PLI, a corruption of the Sanskrit. Bajram the diamond. This stone has been known to possess the same four varieties of color as are recognized by Sanskrit authorities, viz. white, black, red, and yellow. The white specimens are called verbarum, the black ones, carp verum, the red varieties, sakar verum and the yellow ones, Madranam. The Chulas acknowledge the same defects of the diamond as jewelers of other countries. Such diamonds as have black spots about them go by the name of cartopal. Those that have black streaks are called idkal. Of all defects of the diamond, the above two are the most important. No Hindu Singhalese would ever consent to keep in his house a diamond having black streaks over it. The people of Salon have an idea that the goddess of fortune never resides in the home of one who keeps in a diamond having any of the two defects specified as above. Um, Nikyam, the ruby, by the term Nikyam. The Chulas mean such stones as have the color of the pure, transparent blood issuing afresh from the body of a healthy animal. 960 appendices. The ordinary varieties of the ruby are called sap by Mahomedan jewelers and gambu by the Hindus. Carlinum, carnelian, is the name applied to such specimens as have a tinge of black in them. And mancha, too such as have g-dash of yellow in them. According to the Chulids, the spotless specimens only are entitled to be kept in the royal treasury. Others are productive of no good to the possessors thereof. 
The milky imperfections in the ruby are called cobank by some and nasal by others. Milam and Pushparga, the sapphire and the topaz. The defects in these stones are judged by the same standard as applied to the testing of the ruby. Push the emerald. The chulids divide though. Emerald into two classes, viz. The old and the new, the former specimens go by the name of, in the Sony jewelers also divide the emerald into two classes. Those born in the old ones are noted for their transparency, the depth of their color, and the purity of their water. Those that are found in the new mines are rather less deep in color, less transparent, contain less pyre water, and have, instead of the color of the green corn, some will have a blackish tinge in some of the specimias, a treatise on gems. 961. Prampu, the latter by that of Pudupache, by Dream, the Singhalese are great admirers of. Uh, such specimens of the cat's eye as have the surface of a golden color. Such specimens are called punikan vedriam. Those stones that have a black surface are styled carnal vedriam. The chulas call the line in the cat's eye by the same term, su, as is used by Hindustani jewelers. Unlike the Hindustani jewelers, the Hindu chulas attach some value to the black varieties and none whatever to the smoke colored and party colored specimens. The defective specimens are called tarburi and those that contain no lines are known as kinanul, matu the pearl. The chulas are at one with other authorities in the testing and in pronouncing upon the merits and defects of the pearl. The good, round, transparent pearls are called animatu, the blackish specimens masu, the yellowish ones chiller, the very small varieties tur, the deformed 962 appendices, specimens, ansar, and the ones used for medicinal purposes, mis. The sujini cut is known by the name of krayal, the best cut by that of Nicrael, and the worst cut by that of KHRP Krayal. The seas about Ceylon abound in pearl fisheries. These pearls are brought over to India and sold by the Chulas who take away emerald, vidria, and such other stones as are not found in abundance or found at all in Ceylon, where they sell them to great advantage. Pagal on the coral. It is divided into two classes. The light colored specimens are called Belle and the colored ones Kapu. The black varieties are called Kuli Kapu, the drop shaped ones, Tarikumbu or Nimli, and the defective ones, Nimchasi. The pearl and the coral are sold in Ceylon by Tolis and Dikaini. The wild Singhalese never use a coral that is not defective. They labor under an impression that genuine corals cannot but be defective. Zuberzu, called in Ceylon Puch Maraca. Tam, and they're reckoned as a variety of the emerald. Good specimens of the ruby are rarely met with in Ceylon. Diamond has sometimes been found in some of the old mines. The sapphire and the topaz are to be had in abundance. Generally speaking, colored stones are termed near if they have their color deep in some portions and light in others. Sugar. If they have their color very light, KTTBK, if their water is impure, and NRB, if they possess a very good water. A treatise on gems. Seven hundred and seventeen. Translation. Three hundred and thirty-five. The city was square, it measured a hundred yojonas, and all over was decked in pearls, rubies, diamonds, and other gems. Three hundred and thirty-six minutes, three hundred and thirty-eight. The city was high, it was ornamented with gems, and was furnished with cupolas of rubies and diamonds, with emerald pillars, and with courtyards of rubies. It contained endless temples. It had crossroads decked with sapphires, and highways blazing with gems. It blazed like the meridian sun in summer. Translation. Description of Ayodhya. 339. Ayodhya contained palaces of gold and jewels. Its ground was beaten gold. 340. The city looked like the celestial residence of the trident-bearing god on the Sumeru, Mandera, or Kielsa. 341 minus 342. The Ayodhya of the royal anchor. Rantideva was studded with jewels, Chandra Kantas, which exude dew, ornamented its count less windows and roads. The city contained gems in such profusion that it would have been counting the stars to enumerate the jewels. A treatise on gems, 721, 343. Translation, description of the city of Kansa. Krishna saw the city of Kansa made of crystal, furnished with high gates, with golden doors, with impregnable brass and copper battlements, with gardens and fairy wood lands. 344. He saw the city furnished with golden crossways, palaces, gardens, range courts, cornices, and raised platforms, studded with cat-sized diamonds, pure sapphires, coral, pearls, 
emeralds and see a treatise on gems. 723, translation. The city of the king Chandrasekhara. 345, Chandrasekhara, king of Karavira, said this and founded a city adorned with high palaces. 346, these houses were 700 yards high and 52 and a half yards in length. The courtyards were made of gold and gems. 347, the terraces were made of white cat's eyes. The pillars were of gold and gems. They were constructed by Visvakarm. 348, the stairs were of gems. The cornices were of cat's eyes, the rest of gold. The roofs might become the courts of the gods themselves. The king made the palace to meet the wish of his beloved spouse, Travat. A treatise on gems, 725. Translation, the description of the city of Ahitshatra, 349 minus 350. After passing through many cities with the horse of the Asvamita, Satrumna came to Ahitshatra city, which was filled with people of the four castes. It was adorned with gems of various kinds, decked in gold and crystal, and furnished with palaces and gates. The city of the Yakshya Purnavadra described. Incidentally, 351. O Agastya, thereupon the Yaksha of Pranavadra called in his principal wife, decked in golden pendants, and said, A treatise on gems. 727. Translation. 352. Love, this palace furnished with apartments hung with mirrors, with windows decked in rows of pearls, and with yards adorned with Chandrakandas, fails to please me. 353. Look, the courtyard is made of rubies and sapphires, the pillars are studded with corals, it looks like a flower red about to come out. 354, around the house shine gemmed flags, and it is redolent of the odor of black aguru. 355, love. The chambers are perpetually sick with the aroma breathed from Latusos, but the one of a sun fills all round with vacancy, a treatise on gems. 729, translation, description of Vaikuntha. 356, then Brahma and Mahadeva went to the residence of Dharma, and the three then went to Vaikuntha. 357. Poets failed to describe the beauty of its highways, decked with rubies and sapphires. 358. The palaces were furnished with gemmed cupolas, with gemmed staircases, and with ten thousand millions of apartments. 359. All around the city stood pillars of ver, million colored rubies, a treatise on gems. 731. Translation. 360. The middle of the city was adorned with beautiful sapphires. The walls also were adorned with jewels. 361. Besides these gems, the city was filled with everything that could please the senses. It contained 500 millions of houses set apart for the milkmen and other devout people. 362. It contained raised platforms composed of sapphires, rubies, diamonds, and rachakas, chrysophrases. It blazed in the light of these gems. 363. It contained a court which excelled others in grandeur. It was adorned with the very best gems of priceless worth and furnished with a hundred temples. A treatise on gems, 733. Translation. Description of Kalsa, 364. Furnished with a hundred highways made of gems of excellent luster, with handsome raised seats studded with gems, 365. Adorned with pictures, furnished with a thousand millions of rooms, and decked with blazing cupolas of gems, 366 was the residence of Mahadeva, which he saw in the midst of Kailsa, glorious with a sun-like luster. 367. The house was surrounded by a gemmed wall. It was beautiful to look at. It was furnished with 16 doors and adorned with a hundred temples. Translation. 368. The temples were studded with nonpareil. Gems. They had gemmed staircases, gemmed pill, large gemmed doors. It had brilliant cupolas, decked with diamonds and chains of rubies, 369. The main gate of the place was furnished with doors of gems. 370. Inside and outside the house stood raised seats of rubies and emeralds. 371. Himalaya saw within the house a hundred temples adorned with cupolas of bright jewels. Translation. 372. The temples were made of priceless gems. They were furnished with doors of pearls, glass, and diamonds. 373. The rooms were yellow like Gorachana. They contained a thousand gemmed pillars and had staircases of gems. 374. They contained various kinds of pictures. They were fringed with chains of pearls and rubies. Description of the city of the NGAs. 375. The King Chandragada sank in the waters, and as he descended, saw a number of the Jumna, of NGA females. 
a treatise on gems, 739. Translation, 376. The fair ones had been sporting, but as soon as they saw the king, they took him to the palace of the Angias, 377. Thus led the monarch entered the wonderful palace of Takshaka, 378. He fell to beholding the building, which resembled the palace of Indra, 379. It was furnished with many staircases, made of cat's eyes and corals. The main gate was adorned with rubies, and the house looked beautiful in rows of pearls. A treatise on gems, 741, translation, 380. The yard was a chandra contus. The doors and door frames were of gold. All around the house were lighted innumerable lamps. Description of Gigantha's temples and sea, 381. And it was constructed a raised seat of wonderful gems, on which was placed a jeweled throne. 382. Some parts of the temple being made of gold and gems look brilliant. Some being made of crystal look like the autumnal heavens. 383. Some made of sapphires appeared like masses of clouds. Some parts were studded with gems. A treatise on gems. 743. Translation. 384 minus 386. Odwihas, the grandfather of all Brahm, made Gigantha sit at the door of the house, ornamented with gemmed pillars and mirrors, with the view of installing him. After sprinkling him with the sacred waters taken out of gemmed pitchers, he installed him on a throne of royal state for bringing people. Description of RSA Mandala. 387 minus 388. O Raja, thou art the mine of precious gems. Thou art ablaze with no end of diamonds, rubies, costubus, amp, sea. Thou art ten millions of yojonas in breadth and long a hundred times in breadth. The river Viraj surrounds thee. Translation. 389. The RSA Mandala was surrounded by a thousand millions of houses of excellent gems for the accommodation of the milkmaids. 390. These houses were ablaze with gemmed lamps. They were furnished with floral beds. They were sick with the odor of incenses of various kinds. They were hung round with garlands of flowers and with gemmed mirrors. 391. In addition to the guards appointed for the purpose, 30 millions of maids belonging to RDH, decked in gemmed ornaments and clad in beautiful clothes, kept watch and ward over them. 390. Tominus 393. Ovraha, the RSA Mandala situated, in the midst of these houses was round and looked fine like the image of the moon in water. It was decked in excellent jewels. It measured 10 yojanas. It was furnished with sacred pots filled with fruits and leaves and with beautiful chains of diamonds. Translation, description of Erdika's house, 394. Osage, the house was very beautiful. It was circular, measured 24 miles, was furnished with 100 temples and blazed with gems of various kinds. 395. It was made of priceless gems. It was enclosed in a fine wall studded with gems. 396. It contained raised seats of gems and was furnished with seven doors. It was extremely handsome and contained round things of gems. 397. Its doors were made of precious gems, some of which were yellow, and others, diamonds. A treatise on gems. 749. Translation. 398. The pillars were of emeralds, diamonds, and other gems. 399. The house was 2,000 yards high. It flamed in jewels. The gods were struck with the appearance of the mansion. Description of Bhagavati's car. 400. Hearing this strange news from the lips of Narada, Rurin asked the permission of her spouse and went to her father's place. 401. Thereafter, she ascended a car. Wonder. Fully made, beautiful, having auspicious marks, agreeable to drive in, and furnished with doors on all sides. A treatise on gems. 751. Translation. 402. It was brilliant like molten gold, was decked with good gems, with garlands, and with canopies bearing rows of pearls. 403. Adorned with gem pillars, with diamond stairs, with doors of corals and molten gold. 404. With floral beds, with seats of jewels, with windows fringed with diamond chains, with spacious parts, studded with flawless gems. 405. Such was the car which the great goddess ascended with her favorite maids. Translation. Description of the Radhika's car. 406. Hearing this, the fair one ascended the car, with her 21,000 millions of milk. Maids. 407. The gemmed car was furnished with 30 millions of cupolas and with blazing pictures. It looked like the sun. 408. The central part was made of gems. It was ornamented with gems like vermilion and with 10 millions of pillars. 409. The gemmed lion, which graced the upper part of the car, 
its gem doors, and the various. Pictures added grace to the vehicle. Translation. 410. The top was adorned with cupolas made of gems. Its interior with gemmed beds and with various articles of gems. 411. The car had 10 millions of staircases. Made of Siamantaka, Costuva, Ruchakas, Ripkai, Sofrases, Sparsamani, and other gems colored, like Kumkuma. It was furnished with emerald, raised seats, 412. The other parts of the car were ornamented with gem mirrors and other articles never seen or heard of. The car of Chiabena, 413. Parts of this were made of emeralds. Its raised seats were of coral, the spaces in front of. The doors were furnished with terraces of coral. The doors were of diamonds. A treatise on gems, 757. Translation, 414 minus 415. O oh, timid creature, after bathing in this lake, ascend this car, whose sapphire top is adorned with golden cupolas, which has a curious canopy decked with emeralds and rubies, and whose gate is adorned with chains of gems. The car of a certain righteous man, 416 minus 417, the wife of the Brahmin in the meantime, saw a car descending from the aerial regions. It was made of gold, was furnished with gemmed mirrors, and with gemmed pillars. It blazed with gems, a treatise on gems. 759. Translation. Instructions of the sage Visayana to Satruna. 418. O Satruna, on your fine body, like that of Kandarpa, wear golden amulets, and on your head decked in gems, a turban studded with darkness-destroying diamonds. Description of King Sumada. 419. Satruna, accompanied with his ministers and forces, saw the valorous King Sumada dressed in excellent pearls, rubies, and other ornaments. A treatise on gems. 761. Translation. Instructions issued by Bharata on the return of Aram Chandra. 420. Let thousands of thousands of fair girls, decked in jewels and mounted on elephants, shower barbaric pearls before Aram Chandra's path, the sons of King Pushkala to their father. 421 minus 422. O great king, bestow on Aram Chandra gems resembling the sun, elephant begot pure pearls, a hundred thousand corals, and other precious things. Translation. Description of Aram Chandra's Ashvamedha, 423 minus 425. The noble king, seeing the horse having white hairs, decked in golden leaves, gems, gem chains, curious saddles, reins consisting of chains of pearls, having a speed like that of thought, beautiful, well begot, went to Satruna, on foot, dressed in regal garments, coming of the Himalaya on the ceremony of Purvati. 426 minus 427 taking with him loads of jewels necessary for the ceremony, a million of kind, 10 millions of mohars, 400 thousands. Ruchakas, chrysopresses, 400 thousands of philosopher's stones, 400 thousands of pearls, 400 thousands of diamonds, and a thousand costumes. Himalaya came to the ceremony of his daughter Parvia, a treatise on gems. 765. Translation. Best all of alms by Bhagavati at the Upanayana of Krishna. 428 minus 429. First, Pravat gladly blessed Krishna with pearls, rubies, diamonds, and diamond chains given to her by her father in a gem vessel. Next, Sho bestowed white flowers and derva grass, bestowal of gems by Vasudeva and Devaki for the welfare of Krishna. 430. Devak bestowed gems, pearls, gold, rubies, diamonds, and fireproof white clothes to Nanda, a treatise on gems. 767. Translation. 431. O best of sages, the widow Kunt, in accordance with the wishes of Vasudeva, acquired various kinds of gems and went to her home with her sons. 430 Tominus 433. Vasudeva and Devak distributed to Brahmins and others pearls, rubies, diamonds, luscious sweetmeats, and sea to call their blessings on their son. Bestowal of gems by the gods on the occasion of the birth of Ganesha. 434. Hara and Parvi came out and distributed various gems to Brahmins for their blessings on their son, a treatise on gems. 769. Translation. 435. Himalaya distributed to the Brahmins ten. Millions of diamonds, pearls, rubies, and C436. Vishnu was glad and gave to Brahmins. Clothes, ornaments, and amongst other things, gems derived from the ocean of milk. 437 minus 438. Onrada, Gandharvas, mountains, and the goddesses distributed to Brahmins a thousand philosopher's stones, a hundred chrysoprases, as many kostavas, as many diamonds, a thousand rubies, 
a hundred other gems and a hundred. Gonda Sasias, a treatise on gems, 771. Translation, 439 minus 440. O Brahman, the goddess Lakshmi was delighted and bestowed on Brahmins a hundred Chandrakantas, as many Sriyakantas, a thousand emeralds, and ten thousand gems whiter than Kastuva. Bestow all of gems on Ganesha by the gods, 441 minus 442. Sarasvati bestowed on Ganesha a chain made of gems, rare in the three worlds, flawless, and more brilliant than the sun. Rubies, diamonds, Kastuvas, and other excellent gems grace the chain. A treatise on gems, 773. Translation, 443. The goddess Svitri bestowed a chain made of the very best gems to be found in the three worlds and other ornaments. 444. Guevara was glad and bestowed a hundred priceless gems. Indra, a throne of gems, and the sun, a pair of gemmed earrings. 445. The moon, a chain of rubics. Guevara, a diadem. Varuna, an umbrella of gems and two pairs of bangles studded with excellent gems, begotten in the ocean of sweet milk. 446. Thereafter, other gods and goddesses, sages and mountains began to bestow jewels. Translation, the installation of KRTIKF. 447. Then the father of the universe, Vishnu, gladly raised Kritikiya to the gem throne at an auspicious moment. 448. He sprinkled on Kritikiya the waters of all the sacred spots contained in a hundred gem vessels. 449. He then gave him excellent ornaments of jewels, the Kastuva gem, a garland of wild flowers, and the discus. Tiki birth of Vashanara fire, 4 and 50. Taladam, Urvas, Ram, Prav, Vidyuprav, Sumangal, SUVLP, Suzal, and C. A treatise on gems, 777. Translation, 451 minus 453. Joyfully came there with golden vessels in their hands, containing pearls, rubies, the yakya mud, a mixture of camphor, aguru, kasturi, and the fruit kakola. Diamonds, cat size, lamps, turmeric, and other pastes. Emeralds, conches, oysters, curds, rubies, corals, kumkuma, zircons, topazes, sapphires, and garlands of excellent flowers. 454. Celestial girls, kinners, and thousands of other females came there, came with other. Things necessary for the ceremony, waving chauris, gandharva, NGA, and laughing yakya. Women came there and began to sing exquisitely. 455. A treatise on gems. 781. Translation. The beauty of Krishna. 4 and 60 minus 461. After finishing her prayers, Bhagavat fixed her thoughts on Krishna and saw him clad in a halo mounted on a car made of gems, orna, mented with diamonds, decked in chains of precious stonks, on a car of wonderful beauty. The fascinating god was decked in floral garlands and gemmed ornaments. Description of Bena, 460 Tamanis, 4.63. After this, Dirk saw before her a dwarf, who was a Brahmin boy refulgent like countless. Sons decked in gem bangles and amulets, in chains of precious stones, in gemmed anklets, in a diadem of bright gems, in gemmed car rings. A treatise on gems. 783. Translation. Beauty of Viraj, 464 minus 465. Seeing the beautiful Viraj, whose ears were decked in ear rings, whose breast was ornamented with chaste flowers and pearl chains, whose nose was graced with an elephant begotten pearl whose arms were ornamented with gemmed bangles and beautiful conches, whose buttocks sounded the kinkinis who wore gemmed anklets, Krishna was in ecstasies. And he fell to embracing and kissing the damsel incessantly. 784 sacred jewels. Sacred jewels, ancient and modern jewelry. All countries, gems, set or unset, were dedicated to the gods. Mention of jewels has been frequently made in the Bible. The breastplate of Aaron, the high priest, was adorned with 12 stones. Apophenia says that when the Jewish high priest entered the Sanctum Sanctotum on the three great occasions, the Pasha, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles, Ho wore suspended 66 over the breastplate. The Urim and Thummim, which he, Epiphanius, translated by the word declaration, because the Adamas of a cerulean color by which our sapphire is meant, of which it consisted, declared, by change of color, the pleasure or displeasure of Jehovah towards his people. The breastplate was named by the Greeks, the sea oracle of judgment. It was in the form of a span, eight inches square, and had the stones set thereon in four rows in the following order. Lat row, sardius, red, tapezius, yellowish green, smaragdus, bright green, second row, carbunculus red, sapphirus blue, jaspis green, hardy row, ligurius, lincurium, 
yellow, achates, black and white, amethystus purple. A treatise on gems. 785, fourth row, chrysolithus yellow, onyx, blue, and black, beryllus, pale green, or pale blue. The names of the 12 tribes of Israel were engraved, each on a separate stone in the national character, by which perhaps the Chaldee is meant, with the object of securing divine protection. This breastplate was taken over to Rome, along with the other spoils of the temple, by Emperor Titus, and was there deposited in the Temple of Peace. According to some, all the spoils were sent off by Genseric to Carthage when Rome was sacked, and were said to have been drowned with the ship that carried them away. Others say that these were taken back from Carthage, where they had been really sent, and deposited by Justinian in the sacristy of St. Sophia, but seized with the fear of having committed sacrilege. He sent them off to the Christian Church of the Holy Sepulchre at Jerusalem. The story continues that when the holy city was taken by Crossroads II of Persia in 615-15, he took the breastplate away to his own country, where there is reason for thinking. It may still be found buried in some of the treasuries of the old capitals. In his vision of the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, St. John describes her walls as built out of 12 courses of precious stones, the arrangement was as follows. One, jaspis, dark green. Two, sapphires, blue. Three, chalcedon, a greenish blue sort of emerald. Four, smaragdus, bright green. Five, sardonyx, red and white. Six, sardius, bright red. Seven, chrysolite, golden yellow. Eight, beryl, bluish green. Nine, papasius, yellowish green. Ten, chrysoprasus, apple green. Eleven, hyacinthus, blue. 12, amethyst, violet, or purple. Certain stones have been dedicated to the deities by engraving their figures upon them. For example, the splendid pyramidal amethyst in the Bespro cabinet has been thus consecrated to Serapis. A Niccolo of an extraordinary size was dedicated to Juno. Pompey consecrated to Jupiter the rarest minerals found in the treasury. CR dedicated six. Caskets of his selected rings to Venus, and Marcellus gave another to the goddess of peace. Livia Augusta dedicated in the capital, the largest block of crystal ever seen. The custom of dedicating also obtained in the Middle Ages. It is. Gems are in use from time immemorial, mentioned in the Talmud that Noah had no other. Light in the ark than that which was produced by the precious stones he had by him. Abraham, it is said, being jealous of his many wives, confined them in an iron prison, whose walls were so high as to exclude all light of the sky and in order to supply them with light. He placed with them a large bowl studded with precious stones, which illumined the whole place. The grandeur of the Feast of Cleopatra is perhaps unparalleled in ancient history. The banqueting hall in which CR was feasted struck his admiration. Everywhere were seen columns of porphyry, ivory porticos, pavements of onyx, thresholds of tortoise shell, in each spot of which an emerald was set, furniture inlaid with yellow jasper, couches studded with gems. Caesar himself was the possessor of splendid jewels. The cedar ships built by Caligula had their sterns inlaid with precious stones. In Citatus, his favorite horse wore a collar of pearls. The golden house of Nero had panels made of mother o' pearl, enriched with gold and costly gems. At the great games instituted by him, among other things, pearls and precious stones were daily thrown away to the people as lottery prizes. Molia Paulina, the wife of Caligula, was known to have dressed herself on the occasion of a supper of ordinary betrothals with jewelry to the value of 336 pounds, 0000, zero, zero, zero sterling. A pin that had belonged to the Empress Sabina was found in the ruins of Pompeii and Herculaneum and is now to be seen in the Museum of Naples. Sabina, the younger, possessed a pair of garters, which, on account of the rich cameo clasps, was estimated at 40,000 pounds. A relic of the 12th century is still to be found in England. It is the grace cup of Thomas Becket. The cup is of ivory, with mountings of silver, the upper and lower parts being studded with gems. The inscription around the cup is Vinum Tuum, Babcum Gandio, i.e., drink thy cup with joy. But round the lid is the restraining injunction, Sobru Astodai, with the initials TB, interwoven. With the mitre, Eleonora of Provence, the wife of Henry III, 13th century, possessed a vast amount of jewelry. The coronation present given her by her sister, Queen Margaret of France, was a large silver peacock whose train was set with sapphires and pearls and other precious stones wrought with silver. 
this elegant piece of jewelry was used as a reservoir for sweet waters, which were forced out of its beak into a basin of silver, chased the Spaniards and Italians of May 14, 2024. And 15 centuries were famous for their extrava, hands and apparel loaded with gold and gems from the time of Francis I to that of Louis Sheath of France, the major portion of the jewels worn consisted of pearls and colored gems. It was not until the death of Maria Theresa of Austria that brilliance came to be the fashion. The scarf, or Spanish mantilla, worn by Catherine of Aragon at her wedding, had a border of gold, pearls, and precious stones. When Henry VIII met his bride, Anne of Cleve, he was dressed in a coat of purple, studded all over with diamonds, pearls, rubies, and sea. The dress of the bride was a gown of rich cloth of gold embroidered very thickly with great flowers of large orient pearls. The dress of Queen Mary when she was married to Philip of Spain was a robe brocaded on a gold ground and had a long T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-G-E-M-S, 789, train bordered with pearls and diamonds. She also wore on her breast the celebrated diamond, which she had received as a present from her husband. The rich white satin dress, which Elizabeth wore at a tournament given on December 29, 1554, was set all over with Largo pearls. The jewels of Mary, Queen of Scots, were many and splendid. The appeals show made from her captivity to Elizabeth for the restoration of her jewelry, which had been taken unjust possession of by the rapacious queen, possess a melancholy historical interest. The great age of diamonds and rubies particularly demanded by Mary was an ornament for the breast in that form called the Great Harry, having been given by Henry VII to his daughter Margaret on her marriage to James IV as part of her rich bridal outfit, so that it really formed no part of the crown jewels of Scotland, but was Mary's private property. She had a peculiar value for this Tudor heirloom. The passion for gems and jewels raged high in France during the reigns of Henry IV, Louis VIII, and Louis IV. England kept pace with France in the extravagance. During the reign of Elizabeth, James I, and Charles I, the fashion of wearing jewels in the hat was at this period adopted throughout Europe. The history of gems would not be complete without the story of the diamond necklace, a short account of which is given below. In 1774, Louis Sexby ordered the court jewelers to collect the best specimens of diamonds and to prepare a necklace therewith for presentation to his favorite, Madame du Barry. But before the necklace was complete, the unfortunate king breathed his last. But the jeweler finished the necklace, valuing it at 72,000 pounds sterling, in the hope of selling it to Louis XVI. The new king refused to purchase it, saying that a ship was more necessary than a necklace. Consequently, the jewelry remained in the hands of the makers till events came to pass in which the Queen Marie Antoinette, Louis, Prince Cardinal of Rohan, and one Madame Lamotte were involved. Struggling for a long time for the bare necessities of life, Jean de Saint Remy, daughter of Chevalier Baron de Saint Remy of the Blood Royal of Valois, managed at last to marry a noble man of the name of Lamont, and came up with her husband to Paris, where she procured an interview with the cardinal and flung herself on his protection. But his eminence little knew the viper he was nourishing in his breast. Madame Lamont was an ad, venturous of the boldest stamp, taking advantage of the confidence placed upon her when she was informed by the cardinal of their displeasure. He had incurred the queen, when he was requested to introduce her to Her Majesty, she devised a plan, the denouement of which was the sensation of whole Europe at the time. She imposed on the credulity of the Cardinal by mentioning to him the steps she had been taking to restore him to the favor of the Queen and forge letters addressed to him, as coming from Her Majesty had forged orders given to him commanding certain money payments. On behalf of the Queen, had procured for him an interview with the Queen, who was persona, ted by a friend of the Madame, and at last made him negotiate for the diamond necklace on behalf of Her Majesty, who wanted to have the transaction kept a profound secret, and who wished the Cardinal, by a power forged in her name, to arrange for the payment of the money by certain installments. Of course, the Queen was in supreme ignorance of the audacious way in which her name was being used, and the Cardinal, in his blind eagerness to regain royal favor, never suspected the deep tricks that were being played with him. The necklace was in the meantime taken away to London, where it was sold by pieces the money obtained by the sale being deposited in the Bank of England under a false name. The time for the payment of the first installment came, but Madame contrived to ward off the payment by offering a small sum on account and gained a month's time in order to make her security probably sure. 
but the clever part she played throughout was soon to be brought to light. The jewelers complained of the delay in payment to the queen herself, who expressed her genuine surprise at all that had happened. The cardinal was arrested and put into the Bastille. So were 792 sacred jewels, a dom and her confederates. The cardinal was, however, found innocent and let off, and subsequently exiled. Madame Lamont was sentenced to be flogged, branded on both shoulders, and imprisoned with life. When the first part of the sentence was carried out, she made the basest calumnies against the queen and the minister. Her husband, when condemned for conspiracy, threatened to publish a pamphlet wherein the character of the queen and the minister would be revealed. It is strange that Her Majesty, whose moral character was above the breath of scandal, should have ordered the release of Madame after ten months and allowed her to escape to England, where a large sum of money was sent to purchase the silence of the clever pair. But this bribe was in a manner refused, for, though the memoir of Madame Lamont was burnt, a second copy was soon after published. Copies of the scandalous memoir were, it is said, found in the palace of Versailles and taken passes, see on by the Republican government, and are now to be found in the State Library of Paris. This unfortunate affair in the reign of Louis the Keith put a damper on the taste for jewelry which had so far increased during the preceding reigns, the revolution of 1789 stamped out the last vestiges of the passion for precious stones. The time of the Directoire was characterized by the revival of the Greek and Roman fashions with regard to dress, manners, arts, and fashions with the Restoration. A treatise on gems, 793. Diamonds, which had been supported by pearls, became the fashion, and all the lost forms of using precious stones came back to use. France truly boasts of elegance and taste as displayed in the collection and making of jewelry, to a degree which other nations have found it impossible to attain. A list of jewelry belonging to a rich nobleman taken in 1828 shows that the art belonged to the eclectic school, i.e., the fashion was not copied from any period but borrowed from every country, age, and among the many ornaments used by the ancients and brought down to the present times, maybe mention the rings, car rings, bracelets, chains, necklaces, brooches, clasps, diadems, girdles, hairpins, aigrets, ansi. The Mexicans, Peruvians, and the Oriental nations have delighted in boring their nose, cheek, and chin for hanging jewels thereon. The ladies of Baghdad, according to Tavernier, wore two collar of jewels around the face, as well as nose jewels. The Arab women put in the cartilago of the nose de ring, so large as to encircle the mouth, and to prove no obstacle to the passing of food into it. The Indian courtesans bore their nostril, and wear in it a ring set with precious stone. The women of Lars and Ormuz pierced the upper portion of their nose, the bone itself, and passed through the hole a hook that fastens a sheet of gold shaped to cover the nose and enriched with rubies, emeralds, and turquoises. The princes and princesses of the Mahonan blood royal use as the badge of their position two poniards at their belt. The daughter of the Duke of Alba, one of the maids of honor to the Queen of Spain, always carried a pistol fastened to her side, of finely polished steel, and ready for execution. The collar, chain, and necklace are of a highly classical origin and had been extensively used by the Medes, Babylonians, Egyptians, Hebrews, Greeks, and Romans. Gold collars were given by the ancient Romans to their auxiliary troops and to strangers as rewards for military prowess, silver ones to the citizens. But subsequently, the metal used was in accordance with the nature of the position or deeds of the fortunate recipient. The golden collar in use among the Gauls and the Romans was an insignia of knighthood. Collars are even now used for the same purpose, the chains to which the different orders are hung, being called the collars of the order for Instanco, the collar of the Holy Ghost of St. Michael Ansi. The chain was regarded in the East as a badge of honor and an insignia of authority given by the king. Joseph was invested with this honor by Pharaoh and Daniel by Belshazzar. In Persia, no man could wear two chain unless he was in office and unless it was bestowed by the king. In the reign of Murhi and Hoyne, the Irish gentlemen only wore a chain of gold round their neck by command of the king. The core of Edward the Confessor on being, opened in the reign of James II, was found to have under one of the shoulder bones, among various other things, a gold chain, 24 inches in length. Noble men were in the habit of wearing heavy gold chains in the Middle Ages and down to the 17th century. As items of feminine ornaments, the chain and the necklace were used even in the most remote ages. Though wealthy Roman ladies used chains of gold or silver round their waists and throats, the poorer ones of copper, necklaces came into fashion in France in the time of Charles VI, I, I, when he presented one of his diamonds to his mistress, Agnes Sorrel. The satin stone necklace was profusely worn at the time of the Restoration, the pearl necklace of the present queen. Of Prussia, an empress of Germany is a thing of great interest, 
and will he morrow so, if preserved unbroken. On the first anniversary of her birthday, after her marriage, she received the present of a magnificent pearl from her royal husband, and since that time she continues receiving a similar pearl on the same occasion, the pearls. So collected have enabled her at the present time to get a necklace form that encircles her bosom and falls down to the waist. According to a custom coming down from time immemorial, the bride of the Emperor of France is presented by the city of Paris with the gift of precious stones. A necklace consisting of splendid diamonds had been accordingly prepared for the Empress Eugenie, but the people were greatly disappointed when she expressed a wish that she preferred to the gift an educational institution for poor girls of the Fanburg St. Antoine. This building called the Maison, Eugenie Napoleon was formally opened on the since January 1857. The custom of wearing a cross of gold or set with gems can be traced back to the 16th century. The fashion was revived in the 18th century. Clasps were formerly used by the military men to fasten their mantle with, but the fashion was generally taken to in the third and fourth centuries when the use of the toga was discontinued. The Roman women wore gold chains, collars, necklaces, bracelets, earrings, rings, diadems, fillets, clasps, hairpins, and ankle bands. The Greeks, Romans, and Jews used the girdle. In the Middle Ages, the bankrupts had to surrender their girdles in open court as the signal for their insolvency, the belt in those days serving the same purpose as the pocket or purse does in the present time. In those days, a knight was considered a traitor if he was publicly divested of his belt. There was once in Paris a duty levied on the people every three years known as the Queen's Girdle, which was required for meeting the household expenses of Her Majesty. Caliph Mota of Akel instituted in the Hegira year 235 the Christian's girdle to be worn by all Christians throughout the East. The diamond girdle of Dona Isabel II, Queen of Spain, warded off the thrust of the dagger with which an assassin intended to stab her. The crown was considered in the most ancient, times more as a badge of divinity than of royalty. The first mention of it in the Bible is in the book of Samuel, when the Amalekites brought Saul's crown to David. The first diadems worn only to re present temporal power were perhaps narrow. Fillets tied round the temples. Crowns were next. Used the signals of victory, joy, sorrow, and sea. In these cases, they were made of branches of trees and of flowers. In Rome, the magistrates sat on public occasions crowned with diadems of olive or myrtle. P. Claudius Pulcher, the Roman consul, introduced, according to Pliny, the custom of gilding the circlet of the crown. Finally, the gold crown came into use. Among the military crowns, the mural, civic, and naval crowns were made of gold. The triumphal crowns, originally of laurel, were finally transformed to gold. Heliogabalus was the first to use pearls in the fillet around his temple. About the 10th century, kings, dukes, earls, and C wore a crown or golden circlet. The celebrated iron crown of Lombardy is, in fact, one of pure gold. Its narrow iron circlet is said to have been formed out of the nails with which Christ Wag crucified. This is put inside the crown. Fidelinda, upon her marriage with Agilolf, Duke of Turin, presented her husband with this crown, which is still worn by all kings of Italy, was kept near Milan in the treasury of the monastery of Monza. The first crown worn by a Frankish king was the one sent to Clovis by the emperor Anastasius, together with the diploma of consul. This crown was made of gold and studded with precious stones. The crowns of the ancient Mexican kings were in the shape of a meter of gold. Three specimens of the Roman art are still in existence, which deserve. Mention, not on account of their excellence in workmanship, but for their rarity and for the history. Cal interest the Y possess. One. The eight crowns which some laborers digging a place near Toledo came across in 1858. They were set in gold and studded with gems, the value being computed at 2,000 pounds. They are now to be seen in the Muse de Cluny, Paris. Of these, the most important is the crown of King Ressuswinthus, 653, a broad circle of fine gold, eight inches in diameter and set with 30 extraordi. Nary pearls interspersed with as many fine sapphires. There is a magnificent Latin cross set with eight pearls as big as cherries attached to it. The second crown, said to have belonged to his queen, is set with emeralds, sapphires, opals, pearls, and crystals, and C. The other six were coronets set with inferior stones. Two, the crown of Charlemagne. Charlemagne was crowned Emperor of the West by Pope Leo, on the 25th December 800. His crown was perhaps a treatise on gems, 799, manufactured in Rome, and its workmanship bears evidence of the Byzantine style. It is octagonal in shape, formed by eight plagues of gold with round tops, 
each alternate plague bearing the figure of a saint in enamel. Above all is a Greek cross set with large stones. When Charlemagne was canonized in 1166 by Frederick Barbarossa, his crown was taken out of the grave. At 19 now to be seen in the Imperial Library of Vienna. Three, the crown of Hungary. It is a relic of the regular Byzantine art and is formed by a broad flat band of fine gold from which springs an arch supporting a cross. Four portraits in enamel are set in the springing of the arches which close the top of the crown. There is also a medallion of Christ attached to it, Queen Elizabeth of Hun. Gary pledged this crown with the Emperor Frederick IV and the deed by which it was executed enumerated the number of stones it contained in minus 53 sapphires, 50 rubies, one emerald, and 320 pearls. Its present whereabouts are unknown. Earrings played an important part in the jewelry of the ancients. With the Hebrews, the name signified roundness, and their use was confined to the women. The Iliad mentions Juno as adorned with pendants in the ear. The Athenians considered boring the ears of men a sign of nobility, the Hebrews and Phoenicians and Arabs the symbol of slavery, with the Arabians the expression, to have a ring in one's ear means becoming a slave. The 800 sacred jewels, ancient earrings of Egyptians as seen in the sculptures were of a circular form. Persons of high rank sometimes used earrings shaped like asps made of gold and set with stones. Silver earrings have been found in Thebes. It is said that when Eve was banished from paradise, she had as a sign of slavery, her ears bored. Expensive pearl earrings were worn by the Roman ladies. Those of the emperor's papa were worth three million francs. Those of Caesar's wife, six millions. The Grecian children wore earrings on the right ear only. In India, this ornament is used by both the sexes. The title of the emperor of Astrakhan is, among other things, six, six possessor of the white elephant and the two earrings. In South America, the Incas wore the earrings as badges of knighthood. Keys were at one time used as ear ornaments in England, where also earrings were used even in the reign of Queen Elizabeth. Shakespeare had his ears bored and ornamented with them. The pictures of Henry II and the III of France and their attendants show that they were extensively used in those periods. Sailors and other people of the lower class on the continent are still in the habit of using earrings. Speaking etymologically, the ornament worn on the arm is called the bracelet, Latin brachial, but it generally signifies any circlet worn on the wrists, that on the arm above the elbow, is known as the armlet. In the Eastern countries, the former is worn by women, the latter by men, and is there. Treatise on Gems, 801, considered as a token of royalty, both are ornaments of the highest antiquity. The bracelet was worn by Judah, who was the head of a tribe. The kings of Persia presented it to all ambassadors from foreign courts. The Egyptian kings, as well as the Egyptian women, wore armlets. Bracelets were used in Greece much later than rings. Manchin is made of them in several places in the Bible. Among the Romans, they were considered as marks of honor, and when made of brass or iron, as symbols of slavery but they were on no account worn by unmarried females, not least before they were betrothed. The Sabine warriors, according to Titus Livy, wore them on their left arms. In the Pompeii was found the body of a lady having two bracelets on one arm. In Pliny's time, the men were in the habit of using bracelets of gold. The emperor Maximilian, the successor of Alexander Severus, who was eight feet and one inch in height, used his wife's bracelet as a thumb ring. The bracelets worn by the Roman women were sometimes shaped in the form of a serpent, or in that of a rope or round braid, serpents' heads representing the two ends. They were also used by men as rewards for military prowess. The Gauls used heavy gold armlets and bracelets. Among British kings, the emblems of authority wore gold bands worn on the neck, arms, and knees. King Edgar was mentioned in the Saxon Chronicle 965 as the bestower of Herox, i.e., the rewarder of valor. The Norwegians, Gauls. Celts and Saxons also considered the ornaments as the reward of bravery. These were also used by the Normans and by the savages of Oceania. These were used in the 13th century to be offered to the deity. The ancient Mexican and Peruvian kings possessed a good number of them, the best species. Men's of armlets of the present day are to be met with in the regalia of the Persian kings. The celebrated Kohinoor was once used by Runjeet Singh in an armlet. Of all the ornaments used, rings appear to be the oldest. They have, in some country or other, been meant to symbolize faith, friendship, calm. Man, rank, honor, slavery, and C, and C. The Bible makes mention of ring in several passages. When Pharaoh made over the government of Egypt to Joseph, he gave him his ring, taken off his finger, as a mark of the command he vested in him. Among the Hebrews, the finger rings were primarily used as stamps of genuineness of letters and documents, so with the Babylonians. Being used for this purpose, they were called tabah, which signifies 66 to imprint and also to seal. 
They were usually worn on the little finger of the right hand. From Babylon, the fashion was adopted by the Medes and Persians, and therefrom it was transmitted to the Greeks and Romans. The Greeks called this ornament by a name which denotes finger. The Romans, from the word angula, i.e. nails, it being used by them. Treatise on Gems, 803, primarily on the first joint of the finger and near the nails. In the Egyptian gallery in the British Museum is to be seen a gold ring, among many others, with the figures of Serapis, Isis, and Horus. All the mythological gods of the Hindus are described as wearing rings. The manner of wearing this ornament varies with each nation. The Hebrews put it on the right hand, the Greeks on the fourth finger of the left hand, the Gauls and Britons on the third finger of that hand, the Romans on the left hand. The Asiatics, Peruvians, and Mexicans wear it, not only on their fingers, but on their toes. Even some savage tribes in Asia, Africa, and America put it on their nostrils, checks, and chin. It is supposed that Tarquin the Elder first made the ring the insignia of knighthood and the reward of heroes. Then it was made of iron, long after the senators used the gold ring, which was never allowed to be worn, unless it was the gift of the state, and then only on public occasions, the iron one being used at home. The annulus sponsalium is a eyebrow institution adopted by the Romans. At the conclusion of the betrothal feast, the bridegroom had to place, as a pledge, a ring on the fourth finger of his intended, the fourth finger being preferred from a supposition that a nerve of that finger had a direct communication with the heart. In the days of Pliny, this ring was made of iron, set with a lodestone, which signified the force of attraction which drew the bride out of her own family towards another. The gold ring came into fashion a little more than a century later. In the Roman year 7 to 75, the right of wearing the ring was granted by law to those who, as well as their fathers and grandfathers, possessed landed. Property to the value of 30,360 pounds sterling, and who had the privilege of sitting on the 14 rows of seats in the theaters. Claudius introduced the engraving of the effigy of the sovereign on the gold ring, the use of which was confined to certain persons. Vespasian put an end to all restrictions and gave general permission to all the subjects to use rings with the image of their emperor. The drawing, out of rings from the finger McCant, a token of bargain. Temporary exchanges of rings were considered as vouchers of the fulfillment of engagements, obligatory on both parties. A ring was originally worn on the forefinger, a second was then used in the fourth, a third one on the third, and finally on the thumb and all other fingers except the middle one. The one placed on the little finger was the costliest and never used for sealing purposes. Smaller rings were sometimes put on the second joint of the fingers. Sometimes three rings were placed on the little finger. The Greeks changed their rings weekly. Winter and summer rings were in use in the old days. Rings for the latter season were made of the sardonyx, carnelian, rock crystal, and hyacinth on account of their lightweight and supposed cooling properties. Those for the former were formed of the heavier stones. Rings, weighing sometimes two ounces, were made use of by the ancient pugilists, wherewith to deal mortal blows on their enemies. Heliogabalus never used the same ring twice. Charmed rings were believed in and ostensibly worn by the Greeks, Romans, and the northern nations. Dr. Herklotz, in a work called The Customs of the Muslims of India, gives the following formula for the making of a ring. Where be princes may become obedient to, to our wishes. Should anyone desire to make princes and grandees subject and obedient to his will, he must have a silver ring made with a small square tablet fixed upon it, upon which is to be engraved the number that the letters composing the ISM represent, which in this case is 2613. This number by itself, or added to that of its two demons, 286 and 112, and its genius, one 811 amounting in. All to four 822 must hoe formed into a magic square of the solace or robe kind and engraved upon. When the ring 19 thus finished, he is for a weck to place it before him and daily in the morning and evening to repeat the ASM 5,000 times and blow on it. When the whole is concluded, he is to wear the ring on the little finger of the right hand. The seal ring has been in use from time immemorial. Alexander used to seal the letters he dispatched to Europe with his own seal, those to Asia with that of Darius. Caesar had on his seal, 806 sacred jewels, ring the image of Venus, polio, that of Alexander, and Pompey, that of a frog. From the fourth century, the ring has been considered as a symbol of clerical dignity. The Episcopal ring should be made of gold, set with some rich stone, generally an amethyst. Bishops were formerly buried with rings. They used the ring on the forefinger of the right hand, now it has been removed to the fourth finger during the performance of the holy rites. 
but the bishops of the Greek church wear no ring, this insignia being reserved for archbishops. In the Church of Rome, it is used by the bishops, archbishops, and cardinals. The rite was afterwards extended to abbots. The Pope has two seals. One, a large ring, is the special seal and known as the Annulus Piscatoris, which means that it bears the effigy of St. Peter drawing his nets. It is used as well for the apostolic briefs as for private letters written by the Pope himself or with his sanction. The other has the head of St. Peter on the right and that of St. Paul on the left and a cross between the two. On the reverse is the Pope's name, accompanied sometimes with his arms. Red wax is used for sealing briefs and lead for bulls. Each seal is broken up after the demise of the Pope and eight new one presented by the city of Rome to Higgs' successor. The ring betokens investiture of someone with royal powers. The coronation ring of the English kings is made of plain gold with a large violet table ruby on which is engraved in plain. Treatise on gems, 8-7, cross or that of St. George. That of the queens is also made of gold with a large ruby and surrounded with 16 small brilliants. The Christian Church has adopted the classic custom of using the annulus sponsalium on the occasion of Betro, Thals. Among the Armenians, the betrothal ceremony of children, which takes place very early in the life of the couple, is performed by the mother of the bridegroom who presents the bride with a ring on behalf of her son. The gemmed ring is of French and recent origin. It is composed of twin or double hoops, which, though each is twisted, fit so exactly one into the other. That, when united, they form but one circlet. Each hoop is usually surmounted by three hand raised somewhat above the circle, and when the hoops are brought together, each hand clasps its fellow. One hoop was sometimes of gold and the other of silver. They were then divided, one being worn by the lover and the other by his mistress. The fashion of wearing mourning rings is an old one. Rings were in days of yore given away to the attendants on the day of marriage. The word bags, rings in French, in some cases indicated baggage, personal effects. The French expression, une bague au doigt, a ring on the finger, means a sincure. With the Arabs, the phrase to put on nine rings signifies to get married. Some rings were worn in England in Chaucer's time. In the reign of Elizabeth, aldermen wore plain broad. 808 sacred jewels, gold ring upon their thumbs. Orders and warriors of old have been known to make use of rings as receptacles for deadly poisons. Rings have, in all countries, been extensively used as souvenirs, passports, and token of recognition. They played an important part in the life of Queens Mary and Elizabeth during Mary's reign, and criminal was saved from the very scaffold by means of the Queen's ring found with him. Elizabeth had sent to Mary a diamond ring as a pledge of her friendship and promise of assistance. But this stone sent back from the prison to the giver as a reminder of former pledges brought no good to the unfortunate Queen of Scots. A similar present to Essex was thrown by him from the tower to a boy who was to have taken it back to the Queen through a lady friend. But this boy, instead of giving it to the right party, handed it over by an unfortunate mistake to her sister, who happened to be the wife of the Earl of Nottingham. The worst enemy of the condemned. The intentional appropriation of this souvenir by the wrong party tended only to cause irritation in the Queen's mind at what appeared to her the obstinacy and pride of Essex in not asking her pardon. The consequence was she had to sign his death warrant. When the she-demon, the Countess of Nottingham, explained, on her deathbed, all the circumstances to the queen, she is known to have shaken the dying woman violently and exclaimed, God, a treatise on gems, eight and nine. May forgive you, I never will. The event told so much on her constitution, but the queen died shortly after. Sakantola, after suffering a world of miseries and insults from her hus, banned, was at last recognized by him when he found out the ring which he had presented her on the occasion of his marriage, and which she had so unfortunately lost. Passages abound in Shakespeare as to the use of rings as tokens and eight, ornaments on which were devices, mottos, and what were then called posies. These posy rings have now come back to use. Tavernier records that the Persian jewelers never made gold rings, as their religion forbids the use of any article of gold during prayers. In the reign of Henry III of France, three rings were worn on the left hand, one on the second finger, one on the third, and one on the fourth. The Turkish and Singhalese women wore rings as well on the fingers as on their toes. Many Eastern nations used them on their toes, some on account of their supposed medicinal virtues. The King of Burma wears on each toe a ring set with precious stones. During the direct war in France, the ladies revived the classical custom of walking in the gardens with unstockinged feet and sandals, thereby displaying their jeweled toes to great advantage. Gold rings set with precious stones were worn over their ankles by a certain class of women in Rome who on a account of their affected independence of approved. 
810 sacred jewels. Fashions were termed libertine. Rings have been made, ingenious receptacles of affectionate souvenirs, toys, hair, portraits, and watches. An amusing instance is known of a ring containing a syringe, by which a lady threw out a jet of water against the face of a Russian ambassador. The chin, cheeks, and nostrils have also lent themselves forth. The use of rings. Nowadays, the use of rings on particular fingers serves as a matrimonial barometer and indicates the state of the love market. If a gentleman wants a wife, he wears a ring on the first finger of the left hand. If he be engaged, he wears it on the second finger, if married on the third, and on the fourth, if he never intends to be married. When a lady is not engaged, she wears a hoop or diamond on her first finger, if engaged on her second, if married on her third, and on the fourth, if she intends to die a maid. As no rules are given for widows, it is presumed that the ornamenting of the right hand and the little finger of the left is exclusively their prerogative. Appendices, the properties of precious stones, Mineralogy is that science which makes us acquainted with the unorganized portions of the earth, while zoology and botany give us the knowledge of the organized parts, namely animals and plants. By the term organized are meant those objects which consist of several different parts, all varying with one another in regard to their structure, position, and functions. But so constituted that if you take away one, the body to which it belongs would be destroyed or at least rendered incomplete. For instance, if you take away the stomach or muscles from animals, or the root from plants, their existence would be well, nigh impossible. By unorganized substances are meant those things which, if broken asunder, will represent, in one bit, the very same properties as in another. Under this head come the minerals. They are characterized by four distinct properties, viz. external, optical, electrical, and chemical. The first may be subdivided into six parts. Form, hardness, luster, diaphanity, color, and weight. Besides the regular or crystalline form, which is to be found in a variety of shapes, some minerals, which do not crystallize, take definite forms externally. The surface of some, for instance, 812 appendices, consists of portions of spheres of different diamond seons. When these are small, the mass is called baltrioidal, from the Greek word baltru, a cluster of grapes, which, when closely pressed together, it somewhat resembles. When the globular surfaces are of larger dimensions, it is then called mammalated, lat, mama, the breast, as the chalcedony. The nodules of iron pyrites, which show girfus like that, but on a smaller scale, are known as reniform, from lat, ren, a kidney. Those substances which crystallize display their regular structure when broken, but those which do not yield to cleavage break into indeterminate bits forms of the fragments being determined by the texture of the minerals. The best example of the conchoidal fracture is to be found in the breaking of a large flint pebble. In other substances, which are less hard and compact, the fracture will be even or earthy. The term hardness, a aid applied to minerals and precious stones, does not signify. Sixth, difficulty of breakage, but the resistance they offer to the mechanical pressure of another, their liability or non-liability to scratch. It is different from tenacity, which signifies their power of resisting 8% blow. The diamond, the hardest substance known and next to it the sapphire, are so brittle that the blow of hammer can easily break them into pieces but other stones, which are soft, and can therefore be easily cut or scratched, offer great resistance to. Blow. The degree of tenacity depends upon the elasticity and structure of the stones. The following is the scale of hardness, devised by the German mineralogist Mo, who has, it will be seen, taken 10 different substances as standards of the various degrees under which all minerals should come alas being the hardest body known. One talc, two rock salt, three calx bar, four floor spar, five apatite, six felspar, seven quartz, eight topaz, nine sapphire, ten diamond. The degree of polish being regulated by the degree of hardness, diamond is susceptible of receiving and retaining the best polish. It is this property in the stones that has preserved them from the ravages of time and has enabled us to I come across jewels, handed down from generation to generation even from the catacombs of Egypt and the ruins of Pompeii and Herculaneum. The luster which precious stones possess is known by a variety of names, classed by the mineralogists under the following designations, adamantine, showing the brilliance of the DIA. The DIA. Mond, vitreous resembling the surface of glass, resinous shining as if rubbed with an oily. Substance, pearly, showing the luster of the pearl as often, observed on the bases of prismatic crystals. Silky having a fibrous reflection similar to silk. 814 appendices. The names of the different degrees of brilliance are Splendent, 
the highest degree, almost exclude, sadly applied to diamond, brilliant, shining, glistening, or glimmering. There are some soft minerals, which become lustrous when scratched by, a sharp point. Many stones are gifted with the power of transmitting light. The different degrees of diaphaneity are classed as follows. Transparent when objects can be distinctly seen through a stone. Limpid when it is colorless. Semi-transparent when indistinct outlines of objects are seen through it. Translucent when light only is transmitted, but objects are not seen through. Semi-translucent when translucent at the edges. Opaque when no light is transmitted. The opacity is sometimes the effect of intermixture with foreign substances or of decomposition, loss of water, and sea. The color is, no doubt, one of the external properties of minerals or precious stones, though it is the effect of chemical composition. Color is an important consideration in the identification and valuation of gems. In some minerals, the color is essential to them, as in the sulfurates, oxides, and o. In others, it is the result of intermixture of substances and species which are originally colorless, as in the marble or jasper, in which the various. Treatise on Gems. 815. Shades of red and yellow are due to the presence of the oxide and pyrus oxide of iron. In some gems, the color becomes so intense in its variety as to be often called by another name when seen in. Eight mass, to describe the true color of a mineral. Woe should therefore specify that hue to which it would turn when reduced to powder. Such enter. Mixtures of coloring matter as a merely mechanical render mineral more or less opaque as the varieties of chalcedony red and yellow jasper are highly translucent or sometimes semi-transparent, though they are colored by particles of oxide of iron which are themselves opaque. But such colors, as are the effect of chemical combina, should never affect the transparency of gems, for instance, the violet tint of amethyst, which is due to the minute particles of the oxide of manganese and quartz and the green of the emerald caused by the presence of oxide of chrome. The variety of the shades of color is attributed to the variable quantity of coloring matter in the minerals as blood red, flesh red, chestnut brown, sky blue, and oh. Accidental colors produce streaks and clouded forms such as are seen in agates. Sometimes they take the shape of leaves and moss or veins as in the marble. There are other colors which are neither inherent in stones nor produced. A combination, for instance, the sulfur of antimony, which displays on its surface a brilliant tarnish in which the colors of the prism are. Arranged in order, prismatic colors are sometimes seen in the interior of transparent objects and are caused by the presence of minute fissures containing particles of air. These can, however, be removed by eight little pressure. The color of a stone often changes its commercial name. The red sapphire is a ruby, the yellow one, a topaz, the green or isolite, a peridot, ansi, ansi. Some gems exhibit two or three colors in the same specimen, this peculiarity called polychroism, gr, polis, Many and croa color is observable in some stones. The tourmaline, for example, placed between the eye and light. If the texture and composition of eight stone be the same all through, it will exhibit but one color, provided it is crystallized in the cubic system. The peculiar light displayed by some minerals by friction or heating is called phosphorescence. The rubbing of two bits of quartz against each other will produce a greenish light. Some minerals display a green, others a pale violet light when placed on a heated shovel. The variable luster observed in the star stones is said to proceed from an imperfection in their crystallization. Sun or gaslight shows these reflections to great advantage. Some stones transmit a different color when looked through or looked at. 88, the opal and tourmaline. In order to pick out real gems from spurious ones or from other gems similar to them in color. And structure, an accurate knowledge of there. A treatise on gems. 817. Specific gravity is necessary. This knowledge was possessed by the ancients and was carried into practice in India several centuries back. A simple way of ascertaining the specific gravity of any gem is given below. The stone of which the specific gravity is to be obtained is first weighed in the ordinary manner in the scales, and having noted the exact weight, it is then fixed by means of a piece of wire bent in the form of a hook and a small piece of wax to one side of the scale, whilst in the other is placed a piece of wire and a piece of wax of the same weight or their equivalent in weights. The scale with the stone attached is now allowed to fall in a cup of distilled or even filtered water, and weights are put in the opposite scale till the weight of the stone is counterbalanced, and the scale is exactly even. It is evident that a less weight is required to counterbalance the stone submerged in water, compared with that when it was weighed in the air, as the water in some measure supports it. The weight in the water is then subtracted from the weight in air, 
and the weight in air divided by the difference is. Weight in air, ditto water, 17 carats, 12, 5 plus 17, 3, 5 feet, 818 appendices. In toking the specific gravity of a gem, care should be taken to see that it is thoroughly clean and separated from any foreign substance, such as dust, grease, and sea. It should also be free from holes or pores, should be rubbed in water to remove the adherent air before being put into it, and if porous. It must be allowed to absorb as much water as it is capable of before being put in the scale. The hydrometer and other scientific instruments have now been devised in order to enable one to arrive at very accurate results. But for all ordinary purposes, the rule given above will be found sufficient. There are other properties of minerals such as taste and smell which might be included under the head of external. But these being beyond the province of a book on gems are left out in the present treatise. The power of refraction and of polarizing light inherent in gems comes under the heading optical. By power of refraction are meant certain characteristics possessed by all transparent substances of altering the direction of a ray of light dashing against their surfaces. Refraction is twofold, single, and double. It is a case of single refraction when a ray of light falling obliquely on the surface of a transparent substance. It is bent or refracted from its original course and takes another direction. The power of double refraction is possessed by the transparent verities of calcspar in such a high. A treatise on gems. 819. Degree that these have obtained the name of doubly refracting spar. If a line traced on paper be viewed through a fragment of this mineral, two lines will appear, and on turning the calc spar round as it lies on it. Both images will move until they coincide, and on turning it still further, one will seem to pass over the other. This is because one portion of the light is refracted in the ordinary manner, as we see in glass and water. The other portion, called the extraordinary ray, is refracted in a different manner. And it is found that accepting those substances whose crystals belong to the cubic system and such as do not crystallize, all minerals have, in a greater or less degree, the same property. But in all substances, there is at least one line through which no double refraction is visible. This line is called the axis of the crystal, or the axis of double refraction. The knowledge of the double refractive power helps one considerably in specifying minerals, which at first sight seem to be similar to each other when, by cutting and polishing or in case of our receiving irregular bits, we cannot form any idea of their external form. A bit of red topaz will, for example, refract doubly, whereas one of spinel ruby, the crystals being octahedral, will not. But the degree of doubly refractive power inherent in the calx bar being seldom met with in any other mineral, it becomes a matter of great difficulty to ascertain it in any better way than with the polarized light. 820 appendices. For this purpose, see the substance to be examined should be interposed between the two reflecting plates when so arranged that the original ray refuses to be reflected. In which case, should the body be doubly refracting, a position will be found in which a great portion of the previously intercepted light will be more or less transmitted. Light may be polarized in a variety of ways, such as by reflection at a certain angle from a polished surface by transmission through plates of tourmaline, Iceland, spar, or other doubly refracting bodies. Electricity is the property which some substances possess of attracting and repelling smaller bodies. This can be excited either by friction, pressure, or heat, or, as in some, by all these methods. Some minerals are conductors and others non-conductors of electricity. A topaz, a tourmaline, and a number of other minerals, when rub, bed on a piece of woolen cloth will, like a stick of sealing wax or a glass rod, so excited, attract small light bits of cotton or thin paper. But the metals and those ores which approach to a metallic state, being conductors of electricity, this result cannot be obtained unless they are previously isolated by placing them on a support of glass or some other non-conducting substance. A very small piece of gilt paper attached by silk thread to a bent glass rod forms a simple apparatus which will exhibit the electricity a mineral has thus acquired. A treatise on gems, 821. On approaching it to the gilt paper, it will immediately attract it. Electricity is either positive or negative, or as it is sometimes called, vitreous or resinous. The amount of time for which some minerals retain the electricity helps one in in great measure to establish their identity. Many scientific instruments are in use to determine the electrical properties of stones, but the simplest plan would be to use an ordinary electrometer and to communicate a known electricity to it by touching it with a piece of rubbed sealing wax until on approaching the wax slowly to the needle, it repels it. The needle has then acquired a negative electricity and will be attracted by a positive electric crystal 
and repelled by a negative one. This experiment should, however, be tried on a dry day. As A rule transparent crystals with bright polished faces acquire positive electricity. Those that have rough surface or are not limpid, negative electricity. Amongst the crystals which become electric by pressure too. A very high degree may be mentioned, the Iceland spar. Amongst those that are slightly 60 are topaz, amethyst, and the varieties of quartz. Pyroelectricity is the electricity which is produced in some substances by means of heat. The Indians were well acquainted with the existence of this property, so were the Greeks, as appears from the name that they gave the amber electron on account of its power of attracting small bodies by friction. The tourmaline is called a centrecker in 822 appendices. The Dutch language, owing to its alternately attracting and repelling hot ashes, if placed amidst them. Those gems that acquire electricity by heat generally present opposite poles, i.e. one end of the crystal becomes positively and the other negatively electric, as the tourmaline, topaz, and C. It is not the heat, but the change of temperature it causes that produces the electricity. By increase of heat, the positive pole becomes negative and the negative pole positive. To examine the pyroelectric properties of a gem, it can be held during its heating or cooling against the needle of a sensitive electrometer, avoiding carefully any friction. The longer the crystal, the greater the quantity of electricity produced in proportion. In order to ascertain the length of time during which a stone retains its electricity, it must be left in contact with some metallic body. The topaz continues to affect the needle after 24 hours. All minerals are either elementary or simple, uh, substances or compounds. The simple ones are those whose component parts, our present knowledge of chemistry has not enabled us to separate or dissolve, such as diamond, which we now know to be nothing else but carbon in its purest state. The compounds are those whose elementary parts can be identified and separated as the emerald, tourmaline, peridot, and C, and C. Two methods are in use for the chemical examination of minerals, the moist and the dry. In the former, they are dissolved in. A treatise on gems, 828 water or when that is not found possible in some acid. In the latter, they are subjected to heat by means of a blowpipe. The ease or difficulty with which gems are fused determines their chemical composition and coloring matter. There are many gems which are altogether infusible or fusible with great difficulty by means of fluxes such as soda or borax or salt of phosphorus. The diamond is an example of the former. The ruby, sapphire, and all the varieties of the corundums, the emerald zircon and C, are the latter by means of borax. By the application of heat, some minerals change color, some swell and decrepitate, some burn, globules are produced in some, and enamel on others, dust in some others, phosphorescence in a great many. The blowpipe used should be either made of silver, which does not corrode, or made of tinned iron, the cavity being square and placed at the bend. The latter is much cheaper, but in either case, the tip should be of platinum and removable for cleaning purposes. Care should be taken not to interrupt the stream of air and steady flame. For this purpose, the air should be supplied from the mouth as from a reservoir which should not be allowed to get exhausted and not from the lungs. Constantly necessitate the act of respir which may ation, so detrimental to the arrival at successful results. The part of the jet of flame to be used is an important point in the use of the blowpipe. If the outside flame, or as it is called, the oxidizing. 824 appendices. Flame be used, metallic substances get oxidized as it does not entirely prevent the contact of the air if the inner flame, otherwise termed the reducing flame, which is of a bluish red and intensely hot, then the minerals, which now become partially or fully deoxidized, get fused. For carrying on these experiments, a small quantity of the gem, reduced to powder and held in a small platinum, found to be sufficient, cup is, if a mineral heated in a closed glass box by flames directed against and beneath it contains water, it will be volatilized and condensed on the upper surface. If fluorine forms one of its component parts, the glass may be corroded by it. Some gems are affected by acids, some are not. The opal is affected by potash, the garnet, turquoise, chrysolite, and zero by acids. The diamond and the corundum varieties are not affected by any chemical substances. Those minerals that effervesce on the application of acid should be known as containing carbonates. Those that do not, when dissolved in acid, generally turn into a gelatinous substance. To produce this result, heat and strong acids are necessary. To produce the effervescence, the acid should be diluted with water, and in some cases, the assistance of heat is required. Mosaic. Maniama. Hat the art of mosaic was known to and 
was an extensive use among the ancients, does not admit of the least doubt whatever. Mosaic pavements, says Pliny, have been driven from our floors and have migrated to our ceilings and are made of glass, a new invent. Shun this. For Agrippa, in the baths he built in Rome, used terracotta decorations painted and encaustic in the heated chambers for the other. Parts employing stucco work, whereas he would certainly have made his ceilings of glass had the invention existed in his time. The lithos rotund. The first species of mosaic was, as its Greek name signifies, composed of very small bits of marble, parvulus crustus. The floor of the temple of four, tunic praneste, built by Sulla, is the earliest. Specimen of Mosaio in Italy. All the finest ancient mosaics were entirely made of cubes of natural marbles of various hues. The introduction of bits of glass for the brighter tints belongs to a subsequent period. Of this, the best example is the Circensester pavements. But mosaics of the lower empire, of which the earliest existing specimen, is the ceiling of Sta. Ustanza are made exclusively of cubes of colored glass roughly broken from the mass. The Taj at Agra affords a striking example of the art as practiced in India. The Jewels Witch, 826 appendices, originally formed the mosaic of that splendid specimen of Indian architecture have now been replaced by imitations. The Egyptian glass workers of antiquity produced mosaics so minutely that they could be set in rings and in pendants. The following simple but ingenious method was adopted. A number of fine rods of colored glass were arranged together in a bundle so that their ends composed the pattern which the bird or end flower. Exactly. Um, eight now the makers of Tunbridge wear do with their slips of differently colored woods. This bundle was then enclosed in a coating of pot metal, usually opaque blue glass, and the whole mass being fused sufficiently to run all the rods together into a compact body was lastly drawn out to the diameter required. In this way, all the rods were equally attenuated without altering their relative position, and the external coating, when the mass was cut across, became the ground of a miniature mosaic. Apparently, the production of inconceivable dexterity and niceness of touch. Each section of the whole necessarily presented the same pattern, without the slightest variation in its shades and outlines. The best specimen of this nature is to be seen in the British Museum, and once belonged to the Duchess of Devonshire. It is a square tablet, one inch in width, with a figure of the kneeling winged goddess sate upon and rich blue ground. A treatise on gems. 827. The author of the present work has two very splendid mosaic works in his possession, showing the degree of perfection which modern Italy has attained in the art. One is a large round table, in which are reproduced in mosaic the principal bill. Ings in Rome. Biz. The Pantheon, the Piazza, St. Peter's Church, and other celebrated places. It is a gift to the author from His Majesty the King Humbert of Italy, whose liberality has excited the admiration of all who have seen this unique article. It is estimated in India at about 20,000 RS. The other is a Basilica of St. Peter's, also presented to the author by His Holiness the Pope Leo C. Both the works have been pronounced by connoisseurs as marvels of mosaic workmanship. 828 appendices. Enamels. Enamels are of the same composition as opastes, but there is a great deal of difference in the process of their application. The vitreous. Mass is ground fine and then, mixed with gum water, is applied with a brush to the surface to be ornamented, upon which it is finally fixed by means of fusion. From the degree of heat necessary in the operation, the substratum must be either fine gold or pure copper, capable of resisting it. Otherwise, the slight compartments formed in the metal to contain the enamel would run, and the outlines of the pattern be deranged. In the preparation of enamels, the ancients used, as the groundwork of their compositions, powdered glass or flint, oxide of lead, and borax, mixed in various proportions, and colored by different metallic oxides. The invention is of Celtic origin, intended to replace the inlaid gem work of the Orientals by a cheap and attainable imitation in the baser materials of glass and copper. The art had attained perfection in Britain when it was but little understood in Rome during the reign of Severus as the celebrated incense burner. Found with other relics of Greek workmanship in the tomb vault of one of the Bartlow Hills proves, similar decorations of British origin have been a treatise on gems. 829, seen in the collection. These are done by what is called the champlet process, i.e. the designs are first cut out in the metal to a considerable depth. And then these beds are filled up with the fused enamel and afterwards so well polished as to give it a smooth face. This process was also in use among the Gothic jewelers throughout the Middle Ages, till it was taken up by the Byzantines and applied to gold. This was called the cloison method. 
each color being contained in its distinct compartment of thin gold plate set an edge upon and soldered down to a stouter basis, the thin lines of the gold serving for the outlines of the whole design, which is often a singularly complicated piece. The Byzantine method was adopted by the Persians, as is evidenced by the famous cup of Chasras I, which is now in the Bibliothèque Imperial, Paris, also by the Anglo-Saxons. This method is still in vogue in Algiers. The third method, and the one now in fashion, came to use about the middle of the 15th century, being merely an adaptation to copper of the Moresco invention of painting with enamel colors upon a ground of stiniferous glaze laid over earthenware, which the Italians of those times were carrying out with so much success in their majolica. In this method, 66 the vitreous glaze was merely laid on like watercolors upon the polished copper, with no longer any bed trace to diariot it. The dexterous application of the fire alone preventing the several colors. 830 appendices, from flowing, when fused, out of their proper positions. The French became the unquestionable, masters of the art, not before the reign of Louis, as he, and, headed by the celebrated Petitot, produced miniatures on gold as excellent as the most beautiful paintings on ivory. The Chinese practice on this method on a gigantic scale, the large basins, exquisitely worked vases, and other things useful or ornamental that come from China, are marvelous specimens of the art and possess this superiority over those manufactured in Europe, that they receive no injury by the action of boiling. Water, pastes. The word paste is derived from pastu, it, pasta, food, and has been applied by the Italians to the softened plastic stuff when they revived the process of imitating precious stones. Pastes are imitations in glass of precious stones and gems, engraved as cami or intagli, transparent and opaque. The following is a direction for making them. A small iron case of the diameter required is filled with a mixture of fine Tripoli and pipicle moistened, upon which is made an impression from the gem to be copied. This matrix is then thoroughly dried, and a bit of glass of the proper color laid flat upon it. If a stone of different strata has to be imitated, so many layers of different colored glass are piled upon each other. The hole is next placed within, a furnace and watched, until the glass is just beginning to melt, when the softened mass is immediately pressed down upon the mold by means of an iron spatula, coated with French chalk in order to prevent adhesion. It is then removed from the furnace, and annealed or suffered to cool gradually at its mouth, when the glass, after being cleaned from the Tripoli, will be found to have taken a wonderfully sharp impression of the stamp, but in reverse. Whether the prototype be in relievo or in cavo, when in cameo is the model, all the undercutting, must be stopped up with wax before taking the cast, otherwise it tears away the soft matrix when withdrawn, and on this account, cami and paste are never so satisfactory as in tagli. If it be wished to imitate a gem full of internal flaws, like the carbuncle or the emerald, the effect is produced by omitting the annealing and throwing the paste, still hot, into cold water. The fact of ancient pastes having a much rougher exterior than the modern ones leads us to the conclusion that they were taken in a much coarser material, perhaps in terracotta. They are also full of air bubbles, are much harder than wind, dow glass, and would scratch it readily, whereas all modern glass, if colored, is softer than the white. Kind. Then again, the antique pastes possess a charming iridescence covering its surface, which is produced by the oxidizing of the glass from the action of the salty matters of the earth. They also have a porous bubbly texture, not only of the surface, but of the whole body, whereas the modern pastes, when imitating transparent stones, look pure and same all through, as they are made of pot metal, i.e. glass stained of one color. The practice of imitating stones by means of paste was in vogue in the most classical times. Herodotus speaks of the pendants that hung in the ears of the sacred crocodiles by a name, which, a treatise on gems. 833, translated into English means fused gems. Such pendants were frequently used in earrings and necklaces of the same period. In his description of precious stones, Pliny often dwells upon the difficulty of distinguishing them from their glassy imitations. He mentions the following kinds, 88, used in the preparation of drinking vessels and for other ornamental purposes. Glass resembling obsidian is made for dishes, Ascaria vasa. Also, a uh, sort entirely red and opaque called Hamatinon, an opaque white also, and imitations of the agate, the sapphire, the lapis lazuli, and all other colors. Among the kinds produced in his time, he mentions the marinum, or imitation of the costly marine stone which formed the bowls and agate with unornamented surfaces. Glass sci fi, exactly imitating the clouds and shades of brown and white agate largely exists both whole and in fragments. 
the glass workers of the lower empire invented novelties in the art. Of this, the best specimen is now to be seen in the possession of Baron Lionel Rothschild. It is known to be a work of the third or fourth century. The substance is of a pale ruby color by transmitted light and of and pale pate green by reflected light. Imitations of onyx vases went by a special designation, calluses, odysses, or 66 impudent wear to express the boldness of their pretensions. Instances are known of fingerings made entirely of glass. A curious example, 834 appendices. Of the ancient imitations is afforded by those discs, the size of ring stones, the ground imitating lapis lazuli and inlaid with other paste producing. A pattern in low relief. Two specimens of this variety have been seen, a vine leaf and a parrot which, on account of their singularity, fetched 10 pounds each. The glass discs found stuck in the plaster before it set, which closed up the Roman tombs, come properly within the scope of the subject. These are mostly the bottoms of cups, placed with the dead to contain the sacrament. Some of these were in the shape of medallions intended to be worn as pendants by the poorer class, who could not afford the gold ones. Within their substance, they contained rough designs cut out of a solid piece of gold leaf laid between two pieces of glass afterwards fused together and made into a compact body. The designs were generally the busts or full figures of Christ or the apostles with suitable legends. Sometimes those are the reigning sovereigns. These medallions were put inside the tomb with the doject of marking the date and of guarding the repose of the dead. Heraclius, who seems to have been a Spanish Goth and who flourished in the seventh century, gives directions for making pastes. One of the best pieces of paste was found among other remains of Roman antiquity at Shefford, Bedfordshire, and is now to be seen in the Museum of the Cambridge Antiquarian Society. The best ancient intaglio paste seen are one found, a treatise on gems, 835. Near Rome in 1850, the subject engraved upon it being the town of Troy, and another, the bust of Abundantia, an imitative lapis lazuli. As soon as the glyptic art revived in Italy, the former makers of counterfeit gems began to reproduce intagli in their own material, but the art of past making reached its perfection under the auspices of the Regent Orleans. The new system was soon taken up by all jewel makers in Europe. Go to visiting Rome in the last quarter of the century, 1786-9, found paste making a favorite occupation with the connoisseurs. Even up to this day, the Italians show great skill in the art. The account of modern paste would remain incomplete without the mention of Wedgwood's seals and Kimmy. These are, however, made of porcelain and are decidedly superior to paste and hardness, even to the extent of emitting fire if struck against steel. These are of two kinds, one imitating black jasper and the other lapis lazuli. Strass, called after the German chemist, its inventor, is the brilliant white paste, the material of paste diamonds. It reproduces the other gems when colored by different metallic oxides. Various recipes are given by Barba as to its composition. But the Parisian chemists have hit upon a discovery which supersedes all previous directions. By a preparation of borax, not yet patent to all, a paste known as the diamant de bore is produced, which becomes as hard as quartz, resists the action of the file, and 886 appendices, when set in real gold is hardly distinguishable from genuine brilliance even by the most experienced eye. The Romans excelled in the imitation of all. Precious stones, the emerald and the lapis lazuli most particularly, but the ingenious workmen of modern paste have quite eclipsed their fame in the preparation of all other kinds, except, perhaps, in point of hardness. Recipes are taken from Barbos Trade des Pierres. Preciuses, Strass, selling prices of precious stones past and present. Cellini calls the ruby, emerald, diamond, and the sapphire by the name precious stones, and assigns the following price to the best specimens of each. A treatise on gems, 837. The gold scudo was in intrinsic value nine shillings, and in current was about the same in Italy in 1560, when she was known to be the richest country in the world. In Taboot's time, the ruby was estimated by the jewelers at half the price of a diamond of the same size, but not of the same weight. But if it exceeded 10 carats in weight, then, according to the rules he laid down for the latter stone, the value of the ballast was fixed at 10 ducats for the first carat afterwards to be multiplied by the simple weight that of the spinel at half that of the diamond. The price of table cut diamond was put down for 30 ducats, 15, the one carat sapphire at two thalers, six seconds. For higher weights, as their square multiplied by one thaler, the emerald was at this time so. Abundant, that the boot considered one fourth the price of diamond even too high for it. Rose cut diamond of one carat was valued by Berkham at 100 francs, by Tavernier about quarter of. 
a century later at 150. At this time, no other cut than the table and the rose was spoken of. In 1777, Newtons valued the brilliant diamond of one carat at eight louis d'or, each louis being equal to 18,843 intrinsically. And after the LST carat, a 8, 838 appendices, square of the weight multiplied by that figure, small emeralds, if fine, at one louis, a carat taken together of one carats at five. Louis of two at 10, beyond which no definite rules could safely be given. It appears that in his time, the sapphire was not much appreciated as he assigns to a stone 12 livers 9a for the first carat. And over that a8, a square multiplied by this. One of 10 carats was valued at 50 louis, one of 20 at 200, and so on. In the beginning of the 18th century, the value of emerald fell so low that care fixed the first carat at about 24 francs. One of 20 carats was priced at 3,000 francs, 120 only. The first carat of the ruby was put down at 10 louis of the ruby of two carats at 43 at 150 of four at 400. Nowadays, a perfect ruby exceeding a carat sells for a good deal more than a diamond of the same weight. For several years previous to 1850, the value of diamond remained with slight variations at the same standard as fixed by Jeffries and Dutons, i.e. eight for the first carat. Emeralds and sapphires were both priced at three per carat, if fine the value of the pale specimens of either being difficult to fix, in consequence of their never having a fixed market value. But since that period, the diamond has doubled and the sapphire quadrupled its value. And as for the emerald, it has become the most valuable of all, and if perfect. Exceeds the value of the diamond in the same ratio 88 that fixed by Cellini, the treatise on gems, 839. Spinel and the ballast, more sought after by the Orientals than by the Europeans, have been considered to possess the same value as the sapphire. De Boots gives the same value to the pearl as to the opal, i.e. three thalers, nine eight, for the first carat, and then as the weight squared, up to 11 carats. But for higher weights, multiplying the square by four thalers. The present selling price in Paris, as given by Barbo, is 50 francs per carat, multiplied by the simple weight. The turquoise of the smallest size sells for about six pence per dozen whereas a good one of half an inch in diameter is fully worth 10. One, as large as a shilling, is men shewn by Emmanuel as having sold for 400. Such gems as have gone out of fashion, as for instance, the amethyst, jacinth, chrysolite, and sea, are purchased by jewelers at nominal and sold by them at fancy price. The fine Persian lapis lazuli now sells in the mass for 30 per pound. It is now drawn into slabs. For brooches and pendants, 88 in the classical days. The Imperial State Crown of England. The following description of the British crown is taken from Professor Tennant's. The Imperial State Crown of H.M. Queen Victoria was made in the year 1838 by Messrs. Rondell and Bridge, with jewels taken from old crowns and others furnished by command of her. 840 appendices. Majesty. It consists of diamonds, pearls, rubies, sapphires, and emeralds set in silver and gold. It has a crimson velvet cap with ermine border and is lined with white silk. Its gross weight is 89 ounces, five BWTs, Troy. The lower part of the band above the ermine border consists of a row of 129 pearls, and the upper part of the band of a row of 112 pearls between which, in front of the crown, is an large sapphire, partly drilled, purchased for the crown by H.M. King George IV. At the back is a sapphire of smaller size, and six other sapphires, three on each side, between which are eight Eam, for all 66 above and below the seven sapphires are four. Teen diamonds and around the eight emeralds, 128 diamonds. Between the emeralds and the sapphires are 16 trefoil ornaments containing 160 diamonds. Above the band are eight sapphires surmounted by eight diamonds, between which are eight festoons consisting of 148 diamonds. In the front of the crown and the center of a diamond Maltese cross is the famous ruby said to have been given to Edward Prince of Wales, the Black Prince, by Don Pedro, King of Castile. After the Battle of Najara, near Vittoria, AD 1367, this ruby was worn in the helmet of Henry V at the Battle of Agincourt, AD 1415. It is pierced quite through, after the Eastern custom, the upper part of the piercing being filled up by a small ruby. Around this ruby to form the cross are 75 brilliant diamonds. Three other Maltese crosses, forming the two sides and back of the crown, have emerald centers and contain respectively 132, 124, 
and 130 brilliant diamonds. Between the four Maltese crosses are four orna, meant in the form of French fleurs de lies, with four rubies in their centers, and surrounded by rose diamonds containing respectively 84. 868, 687 rose diamonds. From the Maltese crosses issue four imperial arches, composed of oak leaves and acorns, the leaves containing 728 rose table and brilliant diamonds, 32 pearls forming the acorns set in cups containing 54 rose diamonds and one table diamond. The total number of diamonds in the arches and acorns is 108 brilliant, 116 table, and 559 rose diamonds. From the upper part of the arches are suspended four large pendant pear-shaped pearls with rose diamond cups containing 12 rose diamonds and stems containing 24 very small rose diamonds. Above the arch stands the mound, containing in the lower hemisphere 804 brilliants, and in the upper 244 brilliants, the zone and are being composed of 33 rose diamonds. The cross on the summit has a rose-out sapphire in the center, surrounded by four large brilliants and 108 smaller brilliants, summary of jewels comprised in the crown known large ruby irregularly polished, one large broad spread sapphire, 842, 16 sapphires, appendices, 11 emeralds, four rubies, um, one ant diamonds, 172 rose diamonds, 147 table diamonds, four drop shaped pearls, 273 pearls, wedding rings. From very early stages, a peculiar charm appears to have been connected with the ring. Without beginning or end, it has long been regarded as an emblem of eternity and also of the strength and perpetuity of affection. The fourth finger of the left hand has long been considered sacred and hence has been consecrated to wear the wedding ring. The Greeks and Romans were so fully convinced of the intrinsic value attached to this finger that it was called the medical or healing finger. Their various medicinal preparations were stirred with it in place of a spoon, it being supposed that should any noxious ingredient be included in the cup, warning of the fact would immediately be given by a palpitation of the heart. In some remote country places in England, this superstition is still firmly believed in. The other fingers are thought to possess a certain power of evil, but a wound or sore stroked by the wedding finger is expected by them in a short time to disappear. And a treatise on gems, 843. The wedding ring itself is by many supposed to have the same healing effect. The rings used by the Jews at their marriage ceremonies were sometimes very large in size and elaborate in design. The Jewish law demanded, too, that they should be of a certain value, and to prove this to be the case, they were before the ceremony submitted to an examination. It was a rule also that the bridegroom should purchase the ring out of his own private resources and not obtain it either on credit or as a gift from a friend, and after the ring had been placed. On the bride's finger, the marriage was considered then, as it is now, to be irrevocably binding. Among the fishermen on the west coast of Ireland, the wedding ring is kept as an heirloom in the family and is considered the property of the eldest married daughter. Consequently, many of the wedding rings still worn by the fishwives in that district are quite old and of exceedingly ancient design, being manufactured as far back as the Elizabethan era. In the 16th century, both marriage and betrothal rings were made with a motto or posy inscribed inside, and to these Shakespeare, in two or three of his plays, refers castles, domestic dictionary, diamonds and sham diamonds, pearls from the depths of the ocean and diamonds from the bowels of the earth, are constantly being threatened in their intrinsic value by artificial competition. And natural diamonds are now, it seems, exposed to the rivalry not only of some conglomerate of diamond dust or of what passes for it manufactured into the semblance of brilliant ants, but also to that of genuine diamonds pro, produced not by the ordinary agencies of nature, but by chemical and magnetic means at the will. Man, a manufacturer of diamonds has written to the Morning Post saying that he can sell for less than a sovereign an artificially made diamond equal in appearance to a real diamond worth 300 pounds and undistinguishable from it except by the most practiced and skillful experts. But he denies the power of the chemist to produce diamonds of sufficient size and at sufficiently low cost to have the effect of disturbing the market value of natural diamonds. And diamond merchants take the same view of the pretensions put forward by the diamond manufacturer that he takes of the claims advanced by the diamond chemists. Nothing, according to the diamond merchants and the true amateurs of diamonds, can equal the diamond in hardness and brilliancy, and in play of prismatic colors except another diamond, and to artificially composed stone, a eight to the minute crystals of diamond-like matter produced by the prolonged action of a galvanio battery upon and solution of pure carbon, the name of diamond is refused. 
Neither ordinary tools nor ordinary heat can affect the true diamond, if air be excluded. Treatise on gems, 845. It may be heated to a white heat without injury. And though it may be reduced to something like coke by means of an exceptionally powerful galvanic battery, yet so formidable is the apparatus required for affecting its solution that practically the diamond may be looked upon 38 insoluble. Its combustibility was first demonstrated by the members of the Academy of Florence in 1694. By subjecting it to the solar rays concentrated in the large parabolic reflector made for the Cosmo de' Medici, when it burned with a blue lambent flame, the diamond is often found in such alluvial deposits as are worked for gold. Diamonds were first discovered in Asia, and soon after their discovery were greatly prized in Hindostan, as is sufficiently shown by the value attached to them in the tales of the Thousand and One Nights. The diamond mines of Golconda were for centuries the only ones known, but in 1728 diamond mines were discovered in Brazil, and in 1868 what are? called diamond fields were opened up in the country vaguely known as South Africa. South African diamond fields owe their origin, or rather their recognition, to the picking up by a child of a large diamond on the banks of the Orange River. In 1869, a diamond which has since become known as the Star of South Africa was found by a Greek shepherd. And several small stones were met with on the banks of the Vale River in 1870. A year or two ago, more than 4,000. 846 appendices. Persons were employed in connection with the South African diamond fields, chiefly in the valleys of the Orange and Val rivers and at their junction. The remarkable thing about the African diamonds is the great number of large stones found among them. Their value, however, is diminished by the vast majority of them being tinted with yellow and other shades. Large yellowish stones are now sold for about one-fourth the price they fetched eight or ten years ago, while the worth of small stones, even of good quality, has deteriorated by nearly one-half. The whole of the South African diamond region to the extent of about 17,000 square miles, was annexed in 1871 as a British colony under the title of Griqualand. The Brazilian mines are now looked upon as nearly exhausted and as G. Matter of fact, are no longer worked, while the produce of the South African fields is constantly declining. This must have seemed to favor the new industry which has arisen in connection with the manufacture of diamonds and the various plans which are from time to time formed by the inventors of the type of Balthazar clays in Balzac, Recherche de l'Absolu, for flooding the market by means of diamonds chemically produced. Natural diamonds, however, have lately turned up in the United States, especially in California, and they have also been discovered in various parts of Australia. A treatise on gems. 8 and 47. The finest diamonds are clear and transparent as in drop of pure water. But besides these 66 brilliance of the first water, as they are called both technically and in ordinary conversation, there are colored diamonds of every sort and hue. A yellow shade is considered objectionable in and diamond. So, also is a cinnamon color. Next to rose-colored diamonds, green take rank in the market. Next to green, blue, and next to blue, black. The value of a diamond may, according to some writers on the subject, be ascertained by a regular formula, according to which the square of the weight in carats must be multiplied by a sum varying according to the condition and quality of the stone. If the diamond is of good water and a fine shape, the sum may be put down at two pounds. If, however, the diamond be perfect in quality and also perfectly cut, the sum to be taken as the basis of the calculation will be six pounds or eight pounds. Big diamonds have eight larger theoretical value than small ones, but as eight matter of fact diamonds of large size have often had to be cut up before they could be disposed of in the market. When in 1837, the Deccan booty obtained by the army of Lord Hastings was sold magnificent diamond weighing 3,754 grains, and of the purest water brought at auction only 7,200 pounds. In the present day, finest diamonds are held by Portuguese, Spanish, French, and English families in the order named, and the best market for them is in the United States. Among historical, diamonds an important place must be assigned to the celebrated pit diamond, of which the weight was 430 carats. But after being cut a process which occupied two years it was found to, have been reduced to the weight of 36 carats, and it was then sold to the region of Orleans for 135,000 pounds. Its present value is said to be 200,000 pounds, though it might be difficult to, and a purchaser for it at that price. The Pitt Diamond Door Regent Diamond, as it was called, after having passed into the hands of the Duke of Orleans, became one of the crown diamonds of France. It was destined to meet with strange adventures. Four. After being placed by Napoleon on the hilt of the Sword of State, it was captured by the Prussians at Waterloo. A diamond of literally inestimable value, belonging to the King of Portugal and of Brazilian origin, is said to be worth upwards of 5,000 pounds. 
zero, 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 zero sterling, but this value is clearly not its value in change. For the historical interest attached to it, no diamond can be compared to Her Majesty's Koh Noor. Originally dug from the mines of Golconda past the successive sovereigns of central India, and in the early part of the 14th century was added to the treasures of Delhi. It remained in the possession of the reigning family until the invasion in the 18th century of Nadir Shah, who seeing it in the turban of the vanquished Mahom, proposed to him an exchange of headdresses and the polite offer being a treatise on gems, 849. For force accepted, bore away with him the priceless jewel. After the assassination of Nadir Shah, the mountain of light passed through the hands of Ahmed Shah of Kabul to Shah Suja, who gave it a eighth the price of his liberty to Ranjit Singh, ruler of the Punjab. On the annexation of the Punjab in 1849, it was stipulated that the Koh Noor should be surrendered to the Queen of England, who received it from the East India Company in 1850. At the Great Exhibition of 1851, this famous diamond was found inferior to its glass model, and it was necessary to surround it with gas lights in order to bring out its colors. The Russians have a very good diamond known as the Orlov. It is about the size of a pigeon's egg, and one time formed the eye of an idol in the Temple of Brahma at Pondicherry. Brahma was robbed of it by a French deserter, from whom it found its way to eight Greek merchants established somewhere on the shores of the Mediterranean, who sold it to Count Orlov. At that time in command of the Russian Mediterranean squadron, for half a million rubles, an annuity of 20,000 rubles, and a patent of nobility. The diamond manufacturers and diamond chemists of the present day do not aim at producing exceptionally large stones. And as historical curios, it is to which an enormous price has always been a tauhid. We may be sure that neither the Orloff nor the Kohaner will lose much of their 850 appendices, present value. Meanwhile, the diamond merchants console themselves in presence of the menace brought against their trade by reflecting that many years ago. Under the direction of a French chemist, M. Dupretz, carbon, free from every trace of foreign substance prepared from crystalline sugar candy, was made to deposit microscopic crystals which had the hardness of diamond powder and the general characteristics of diamonds, and that nothing came of M. Dupretz's process. As to whether the new system of manufacturing, diamonds will injure the legitimate business we have no means of judging, but diamond manufacturers and diamond merchants are agreed as to the inoffensive nature of the microscopic diamonds produced by chemical agencies. Paul Mall Gazette, January 30th, 1880, 854 appendices, the peacock throne of Shah Jahan. Meshe Tuktao's or the peacock throne of Delhi is one of the best. Specimens of the pomp and prodigality of the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan. The name is derived from and peacock with its tail spread represented in its natural colors in sapphires, emeralds, rubies, and other jewels, which form the chief ornament of a dazzling mass of diamonds and precious stones that were encrusted in the imperial seat. Tavernier, who saw this wonderfully constructed throne, does not seem to disbelieve in the popular estimate of the article, which is stated to have cost nearly six millions and a half sterling. A treatise on gems, 591. Translation, 104. Its legs rest upon heads of deer, it contains 40 figures and is decked out in blue cloth. This seat confers wealth, victory, prosperity, and healthiness. The horse throne, 105 minutes, 106. That throne, which is made of Njigasara wood, which is ornamented with figures of horses, whose legs rest upon 75 figures and heads of horses studded with all the gems and which is decked out in colored cloths, is called the horse throne. It confers wealth and victory. A treatise on gems, 593. Translation. The Regal Chowries, 107, a two-handed white diamond studded, chowry with a gold handle, is pleasant to kings. 108. The handles of chowries of Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Sudra sovereigns should respectively be ornamented with diamonds, rubies, cat's eyes, and sapphires. The regal umbrellas. 109. The regal umbrellas should be fringed with 32 chains of 32 pearls each, and their tops should be crested with a pure diamond of the Brahmin species. A treatise on gems. 595. Translation. 110. The pommels of the handles of the umbrellas should be set with curvindas and rubies. These are called the regal Navadanda umbrellas. The effect of setting pure diamonds on the fronts of the palaces of kings. 111. The fronts of regal palaces should burn with pure diamonds. This wards off every kind of evil. The Vringra ascertained. 112. The vessel which is used in pouring out water in coronating monarchs is entitled Vringra. 
the gems which should respectively be placed on the Ringra, having regard to the various astral influences swaying the intended kings, are as follows. A treatise on gems, 597. Translation, 113 minus 114. For those respectively influenced by the sun, the moon, Buddha, Brihaspati, Sukra, Sani, and Ru, the ruby, diamond, cat's eye, pearl, sapphire, emerald, and pearl should be placed on the coronation vessel. None need be placed for those kings influenced by Mangala, but the pure golden or the clave ringra is auspicious for all. 115. And the vessels used in the coronations of Brahmin, Kshetriya, Vaisya, and Sudra sovereigns, diamonds, rubies, cat's eyes, and sapphires should respectively be placed. 116. Those sovereigns who are invested in compliance with this ordinance attain long lives and prosperity, otherwise bad results ensue. A treatise on gems. 599. Translation. The putting of gems on the ground interdicted. 117, 118, 119. B-H-A-G-A-B-A-N-A said, Whoever, O earth, should foolishly place on thee the sword, the horn of the rhinoceros, crystal, topaz, the sapphire, the sunstone, the rudiksha, kusamula, the nirmdlaya, the edibles offered to a god, the emerald. Gorachan, the pearl, the oyster, the ruby, silver, gold, and the coral shall verily live for 10,000 years in the hell called Calstra, a treatise on gems. 601. Translation. The fortune attending bestowal of gems for merit. 120. He who bestows on Brahmins diamonds, pearls, corals, and rubies goes to Indra's heaven. The fortune attending the wearing of gemmed ornaments. 121. The wearing of gemmed ornaments brings respect, fame, longevity, wealth, happiness, strength, and fruition. 122. Over and above this, it wards off evil. Astral influence makes the body healthy, removes misery and ill fortune, and washes away sin. Translation 123. Elegant dresses, garlands, fragrant objects, and jeweled ornaments are the objects of desire. They remove the disturbances of our keshasis, restore health, and bring wealth and good fortune. The fortunes implied by dreams of gems. 124. The man who dreams a fish, flesh, a pearl, a conch, sandal, or a diamond comes by immense wealth on awaking. 125. If one sees a sacred spot, a palace, or a gem house, attains success and strength, and reaps the merit of having actually visited a place of pill. Grimage. 126. O Vraja, the man who in a dream bestows on a Brahmin a pearl chain, a garland, or fragrant sandal paste, gains riches and happiness. Translation. 127. The man on whom a virgin of eight, glistening with gems, smiles in a dream becomes. The favorite of Bhagavati, 128. He who dreams of a girl, the rainbow or a white cloud, or who in a dream obtains a crystal chain, receives respect everywhere. The effect of seeing gems on the eve of a journey, 129. On the eve of setting out for a fight, Aram Chandra counted upon victory when he happened to see auspicious signs and hear auspicious. Sounds, a treatise on gems, 607. Translation, 130 minus 131. He saw on his right rubies, silver, pearls, gems, curds, kai, white grain, white flowers, saffron, copper, crystal, mercury, vermilion, the red and the white sandal paste, and diamonds. The rosary determined. 132. The rosary should be composed of pearls, coral, rudraksha, or crystal, or the name should be counted on certain finger joints. A rosary of gold or gems is a hundred times as auspicious as any other. The effect of wearing rudrakshas with gems. 133. The man who wears rudrakshas together with pearls, corals, crystals, silver, cat's eyes, and gold propitiates Mahadeva. Treatise on gems, 609. Translation How to purify water by gems, 134. By first straining water through a piece of clean and thick silk, it is freed from animalcula. Next, by putting under gold, pearls, and sea, it is rendered perfectly pure and good. The placing of cooked food in suitable vessels, 135. Gashraba Sataka on sea should always be placed in vessels of glass or crystal, or in those studded with cat's eyes and sea. Other we so the qualities of the things may change. A treatise on gems. 611. Translation. The setting of gems in temples. 136 minus 137. Zero Duija. On the east of an image should be set the diamond. On the southeast, the pearl on. The south, the cat's eye on the southwest, the conch on the west, the crystal. On the northwest, the topaz. On the north, the moonstone. On the northeast, the sapphire. And near the middle, the ruby. The effect of worshiping Sakti with a gem vessel. 
138 minus 139. O oh dear, large-eyed girl, he who reverend tally worships Sakti with a vessel set with vidrumas, rubies, sapphires, cat's eyes, crystals, and emeralds, indubitably obtains wealth, sons, wives, and fame. Translation. The worship of Lakshmi with gems. 140 minus 141. Primarily, Rayana worshipped Lakshmi and Vaikuntha with rubies, pearls, garlands, good gems, diamonds, milk, sandal paste, beautiful twigs, new clouds, etc. The fortune obtained by worshipping gemmed. Images of goddesses. 112. By worshipping the image of a goddess studded with sapphires, Rihanna has obtained his wonderful spiritual power forever and a day. 143. By constantly worshipping a goddess motto of crystal, Varanat has become the master of all the waters. A treatise on gems. 6 and 15. Translation. 144. The moon constantly worshipped a goddess made of pearls, and hence his divine effulgence. 145. The Panagas pay their adorations to a goddess composed of coral and have, in consequence, come by high stations. 146. Women can always escape the curse of sterility by adoring a goddess decked with diamonds. 147. Therefore, O God of gods, do thou too pay thy devotions to a gem goddess, that thou may see thy dearest desires crowned with fulfillment, and that thy life may be one perpetual growth of heavenward enterprise. A Treatise on Gems. 617. Translation. The fortune acquired by worshipping gemmed. Images of Siva. Sta said 148. Having been desired by Brahm, the creator Viswakar made for and gave to each alinga of Siva, suited to his possessions. 149 minus 150. Vishnu always worships a Siva linga of sapphires. Indra, one of rubies. Kuvera, one of gold. The sensible moon, one of pearls. Agni, an image of diamonds. Varuna, an image of crystal. The Twelve Adityas, an image of copper. A Treatise on Gems. 619. Translation. 151. Again, Ananta and the other great serpents adore the linga of coral, Nariti of wood, Yama of emeralds. The worship of these leads to the highest power and greatness. Listen further. 152. We have thus given a brief account of the Siva Vrata. Now we shall come to the consideration of the months in respect of this subject. 153 MS 154. In April, the diamond. In May, the emerald. In June, the pearl. In July, the sapphire. In August, the ruby. In September, the zircon. A treatise on gems. 621. Translation. 155 minus 156. In October, the coral. In November, the cat's eye. In December, the topaz. In January, the serpent stone. In February, the chandrakanta. And in March, the gold sivalinga should be respectively worshipped. For one of others, the image of pure gold is good for every month, and its worship is auspicious. 157. For one of gold, the silver. For one of silver, the copper. For one of copper, the stone image. For one of stone, the image of fragrant materials may be formally worshipped. A Treatise on Gems. 623. Kumar said, translation, listen further. 158. The stone linga of the god of gods, the bearer of the trident, should be devoutly worshipped by all men as well as by Brahma and the other gods. 159 minus 160. A linga of sapphires, corals, cat's eyes, diamonds, zircons, rubies, pearls, gold, silver, copper, brass, or emeralds is very sacred. And the worship of it is attended with the fulfillment of every desire. A treatise on gems. 625. Translation. Listen further. 161. Again, if a linga is made of mercury, it causes great wealth. If of pearls, prosperity, if of chandrakanta, immortality, and if of gold, fruition. 162. Every kind of gemmed linga is good, but the worship of a linga of diamonds brings about the destruction of the enemy, of one of mercury, the accession of vast wealth, and finally of one of pearls, general good fortune. 163. The worship of a linga made of manlas, or bloodstones, makes the body healthy, and that of one composed of load, stones, and the Sriakanta, brings dignity to the family. Translation, 164. The worship of a Sibalinga composed of Chandra Kantia removes the fear of death, that of one made of crystal causes fruition, that of one made of Slakias, a kind of gem, the wearing of which cures SLA, Chalak pain, and pearls re moves enemies. 165. By worshiping a Sibalinga made of cat size on a sacred spot, a man attains good and humbles the pride of his enemy by worshipping a sibilinga made of sapphires. 
he reached prosperity and by the worship of one made of Chandra KNTA, he realizes his best wishes. The effect of worshiping Siva with gems, 166, a throne made of ivory, decorated with gold and gems and covered with a many colored cloth. Translation, 167, an umbrella bright as the full moon decked with pearl chains and the nine gems and having a stick of gold. 168, two white showers with handles made of gold and jewels and wearing the form of the swan. 169. A cool mirror fragrant with perfumes, studded with gems and decorated with fresh leaves. 170. A deep breathing conch, white as the swan, the kunda flower, the moon, and having its back studded with gold and gems. 171. A beautiful kahala, a kind of musical instrument, possessing a variety of sounds made of gold and decorated with pearls. A goodly brick or stone palace burning with gems, having golden thresholds and doors and a hundred pillars of gold and jewels, the gates made of coral and hung with a canopy, having fringes of rows of pearls. 174. By worshiping Siva with the above men, she and objects obtained justly one propitiates Mahadeva, inasmuch as he loves pleasure. The worship of Siva by Nandi. 175. 176. The great Nandi after formerly Puri. Find the Sibalinga and Panchamrita for a great length of time worshipped Mahadeva with pearls, sapphires, zircons, cat's eyes, diamonds, and rubies. A treatise on gems. 633. Translation. The religious merit obtained by worshipping Krishna with gems. 177. By worshipping Krishna with coral, a man can subdue the three worlds, and by were. Shipping him with rubies, he attains the position of Saraboma. 178. He who worships Krishna with topazes surely obtains the golden round and top of so, Vorinti. And if the worshiper is a kshatriya, he can lord it over the whole world. 179. Ho who worships Krishna with emeralds, attains wisdom. And ho who worships the god with diamonds, what can he not achieve? Translation. 180. By worshiping Krishna with golden, flowers, a man can become as rich as Kubera, and in afterlife can attain nirvna. Further. 181. If a person worships Narayana with a thousand mirrors studded with jewels, he attains a beautiful navel, 182. For attaining a good nose, one should worship Gopinath with a thousand lotuses decorated with gems, 183. Daughter of the mountain, for good teeth, a man should offer a gala camp, 100. Thousand pearls, a treatise on gems, 637. Translation, 184. Obirij, for fine cheeks. One should offer Krishna 100,000 small balls made of gems. 185. Mistress of my heart. For attaining a good nether lip, the devotee should offer Narayana 100,000 dice made of gems. 186. For a pair of good ears, a man should offer Krishna 100,000 earrings made of jewels. 187. For attaining a good voice, a man should offer Vishwaswara 100,000 jars of honey studded with gems. 188. O Empress among the gods. For attaining good speech, a person should offer Krishna a thousand jars of nectar, made of gems. A treatise on gems. Translation. 189. For a pair of beautiful eyes, a man should offer the youthful Krishna on hundred thousand lamps, made of jewels. 190. For a goodly neck, Gopla should be worshipped with a thousand flowers, made of gems, and shaped like the Dustra. 191. For two goodly arms, Krishna should be offered a thousand lotus stalks made of jewels. 192. O Narayan, to attain a fine chest, the god should be propitiated with a hundred thousand rubies. 193. For handsome fingers, a hundred thousand gemmed rings should be offered to the god. A treatise on gems. 641. Translation. 194. For good nails, Krishna should be offered a hundred thousand beautifully white gems. 195. For attaining a beautiful bust, a woman should offer Krishna a million chains made of jewels of rare excellency, 196. For the general beauty of the person, a person should offer the Lord of Lakshmi beautiful balls studded with gems, 197. For a pair of good buttocks, a woman should worship the holder of the chakra with a thousand wheels made of gems, 198. For a good head, one should propitiate Narayana with a million golden umbrellas adorned with gems, a treatise on gems. 643. Translation. 199. Osurata, for a fair nature, one should offer Narayana a hundred thousand gems of great value. 200. 
For a fair mind, a person should worship Krishna with a hundred thousand gems, white like pure crystal. 201. For securing the good graces of her husband, a woman should worship Krishna with a thousand gems, red like the coral. 202. For securing her husband for the space of ten millions of births, a woman should offer Narayana a hundred thousand rubies of matchless beauty. 203. For securing riches for no end of births, a man should worship Krishna with a hundred thousand gems. A treatise on gems. 615. Translation. The bestowal of the Kalpa tree. Sta said. 204. O Surada, I am going to tell you of another kind of offering. The Kalpa tree should be prepared with a hundred niskas with branches. 205. Pearls should hang down from its boughs, and beautiful emeralds should form its shoots. 206. Coral should form the new leaves, and rubix the fruits. 207. Sapphire should form the root, diamonds, the nethermost part of the trunk, cat's eyes, the part immediately below the top, and finally topazes, the foremost part. A treatise on gems. 647. Translation. 208. The leaves should be of zircons, and the altar should be of shraya kantas, chandra kantas, or crystals. 209. The height of the tree should be one vitasti, and the linga should be established beneath it along with the other deities. The bestowal of the gemmed cow, the incarnation of the fish, said. 210. I am going to relate matters pertaining to the great bestowal of the gemmed cow, by which a man attains Galaka. 211. Like the ceremonies of Tol and Persa on an auspicious day, the presence of the deity should be solicited before the gemmed cow is constructed. Translation. 212. The hide of a Krishnasra should be touched with salt weighing a drona and spread on the ground, and on it the jeweled cow should be made with due ceremonies. 213. The sages should place 81. Rubies in its mouth and a hundred topazes on its nose. 214. On its forehead, a golden stripe should be painted. A hundred pearls should be placed near its eyes, a hundred corals near its brows, and two oysters on its ears. 215. The two horns of the cow should be made of gold, the head with a hundred diamonds, and the pupils of the eyes with zircons. A treatise on gems. 651. Translation. 216. The back should be made of a hundred sapphires, the two sides by a hundred cat's eyes, the abdominal regions with crystal and the breast, with a hundred salgandicas. 217. The hoof should be made of gold, the tail of pearls, and the nose of chandrakantiyas and suryakantiyas, and fragrant substances such as sandal paste and camphor should be employed in mac. Ingit. 218. The hair should be made of kunkuma, the navel should be of silver, and the bones of emeralds. 219. Besides these, other gems should be placed in the joints and a fourth of those gems that have been enumerated for the cow should go to the construction of the various members of the calf. A treatise on gems. 653. Translation. The bestowal of the gem mountain. 220. The fish incarnation of the deity said, I am now going to tell of the bestowal of the gemmed mountain. The best mountain should be made of a thousand pearls. 221. The next best by 500. The next by 300 and the last by 250 pearls, 222, 223. The eastern part should be made of gems resembling diamonds and zircons, the southern, by those resembling sapphires, the middle, by 10,000 gems like topazes, the west, by gems resembling cat's eyes and coral, and the north, by ruby-like jewels, a treatise on gems, 655, translation, the bestowal of the Vrihi mountain, 224 minus 225, the fish incarnation said, in a pyramidal pile of patty should be placed three trees of gold. The east of it should contain pearls and diamonds, the south, zircons and topazes, the west, emeralds and sapphires, and the north, beautiful cat's eyes. And coral trees and oysters should be placed all round. A treatise on gems. 657. Translation. The bestowal of the Gurudhenu, 226 minutes, 228. O best of Duyas, the ears of the cow and her calf should be of oysters. The feet of sugar canes, the eyes of oysters, the eyebrows of coral, the dugs of butter, the tails of silk, the pupils of the eyes of sapphires, the horns of the cow should be of gold, and the hoofs of silver. The beast should be made of solidified treacle and covered with a white thin cloth. The milking pail of the cow should be of bell metal, a treatise on gems. 659. Translation. The Vijayanti Rosary. 229. 
the sapphire, pearl, ruby, cat's eye, and diamond go to make up the Vigianti Rosary. History of the Costuva. 230 minus 231. Hastily, the gods again fell to churning the ocean of sweet milk with impetuosity. Now rose from the bosom of the deep the sun-clad effulgence and splendor of that light of the world, cost two of the best of gems. Translation, 232. The gods, placing Narayana before, began to gaze at the gem. Then with one voice they gave. It him, the anecdote of Chintamani. 233. Once on a time, the king Chandrasena worshipped Mahadeva reverentially and thereby highly pleased the principal courtier of that god. 234. The good and respected Manavadra, who bears on his forehead a mark of Siva, was highly pleased with the king. A treatise on gems. 663. Translation. 235. And he presented him a divine gem called Chintamani, that rival of Kastuva. It does one good to see, to praise, or to think of this sun-like gem. 236. Like the philosopher's stone, the touch of it instantly converts bell metal, copper, iron, lead, stone, and sea into gold. 237. Manavadra presented it to the king, who wore the gem over his throat, and on his throne shone like a second sun over other princes. A treatise on gems. Translation. 238. When the other kings came to know this, they became sore sick for envy. 239. Of these, some had pity on account of their tender-hearted nature, while others grew. Malicious ear, they had learnt the mighty virtues of the gem coveted by gods. 240 minus 241. The kings of Sorstra, Surat, Kikaya, in the Punjab, Silva in the Rajasthan, Kalinga between Orissa and Dravira, Mardraka between the Indus and the Sadadru, Pinchla and W of Delhi, in the country of the Himalaya and Chambala, Avanti Sovira between the Indus and the Sadadru, Maga, Behar, Masya, Jaipur, Srinjaya, in Mathura, and other places, intending to defeat Chandrasena in fight, began to amass a quadripartite force. Translation, 242. Thereafter they came, breathing united strength, with an innumerable force to Ujjain, and sat down at his four gates. 243. At this imminent peril, and cooped up by the proud princes in his palace, Chandrasena prayed to Makla for deliverance. 244. Firmly, courageously, resolutely, and with perfect concentration of mind, the king worshipped Mahadeva daily and nightly. 245. At this time, a milkmaid who had been traveling, came voluntarily to the temple of. Makla, translation, 246. The widow came with a child of five, and after witnessing the devotions of the king and bowing down her head, vanished. 247. The child, having seen all this out of Siyu, Riyasiti, prepared for worshiping Siva, which works out man's salvation. 248. The cowherd boy brought a piece of stone after good selection, and in the camp hard by established it as the image of Siva, 249. Then from trees the flowers of which he could reach, he culled flowers with his own hands, and with them began to worship the image. A treatise on gems. Translation. 250. When the mother of the lad saw that the time of his noontide meal had gone by, she again came to the spot. 251. Seeing him with closed eyes, absorbed in the contemplation of Siva, she grew wroth and pulled him forcibly by the arm. 252. When this, as well as upbraidings, had failed, the woman flung away the image at a distance in order to disturb the boy's devotions. 253. Seeing the worship of the trident bearing. God of gods, thus disturbed by his own mother, with piteous cries, he fell down on the ground. A treatise on gems. 673. Translation. 254. After remaining insensible for a while, he regained his senses and, opening his eyes, began to weep unceasingly. 255. When he opened his eyes, he saw the tent decorated with gemmed pillars and furnished with golden doors and gates, and with an altar decked with sapphires and other gems. 256. The boy found in the camp a brilliant palace of gold, with domes of curious and exquisite workmanship. The palace embosomed an image of Siva, a treatise on gems. 675. Translation. 257. At sunset, the boy went home and found his house turned into one of gold, and flaming with gems, beauteous and rare. It looked like Indra's. Palace, 258 minus 259. Then he saw his mother bearing on her head a crown adorned with gems, sitting on a milk-white bed upon a couch richly embossed with gems, decked out in jewels, wearing a divine raiment, and beaming with a divine radiance like a very goddess. 260 minus 261. 
After finishing his devotions, King, Chandrasena suddenly went at night to the shining palace of the milkmaid and witnessed the might of the cowherd lad raised up by Madeva's grace and the golden palace of Siva with his image. Translation, the anecdote of Chinsidi 262, the handsome and intelligent King Dur Jaya begot two beautiful sons and, after some, years went into the neighboring forest. 263, on coming there, he found the holy devout hermit, Guramoka, 264. He entered the hermitage with the intent, John of seeing the holy sages. 265, on seeing the king, Guramoka gladly welcomed him. Translation, 266. O oh, king, today I shall feed you and your retinue according to my power. Pray, do you leave your bearers? The devout man said this and was silent. 267. Obliged by the hermit's courtesy, the king accepted his invitation with his followers. He had with him four Akauhinis of soldiers. 268. Shall this poor hermit be able to provide food to so many men? The king thought to himself. 269. On the other hand, the hermit began to think how he could feed such a number. A treatise on gems. 681. Translation. 270. When he was thus laboring under anxious thought, the memory of the god of gods, Narayana, arose in his mind. 271. Then that best of hermits devoutly contemplated Narayana, and descending into the waters of the sacred Ganges, worshipped the god. 272. O best of gods, to day King Durjaya, having graced my cottage with his royal presence, I am anxious to entertain him. 273. O sovereign of the universe, do thou vouchsafe to provide thy poor devotee with sufficient food. Translation. 274. Pleased with the sage's prayer, Kashava presented himself before him in Propria Persona and said, O oh, best of sages, do you ask of me what? Whom you like. 275. O oh, goddess, the holy man wondered exceedingly, and bowing low, and with clasped hands, spake thus. 276. O oh, Kashava, if thou art pleased in thy servant, do thou grant this prayer of mine, that the king Durjaya with his retinue may to day be fed at my cottage, and depart thence tomorrow morning. 277. Thus accosted by the sage, Narayana willingly gave him a very powerful gem called Chin. City, a treatise on gems, 685. Translation, 278. Having won it, the Brahmin came back to his cottage and imagined a spacious palace, grand like a peak of the Himalaya, lofty like a great cloud, and white like the moonbeam. 279. By virtue of Vishnu's blessing and the magic of the gem, he outright caused to rise like exhalation myriads of palaces like the one he had conceived. 280. Then he made the four kinds of food and golden dishes and such gear. 281. Having done this, the sage spake to the Poissant king, O king, let your soldiers enter my house. A treatise on gems, 685. Translation, 278. Having won it, the Brahmin came back to his cottage and imagined a spacious palace, grand like a peak of the Himalaya, lofty like a great cloud, and white like the moonbeam. 279. By virtue of Vishnu's blessing and the magic of the gem, he outright caused to rise like exhalation myriads of palaces like the one he had conceived. 280. Then he made the four kinds of food and golden dishes and such gear. 281. Having done this, the sage spake to the Poissant king, O king, let your soldiers enter my house. A treatise on gems. Translation. 282. When they entered in, Gurmukha took the divine gem and said to the king, 283. King, you may have got very tired by your journey, and therefore I shall provide you with the attendance of an adequate number of male and female servants. 284. Having said this, the Brahmin placed on, aside before the king, the gem given to him by Vishnu. 285. No sooner had he placed the sun-like gem on the ground than 10,000 women, beautiful as the graces, began to issue out of it. A treatise on gems. 689. Translation. 286. Having witnessed with his own eyes this marvel, he was amazed and thought within himself this is either the work of the sage or his austerities, or the virtue of the gem itself. 287. As a forlorn lover's misery is only aggravated by the balmy light of the full moon, the wicked, even when living in the company of the good, can never bring forth good. 288. Having witnessed the virtue of the gem, Durjaya became very sad, and with astonishment thought how he could possess himself of the jewel. A treatise on gems, 691, translation, 289. I must take possession off this gem by any means, thought Durjaya for a while, and hastily leaving the cottage, 
he dispatched his courtier to the sage to ask for Chinsidi. 290. Do you grant this best of gems to his majesty, said he to the sage, when the latter flew into a wrath and said, 291. The Brahmins are to receive, the kings are to give. But how can you, being a king, come asking like a poor man? 292. Go to the wicked king and tell him at once to quit this place. Let none know this hateful desire of his. A treatise on gems. 693. Translation. 293. Having said this to the courtier, the sage went to provide KUSA and sacrificial wood, thinking of the virtue of the gem in cutting off enemies. 294. The courtier, on the other hand, being thus told by the sage, went to the king and related in detail all that the Brahmin had said. 295. Hearing the haughty words of the Brahmin, Durjaya was very wroth and said to NLA, another courtier of his, go instantly to the wicked Brahmin and anyhow bring the gem to me. 296. According to the king's order, NLA, with a large number of soldiers, went to the woodland cottage of the Brahmin. A treatise on gems. 695. Translation. 297. On coming to the cottage, he saw the gem at the spot where the Agnihotra was being celebrated and hastily descended to the ground. 298. When NLA had descended from his car, with evil in his heart, armed warriors began to come out of the sage's gem. 299. Some were mounted in cars, some bore banners, some were horse soldiers, some bowmen, some with swords and bucklers, some with quivers. All were dreadful to behold. Countless invincible warriors thus began issuing out of the gem. 300. The gem-begotten warriors, bearing various weapons, saw before them the strength of the enemy and began the fight with fixed courage. 697. A treatise on gems. Translation. 301. O best of sages, the eminent courtier with his army were sent to Pluto's gloomy reign in that fight. 302. When the courtier was killed, the Poussant king came with his Chaturanga army to the field and commenced a desperate fight with the gem-begotten forces. 303 minus 304. In the meantime, Garamukha returned with Keyuasa uh, and sacrificial grass to his cottage, and sitting at his door began to think of the fearful. Battle, a treatise on gems, 699, translation, 305. Knowing that the gem was the root of the evil, he contemplated Narayana, 306. Immediately, Narayana presented himself before the sage in his yellow dress and mounted on Garura and said, Sage, why have you thought of me? 307. Garamukha with clasped hands said to Narayana, O oh God, vouchsafe to destroy the wicked king with his army. 308. Thereupon, he instantaneously reduced Durjaya and his host to ashes. A treatise on gems. 701. His. Translation. 309, 310. After having annihilated Durjaya with army, Narayana said to Garamukha, O oh best of sages, from the circumstance that has led to the instant annihilation of the Deneva force in this forest, in future, it shall be called Naimisharanya. It will be the haunt of Brahmins. 311. Narayana vanished with these words. And the sage continued to pass his days in perfect happy. Ness. A treatise on gems. 703. Translation. Princes and rich men nowadays use diamonds and other gems and ornaments. But in ancient times, they used them in decking their houses and making idols, in worshipping them, as well as in making ornaments. Many instances of this are found in the Purnas and other works of which I cite the following instances. The court of Yudhisthira, 312. The Asura made a court which stood unrivaled in the three worlds. It blazed with gems and was a marvel. A treatise on gems, 705. Translation, 313. O king! The edifice was adorned with golden trees. It measured 5,000 yards, 314. It looked like the court of Agnisraya or Chandra, 315. It dimmed the luster of the glorious sun, and burned in its own dazzling brilliance. 316. The spacious and splendid palace contained a raised seat studded with gems and stood piercing the heavens like fresh clouds. A treatise on gems. 707. Translation. 317. Visvakarma, the architect of the gods, furnished it with furniture of superb grandeur, filled it with treasures, enclosed it with a gemmed wall, and hung it all round with fairy pictures. 318. The court of Yudhisthira, made by the Danava Maya, beat hollow the court of Krishna at Dwaraka, the Amaravati of Indra, or for that matter, the court of Brahma himself. 319. Maya decorated the palace with lotus plants, having leaves of cat's eyes and bearing lotuses composed of lustrous gems. 320. He ornamented it with gold and sagandikas, with birds of rich hues, 
and with full-blown lotuses of goldfishes and tortoises. A treatise on gems, 709. Translation, 321 minus 322. Maya made a wonderful tank, of which the steps were of excellent crystal. It contained small pearls, and was furnished with a raised platform of brilliant gems. The waters looked translucent and seemed waving in the summer breeze. People mistaking it for a real tank tried to plunge in the court of Inderdumma. 323. Some parts of this court were filled with gems, some with gold, some with crystal, and the others with silver. That is, all these were placed in their proper places in order to effectiveness. A treatise on gems. 711. Translation. 324. The windows were furnished with gemmed pillars. They were hung with rich tapestries fringed with pearls. 325. Odwigas, as the courts of the gods fascinate the mind, so it was with this court made by Maya. Description of Dwarak. Pagatma said, 326. Make a goodly city, a hundred yojanas in area, with rubies, emeralds, excellent sapphires. A treatise on gems. Translation. 713. 327. Ruchakis, the gem whose color is like the TV lemon, Paravadras, whose color is like the Clitomdra flower, Palancas, a kind of gem, Siamantaka Gandharvas, whose color is like that of musk deer, Dremas, whose color resembles the pomegranate flower, Chandrakantas, 328, Shrikantas, white crystal, other green gems excepting emeralds, black gems, cat's eyes, 329, gems yellow like Gorachana, those resembling the pale red pomegranate seeds, those resembling the lotus seeds, those like blue lotuses. 330. Gems dark like calyrium, those which resemble the champaka flower in color and which are faultless and transparent, those resembling molten gold. A treatise on gems. 715. Translation. 331. Weighty pale red gems valued at a price 100 times that of gold and being the best of their kinds. 332. Put these and other precious jewels in their proper places. So long as your work is not finished, indent for gems at the treasury of Kubera. Further, 333, gods, asuras, ganharas, kinaras begin to pour into Dwarak to see Krishna and Valarma. 334, some descended from the sky, some from their cars, and alighting underneath the banyan tree, looked on Dwarak the matchless. A. Treatise on Gems. Minor Gems. Translation. Ruchaka, Privadra, Aquamarine, Swarnandi, Prisopress, Pala, Planka, Onyx, Ganasasya, Pinda, Jyotirasha, Bloodstone. Pilu, Jade, Sisha, Ganja, Mocha Stone, Gandharva, Tourmaline, Sikari, Cinnamon Stone, and NLNGA, Violet Ruby, are known as Yuparatnas, Minor Gems. 3. Aruchaka is yellow, green, red, or tawny. It is found on the borders of Kashmir. Pravadra Aquamarine is remarkably spotless, like clear water, green, very lustrous, and fine. A Treatise on Gems. 511. Translation. 4. The Swarnji chrysoprase, say the authorities, is blue, green, or red, is splendid like unalloyed gold, and beautifully freckled. 5. The Opala is like the blue lotus, is beautiful, transparent, and very hard. The Palanca onyx is black, green, streaked red or white, and brittle. 6. Aganda Sasha is red dash with white, perfectly red, or white dash with red. It does not admit of a good polish. The pinda is reddish, pale red or green, and is remarkably hard. A treatise on gems. 513. Translation. 7. A black red-spotted, hard and beautiful gem goes by the name of Jyotirasha, bloodstone. A blue jade is smoke, colored white or green, shaded with white and hard, non-transparent, and slightly lustrous. Gem. 8. A particular metal or a gem colored like the mouse is called a sisha. A colored like moss or onion and freckled like the trunk of a tree, is called the Ganja Mocha Stone, a treatise on gems. 515. Translation. 9. A Gonharva, tourmaline, is white, green, or blue, and bright like lightning. A reddish or paler gem goes by the name of Sakari, cinnamon stone, and a deep blue gem, dashed with red, by the name of Nilnga, violet ruby. Minor gems. The aquamarine, its properties. H-O-H-E aquamarine is a variety of the barrel the green and blue specimens being called by the former designation, the yellow ones by the latter. The former again has three subdivisions, aquamarine pure light sky blue, to Siberian aquamarine light greenish blue, bright luster and faintly colored. Three, aquamarine chryso, 
like greenish yellow, sometimes yellowish green with bright luster. A pallo greenish variety called the Oriental Aquamarine is distinguished from the ordinary kind by its superior brilliancy, hardness, and specific gravity where found. This stone was formerly obtained from the frontiers of China, but now it comes mostly from Brazil, ready cut, as also from certain places in Siberia, in the Ural and Altai Mountains. Engravings A and C. The aquamarine has found favor with the English on account of its virtue of retaining its brilliance. In artificial light, it is now used in a variety of ornaments. An aquamarine, having the figure of Hercules engraved on it, was in the possession of Emperor Commodus, one representing Neptune, drawn by sky horses, was found in the treasures off 66. Ochalti. Pliny mentioned beryl as though gem green as the sea, and hence perhaps its other. Name aquamarine. Beads of aquamarine hat been discovered in the Egyptian mummy pits. More than 2,000 years ago, this stone was used by the Greeks for intaglios. In the National Library of Paris is to be seen an aquamarine upon which is engraved the head of Julia, the daughter of Titus. The tiara of Popo Julius, I contained an aquamarine 214 inches in length and two in thick. Ness. The chrysoprase. Its properties. C-H-O-H-E chrysoprase is a variety of the quartz and is composed of silica 9616, oxide of nickel 100, and lime 083. It loses its color by the action of heat and light, and also of time. The solution of nitrate of nickel is said to have the power of restoring its original color. It has a flat conchoidal fracture. 518 monorgems were found. The chrysoprase is found in Silesia, near Kosmutz, Glesendorf, and Baumgarten, near Frankenstein. It is also reported to have been discovered in St. Lawrence, United States. Cutting and engraving. The stone is generally cut on cabochon at the bottom and with small facets round the edge of the upper side. The lapidaries of Warmbrun are the principal cutters and polishers. Fine specimens of cameos and intaglios of the early Greek period are still to be found. Its price and uses. Though the Sabrisa praise is not so much liked now as in former days, it fetches a better value than any other chalcedonic variety of the quartz. Good specimens have been known to realize from 5 pounds to 20 pounds. The name chrysoprase is derived from two Greek words, meaning golden leek, owing to its color. It was used by the Greeks and Romans for rings. Pliny mentions it as a gem well known to the ancients, and that they were made vessels of, and that they were obtained from India in large quantities. It is now chiefly used for signet rings, buckles, and sea. In the continent of Europe, it is sometimes made into snuff boxes, stick tops, and a treatise on gems, 519 even brooches and pins. The mosaic walls of St. Wenzel's Chapel at Prague, built in the 14th century, contain good specimens of chrysoprase. Frederick the Great used this stone profusely in adorning San Sushi. In the Potsdam Palace are two tables made of this gem, three feet long, two broad, and two inches in thickness. Ionix, its properties. O-O-H -E Onyx is a chalcedonic variety of the quartz and is distinguished from the agate by the position of the stripes or layers. It is generally of a blackish or brownish color with white stripes and sometimes with a greenish layer. We're found. The Oriental Onyx, which is better than the ordinary one, is obtained from India, Egypt, Arabia, Armenia, and Babylon. The other kind is found in Saxony, the Isle of Skye, and in several parts of Russia and Ireland. Cutting, staining, and engraving. The cutting, slitting, drilling, and staining of onyxes are conducted on a large scale at Oberstein and Idar. The mills being driven by the water power of the river R, and labor being very cheap, the operation is performed at a very small cost. The onyx can very casely be stained to any artificial color, if it is intended to color it. Black, the stone should be first boiled in honey, oil, or sugared water, and then in one solution of sulfuric acid, which carbonizes the oil or sugar which. The stone is taken into itself. If red, proto, sulfate of iron is added to it. If deep blue, yellow, prusiato of potash is added to this again. Sardonyx is a variety of the onyx and is formed out of the sard and onyx. It is of a reddish-brown color and consists of alternate layers of chalcedony and carnelian. The nicolo, or onicolo, which has a deep brown A ground overlaid by a layer of bluish-white, is also a variety of the onyx. The onyx has been used for cameos from the earliest times. One of the ancient specimens is the Manchuan vase, on, which are represented series in Tripolemus in Quest of Proserpine. A cameo representing Octavius Augustus is to be found in the Vatican Library. Rome. Amongst the many specimens CCN and the Museo Nacional of Naples may be mentioned one, representing the apotheosis of Augustus in Anno, 
they're having the head of Medusa on the obverse and the apotheosis of Ptolemy on the reverse. In the National Library of Paris are to be seen one, having upon it Tiberius with an ox, another, Marcus Aurelius and Faustina, a third, Agrippina. A treatise on gems, 521, with her two children, and a fourth, Jove armed, with the lightning. A bust of Faustina, cut on a sardonyx belonging to the Marquis Dri, was sold for 7,171 francs. Though art had, for a long time, degenerated, but seems to have revived, as the beautiful specimens produced at Paris and Rome unquestionably prove. The Onis as known to the ancients. Tionics is often spoken of in the Greek and Old Hebrew works. The name comes from a Greek word which means a nail, though stone being supposed to resemble the color of the human fingernail. The Greeks attached to it the following mythological story. Cupid, with the sharp point of his arrow, cut the nails of the sleeping Venus, which fell into the Indus. But as they were of heavenly origin, they sank and became metamorphosed into onyx. The onyx was, according to the authorized version of the Bible, the eleventh stone on the breastplate of Aaron. The valuable ring thrown into the sea by Polycrates, the tyrant of Samos, is supposed to have been a sardonyx. Its price and uses, the onyx and sardonyx, are extensively used for jewelry purposes, particularly for signet rings. They are also used for being made into cups, vases, knife, and sword handles, and in beads for necklaces. 522 menorgems and rosaries. Mithridates, king of Pontus, had, according to Appianus, 2,000 cups of this gem. The Basilica of St. Peter, Rome, has six small pillars made of onyx. In the Temple of the Three Magi, Cologne, is one pillar, which is broader than the palm of the hand. The Oriental onyx fetches far higher value than the German one. But the latter can, by staining, be so perfectly made to imitate the former that it can very easily pass off for it, even with the most experienced. The German beads sell from 60 to 6 seconds, according to size and quality. Large stones of good color have been known to fetch so much as 200 pounds each. A necklace of well-selected stones may be sold for 100 to 500 guineas. Marvelous and uh, medicinal properties. In the ancient times, the onyx was supposed to cause strife and melancholy and to be a remedy for cepilepsy, the bloodstone, its properties. The bloodstone or heliotrope is a jasper. Variety of quartz and is possessed of a dark green color and has minute blood red specks spread over it. It is opaque and its clevago is imperfect. Its fracture, subconchoidal and uneven. Its hardness, 4-5. It is infusible and changes its color if melted with borax and subjected to intense heat where found. The bloodstone is found in large quantities in India, Bokhara, Siberia, and Tartary, and also in the Isle of Rum in the Hebrides. It is also found in Bohemia, France, Spain, and parts of Germany, engravings, and its uses. IR is said that the art of engraving was first tried on the bloodstone. The largest numbers of the old Babylonish and Egyptian intaglios are on the bloodstone. The bloodstone is now used for the same purposes as the agate and onyx. The bloodstone as known to the ancients. The word heliotrope is derived from two Greek words signifying the sun and a turning from a notion that went steeped into water. It had the power of changing the image of the sun into blood red. Pliny says that the sun and those solar eclipses could be viewed in it as in a mirror. According to a tradition, the bloodstone had its origin in a dark green jasper, over which fell the blood of Christ at the crucifixion, and which 524 menorgems happened to lie at the foot of the cross. The red specks in this stono were, in the Midlow Ages, supposed to represent the blood of Christ. The bloodstone was thought to strengthen the stomach if hung about the neck. The jade, its properties. C-I-P-H-E jade is a very hard and tough stone. Its color varies from a creamy white to a dark green. Its hardness is 6 to 7 in the scale. Its specific gravity from 29 to 3 1. It fuses before the blowpipe at the thinnest edges only, with great difficulty. It is composed of a variety of things, ivies, silica, magnesia, lime, alumina, peroxido, iron, and of manganese, oxide of chrome, water, and potash, were found. The jade, also called the nephrite, is found in Egypt, Corsica, North America, New Zealand, and China. Its price and uses. In India, China, and Turkey, the jade is carved into dagger and sword handles, ornamental vases, cups, and sea, and generally studded with precious stones. The color best liked is the pale greenish gray good specimens of which often fetch a high price. Japan sends out to Europe a large quantity of ornamental things made of this stone, and the New Zealanders carve it into spear and axe heads. The soft jade, 
which is a kind of stearite or soapstone, is sometimes sold for the real jade, but even the uninitiated can make out the difference by its inferior hardness. Medicinal properties. The word nephrite, another name for the jade, is derived from a Greek word, which means a kidney, from the supposition that the stone had the virtue of healing all diseases of that organ. T, the mocha, stone, the mocha stone, otherwise called the mocha, stone, is a variety of quartz containing infiltrated dendritic oxides of manganese and iron, which give it the appearance of containing vegetable remains. It is so-called on account of its being found in mocha, in Arabia. Some people say that the name is only a corruption of mashas, or moss stone. 526 minor gems. The ormoline, its properties. The tourmaline belongs to the hexagonal. System of crystallization. Its cleavage is imperfect. Fracture, conchoidal. Hardness, 7 to 7, 5. And its specific gravity, from 2, 9 to 3, 3. Its luster is vitreous. It is found to be of all shades of transparency and opacity. It possesses double refraction and becomes electric by friction. It has also the power of polarizing light so perfectly that, cut into slices, it is used in the polariscope to examine the optical properties of other minerals. Its peculiarity consists in the fact of its extremities frequently ending in a different manner, so that when heated or rubbed, each extremity acquires a different degree of electricity. If broken under that operation, the bits present opposite poles, like artificial magnets. The color of the tourmaline is of all shades of gray, yellow, green, brown, black, red, and pink. When it the Siberian tourmaline, commercially known as the Brazilian ruby, for which stone it is sometimes sold by mistake, is of a carmine, biasynth, purple, rose red, and sometimes bordering on the violet blue, and is obtained at Ceylon, Ava, Siberia, the Ural Mountains, Saxony, the Isle of Elba, and the United States of America. The specimens found in Peru is of a beautiful red very much like that of the ruby. The green and blue ones are found in Brazil and go by the name of Brazilian emeralds and Brazilian sapphires, respectively. The black ones are found in Bavaria, the United States, Greenland, and in parts of England. The yellowish green specimens, also called the Ceylon, chrysolite, are obtained at Ceylon in Brazil. The white onks, a rare verity, are found in the island of Elba and in the Dolomite Mountains. The brown tourmaline comes from Ceylon in Switzerland. Mode of cutting. This stone is cut upon a leaden or zinc wheel with emery and polished with Tripoli. The transparent ones are usually trap cut. The opaque ones are faceted both above and below the girdle. Its price and uses. The tourmaline is more generally used for optical than for jewelry purposes. A perfect stone, weighing five carats, would fairly fetch 20 pounds. The name of the stone is thought to be of Singalese origin. This stone is, in Saxony, called by 528 minor gems. Name of Shoral from a village where it is found in large quantities. It was first brought to Europe from Ceylon by the Dutch. The earliest record on this stone is to be found in a book published in Leipzig in 1707 called Curious Speculations of Sleepless Nights. Formerly, the German Jews were the only persons who could be found to purchase the stone. The tourmaline is now sold under a variety of names, owing to the advantage it has of possessing a diversity of colors. But it can be distinguished from other stones by its acquiring magnetic properties when subjected to heat. The cinnamon stone. Tui stone has been spoken of under the heading of garnet. Page 473. The violet ruby. SEC page 231. A treatise on gems. 531. The genesis of gems according to Pernas. Translation. Stasea. 10. I am going to describe the way of testing gems. There was an Asura in days of yore named Valo. Ho is said to have routed Indra and the other gods, and Tahavo proved invincible by them. 11. The wily gods begged of their antagonist the boon that he metamorphosed himself into their sacrificial beast. The Pusant Asura granted their prayer, and thus met his end. 12. Having been entangled in his own promise, he became a beast and entered into a pillar, purely actuated by motives of benevolence to the gods. A Treatise on Gems. 533. Translation. 13. By virtue of his merit, all the members of the body of this miracle of virtue became the germs of gems. 14. It is believed by the authorities that he was the source of all the gems that embellish gods, Jaksha, Siddhas, and Panagas. 15 minus 16. Whirled through the air wherever the parts of his body fell in oceans, rivers, mountains, and forests, the places were converted into mines of precious stones. 17. Some of these are destructive to demons and snakes, are antidotes to poison and disease, cleanse men from sin, and are pure. The rest are. 
evil and defective. Treatise on Gems, 535. Translation, 18. Wherever the bones of this conqueror of Indra fell, they were changed into diamonds of various shapes. 19 to 20. The glorious sun was watchfully journeying through the firmament, so deliciously blue like the sword, with the blood of this mighty Asura, which contained the germs of precious stones. When that vanquisher of the gods, the ruler of Lank, elated by power, obstructed the gods' course, while halfway, like Ru. A treatise on gems. 537. Translation. 21. Being thus obstructed by Ravana into a beautiful, large, and deep stream, whose waters were swayed by the well-rounded buttocks of the fair ones of Ceylon, and whose banks were lined with goodly beetle nut trees, the sun let fall the blood which he had been carrying. 22. Since that time the river has become sacred, like the Ganges, and has been called the Ravana. Gang. 23. Since then the banks of the river have been, shining at night like a well-polished golden bow, thickly studded with gems of various and rare hues. A Treatise on Gems. 539. Translation, 24. The shores of the Ravana gang produce Sagandika, Kuravinda, and crystal-begotten sparkling, beautifully red and highly valuable rubies. 25. At the time of the destruction of Valsur, exquisitely splendid and many tinted beautiful cat's eyes were produced to sounds loud and sublime as the swell and heaving of the ocean. 26. Beautiful cat's eyes of many colors and darting fiery scintillations were produced in the rainy season, when the deep and awful growl of the heavens seems like the cries of the king of Danavas. A Treatise on Gems, 541. Translation, 27. The rows of the Asura's teeth so white fell into the translucent waters of the father of streams, like a star and wrought chain flung from the bosom of the blue deep. 28. The teeth, beautiful in their splendor like the full moon, the germs of all precious stones, entered into oysters, conch shells, and sea. 29. Wherever they fell, the waters were ceaselessly hidden by clouds. The germs entering into oysters shot up into pearls. A treatise on gems. 543. Translation. 30. Sesha the snake took the entrails of Valsur and flung them into the country of Kankana and C. And hence it is that these countries bring forth rare vidrumas. 31. The monarch of snakes was hastily cutting his aerial way with the bile of the lord of Dinavis. 32. The trail which the gem which graced the hood of the Suki painted on the Azure Deep looked like a spacious fragment of a silver bridge. 33. Then Garura, the king of birds, shook the spears by spreading his wings and was going to attack the monarch of snakes, a treatise on gems, 545. Translation. 34. Terrified at this, he immediately dropped the bile upon a valley of the celebrated Anikia mountain, hot with the odor of malic flowers and containing in its wood of various trees, Ganatrina and Salrasa. 35. No sooner Garura came up than the bile suddenly escaped the mouth of the Suki and fell on the shores of the ocean. Ever since that place has been a mine of emeralds. 36. At this time, Garura, on taking a little of the bile that fell, became insensible and anon. Came out all the quantity of the bile through his nostrils. A Treatise on Gems, 547. Translation, 37. It is for this reason that we find hard and auspicious emeralds resembling the parrot's throat, Cerisa flower, the glowworm's back, the fresh green sward, moss, the kalhara leaf, tender grass, and finally the end of the peacock's tail. 38. Wherever the bile, thus let fall by Garura, drop, emeralds are found. Consequently, such countries are valuable and rare. A treatise on gems. 549. Translation. 39 minus 40. Graceful eyes of Alsor, fine as the blue lotus, fell into those woods where the Singhalese fair ones hold their mirth and revelry, which are encircled by the waves of the ocean and which abound in groves of the cheerful Kitaka. This place produces sapphires. 41. That spot in the Himalaya on which the skin of Valsura fell produces excellent topazes. A treatise on gems. 551. Translation. 42. Bhavana took the nails of the deity's hands and with alacrity threw them into a forest. These give birth to clean semiphonies. 43. The seed of the Deneva fell on the north of the Himalaya, and two at excellent bismas owe their origin. 44 minus 45. After having worshipped the Lord of Denavas, as the snakes were journeying in the north, they planted the nails of his feet in sacred mountains, rivers, and celebrated places. And hence it is that Dirac, Baghdad, and the shores. Of the Nurbuda produced garnets resembling the black spot of Gunj, honey, the lotus stalk, the musk deer, fire, and the plantain tree. A treatise on gems. 553. Translation. 46 minus 47. Agni. Fire taking the loveliness and 
of the Lord of the Navas, dropped it into the Grace Nerbuda and on a low tract. And this has since been producing root or chaos spotted like the insect cochineal, red like the upper beak of the parrot, and shaped like the full-blown flower. 48. The king of snakes threw the sweat of the Lord of the Navas upon the shores of the Cavery, the Vindia Hills, the country of the Javanas, China, and Nepal. And it produces a bright sky-colored crystal named Talkia. A treatise on gems. 555. Division of diamonds into casts. Translation. 49. The word Hiraka, diamond, is always mass. Hulan. Vajra, both masculine and feminine, and it is another name for Chandramani Moonstone. A white Vajra is a Brahmin, a red one is a KSHA, Triya, a yellow one is a Vaishya, and a black one is a Stri. 50. The Brahmin diamond Vajra is very use. Full in chemical operations and brings about the acquisition of lordship, friends, courtiers, wealth. Kingdom, forts, armies, and good luck to one's family. A Kshatriya diamond wards off old age and premature death. Avajja one crowns Evakrai. Endeavor after acquisition with success. Fall three. SDRA one is a panacea. A treatise on gems. 557. Distinction of gender. Translation. 51. Diamonds are divided into masculine, feminine, and neuter gender, according to character. Each class is distinguished by peculiar marks. A finely circular diamond possessing happy signs. Highly lustrous, large, and free from Rak, Vindu, and C is masculine. 52. A six-cornered diamond marked with Reka, Vindu, and C is feminine, and a very large triangular diamond is neuter. 53. Of these, the masculine kind is the best, and very useful in chemical operations. A feminine diamond brings grace and is very auspicious to women, but a neuter diamond is destructive of energy and brings weakness and disappointment. A treatise on gems. 559. Translation. 54. A feminine diamond is auspicious to women, a neuter diamond to impotent people, while a masculine diamond is useful to all. The process of refining gems. 55. Acid water refines rubies. The juice of the Jayanti leaf, pearls, ashes, vidrumas, and the milk of cows, emeralds. 56. The gruel of Kulati Kalaya refines the ruby, the juice of the little Matia thorn, the diamond, blue water, the sapphire, the urine of cows, the gomeda agate, and the water of trifold, the bidergia. Translation. 57. After mixing up, according to some, the juice of the emdurae, manaseal, sulfur, and heritol, one should boil them in putpike eight times every other gem, except the diamond is thus refined. 58. According to others, rubies, pearls, corals, and other gems are refined by boiling them for a prahara in a vessel containing the juice of jayanti hung up over a fire. 59 minus 60. According to others, all gems are refined by steeping and boiling them thrice seven, times respectively in the juice of Grita Kumri, little nady thorn, and the milk from human teats. A treatise on gems. Translation. General properties of gems according to Sanskrit medical science. 61. Pearl, coral, diamond, sapphire, the cat's eye, crystal, and other gems are laxative, astringent in taste, palatable, and cool. Particular properties of the ruby. 62. The science of gems has it that ruby is sweet, cool, specific for imperfect oxidation and biliousness, and very valuable in chemical operations. Particular properties of the pearl. 63. The pearl is sweet in taste, very cool, and specific for eye diseases, cures poisoning and atrophy, and brings strength and vigor to weak limbs. A treatise on gems. 565. Translation. Particular properties of the zircon. 64. The zircon is sour heating and curative of unhealthy oxidation, sharpens the appetite, helps digestion, and takes away sin. Particular properties of the topaz. 65. The topaz is sour, cool, and curative of abnormal oxidation, causes appetite, and brings fame, wealth, and wisdom. Particular properties of the coral. 66. The coral is sour, sweet, specific for cold and biliousness, nutritious, and grace imparting, and the wearing of it is very beneficial to women. A treatise on gems. 567. Translation. Particular properties of the diamond. 67. The diamond combines all the six tastes, cures every kind of disease, is good in indigestion, is a blessing, brings robustness, and is very useful in chemical operations. Particular properties of the sapphire. 68. The sapphire is bitter, warm and good and cold and biliousness, and alleviates the rage of Sani when worn. Particular properties of the lapis lazuli. 69. The lapis lazuli is tender, deliciously cool and curative of biliousness, and is auspicious. 
a treatise on gems. 569, translation, particular properties of the emerald. 70, the emerald is cool, good in poisoning, sweet in purgative, helps digestion, cures biliousness, removes disrelish, is nutritious, and wards off spectral influence. Particular properties of the cat's eye. 71, the cat's eye is warm, sour, and curative of cold, imperfect oxidation, chronic derangements of the spleen and colic, and is generally auspicious when worn. Particular properties of the sunstone. 72. The sunstone is warm, flawless, good in cold and defective oxidation, and sacred. It is an elixir of it and is the delight of the sun. A treatise on gems. 571. Translation. Particular properties of the Chandrakanta. 73. The Chandrakanta is cool and cooling, and cures morage from the nose and mouth, is transparent, very much liked by Mahadeva, and when worn, removes chill poverty and baneful astral influences. Particular properties of crystal. 74. The crystal gives strength and cures biliousness, morbid heat, and fistula. Its rosary is infinitely more efficacious than any other. Particular properties of Vicarin TA. 75. The Vicarin TA is specific for consumption, leprosy, and poisoning. It may enter into medicines as a substitute for diamond, inasmuch as it is fully equal to the latter in producing. Energy. A treatise on gems. 573. Translation. 76. A blue, a white, or a red Vicarin TA is refined like a diamond, and when refined, may serve as a substitute for the latter. The views of the Sanskrit astrologers. On gems, the seats of the Graha is determined. 77 minus 78. The seat of the sun is the ruby, that of the moon, the Chandrakanta, that of Ru, the emerald, that of Sani, the sapphire, that of Buddha, the zircon, that of Rihaspati, the crystal, that of Sukra, the cat's eye, and finally that of Mangala, the coral. So says the Sestra. A treatise on gems. 575. Translation, ill stars, and how to propitiate them by base stole of gems. 79. When the sun is hostile, a pure ruby. When the moon, a good pearl. When Mangal, a coral. When Buddha, the emerald. When Vihaspati, the topaz. When Sukra, the diamond. When Sani, the sapphire. When Ru, the zircon. And when Ketu, the cat's eye, should be given. What gems should be worn to ward off evil? Astral influences, 80 minus 81. If the sun is adverse, the cat's eye, if the moon, the sephiro, if mangala, the ruby, if Buddha, the ruby too. If Rihaspati, the pearl, if Sukra, the diamond. If Sani, the manila, if Raku, the zircon. And if Ketu, the emerald, should be worn. A treatise on gems, 577. Translation, what jeweled ornaments should be worn for the above purpose. 82. When the sun is evil, the ruby. When the moon, the diamond. When Mangala, the coral. When Buddha, the zircon. When Vrihaspati, the pearl. When Sukra, the cat's eye. When Sani, the sapphire. And when Rahu, the emerald, should bow, used with ornaments. The seeds of kings determined. 83. The seed of the Graha under whose influ, hence a king is born, is also his seed. And a crystal. Seed is good for all. A treatise on gems. 579. Translation. 84. In coronation, in setting out on a journey, in victory, and in war, a scat of lodestone should be used. 85. In the rainy season, kings should use seats of emeralds, and when the clouds begin to roar, they should sit on seats of pure gems. The thrones of kings determined. 86. The magnificent scat on which a king sits is called the Sri Sinhasana. There are eight kinds of it. These Padma Sinhasana, Lotus, Throne, Sanka Sinhasana, Conch Throne, Gaja Sinhasana, Elephant Throne, Hansa Sinhasana, Swan Throne, Sinha Sinhasana, Lion Throne, Bringa Sinhasana, Beetle Throne, Riga Sinhasana, Deker Throne, and Haya Sinhasana, Horse Throne. A Treatise on Gems. Translation. 87. In the opinion of the authorities, these eight kinds of thrones are respectively auspicious. To kings born under the eight astral influences, that is, if a king is born under the influence of the sun, the lotus, if of the moon, the conch, if of Mangala, the elephant, if of Buddha, the swan, if of Rihaspati, the lion, if of Sukra, the bee, if of Sani, the deer, if of Ru, the horse throne, should be used. The lotus throne, 88, the throne which is made of GMBA tri wood, which is mounted with pure gold, which is decorated with lotus garlands and rubies, a treatise of gems, 583. Translation, 89 minus 90 minus 91. 
at the foot of which there is a Padma Kosha ornamented with rubies, at the kite sides of which there are as many figures, each measuring the king's twelve fingers, which has four figures in it, which is exquisitely embossed with the nine gems and which is covered with a scarlet cloth, is called a lotus throne. Kings sitting on it attain great power, the conch throne. 90 Tominus 93. That throne, which is composed of Vajrendra wood, which is decorated with chains of conch, which is inlaid with pure crystal and silver. The four parts of whose feet are partly made of conch and embellished with pure crystal, which contains 27 figures, and which is covered with a white silken cloth, is called a conch throne. A treatise on gems. 585. Translation. The elephant throne. 94 minus 95. That throne, which is made of panasa wood, which contains figures of the elephant, which is decked out in cat's eyes, vidrumas, and gold, whose feet rest upon heads of elephants, which has a figure on each limb of the elephants, and which is covered with a scarlet cloth, is called an elephant throne. It leads to empire, the swan throne, 96. That throne, which is made of SL wood, which is embellished with figures of the swan, which is decorated with topazes, gold, and curvindas, a treatise on gems, 587, translation. 97. The four parts of whose feet have figures of swans, which is decked out with 21 figures composed of zircons, and which is covered with yellow cloth, is called the swan throne. This removes every evil, the lion throne. 98 minus 99. The throne, which is made of sandal. Wood, which is embellished with figures of the lion, which is ornamented with pure diamonds and gold, whose feet contain figures of lions and 21 other figures, which is decorated with good oyster, begotten, and other pearls. A treatise of gems. Translation, 100%, and which is covered with white cloth goes by the name of Lion Throne. The use of this throne leads to universal dominion, the Beetle Throne, 101 minus 102. The throne, which is composed of pure Shampaka wood, which is decorated with figures of the beetle and with pure rubies, whose feet rest upon Padma Koshas and 22 figures, and which is covered with blue cloth, is the Beetle Throne. It brings about destruction of foes and victory, the Deer Throne. 103, Thai throne is made of nimba wood, decorated with figures of deer and ornamented with sapphires, monilus, and gold. 964 appendices, the chemical analysis of precious stones, beryl, emerald, combination of glucina, silica, and alumina, native form a hexahedra prism terminated in a six-sided pyramid embedded in a vein of magnesian limestone traversing hornblende rocks. Color, emerald, grass green, beryl, light green, tinge more or less with blue. Chalcedony consists of silica and alumina, agate, heliotrope, onyx, plasma, sard, aro, all varieties of chalcedony differently colored by metallic oxides. Native form, botroidal, grape lyco, masses. But moro frequently found in rolled pebbles. Diamond, pure carbon. SP jar, 355, inferior to the sapphire. Hardness 10, the highest in the scale. Highly electric by friction. Native form an octahedral crystal, usually modified by the obliteration of the angles and edges, found mixed with gold dust in a hard, ferruginous, concreted gravel. Color, pure white, often tinged with yellow, red, blue, and sea garnet. Combination of a silicate of the protoxide of iron with silicate of alumina. The native garnet almondine is not electric by friction, but when polished and facetted. I have found by experiment that it becomes highly so. Native form a rhombic dodecahedron, embedded. In mica slate, also loose in the earth. Color, dark red, sometimes purple. Lapis lazuli, 966 appendices. Found massive, but sometimes in rhombic dodecahedrons. Color, pure azure, opal. Combination of silica and water, SP, GR, tuanine. Hardness not sufficient to strike fire with steel. Found massive embedded in a decomposed porphyry and in trap rocks. Color, milky but richly iridescent. Peridot, chrysolite. Combination of magnesia, silica, and peroxide of iron. Primary form a right prism with rectangular bases, but occurs more frequently in rounded crystalline masses. Color, green, more or less mixed with yellow. Sapphire, ruby, oriental topaz. Pure alumina, colored from admixture with oxide of iron, SPGR. 399, hardness only inferior to the diamond, highly electric. Native form six-sided prism variously terminated, but more frequently found in rolled masses. Colors, blue, blood red, and yellow, spinel, and ballet. Combination of alumina and magnesia, 
colored red by a minute admixture of chromic acid or blue by the protoxide of iron. Native form the perfect octahedron, like the diamond, and similarly modified. Color, spinel, red, or slightly tinged with cinnamon, ballet, pale rose, or lilac. Topaz, combination of alumina, silica, and fluoric acid. Native form prism with the sides deeply striated and the ends very variously terminated. Color, finest yellow. Turquoise, considered by Fisher to be only clay colored by oxide of copper, but John notices. Occurs in kidney-shaped masses, usually botryoidal or mimilated. Color, blue. Zircon, combination of zirconia and silica. Primary form, rhomboidal octahedron, modified like the diamond, but all its angles set obliquely. Color, orange, sometimes white. The test of relative hardness is a very important one for ascertaining the species of precious stones on account of the facility of its application. Its principle is the fact that the native crystal of any species will scratch all in the scale below itself. Thus the diamond, standing mm -hmm. highest, 10, scratches all the rest. The following is the received scale. 9, corundum, sephira, ruby, 8, Brazilian topaz, 7, rock crystal, 6, agillaria, 5, asparagus stone, 4, fluorospar ansi, the test of the relative specific gravity of the different species, a criterion upon which our modern mineralogists lay so much stress, and which they, a treatise on gems, 969, claim as a discovery of their own, was well known and resorted to by the Persian jewelers six centuries ago, and if then, doubtless at a much earlier date. Ben Mansur's notice of this point is 90% curious as to demand its insertion at length of the relations of certain precious stones to others. Abu Rihan pretends to have discovered by experiment that one miscal of the blue jacut stands in equal proportion with five dank and three tissue of the red jacut, with five dank and two and a half, tissue of the lao, with four dank minus one tissue of coral, and with four dank minus two tissue of, of the onyx, or of the crystal. The method used for the investigation of the weights and dimensions of gems is the following. They take a bowl filled with water and throw the stones singly in the same. The quantity of water that through the immersion of each separate stone flows over the bowl occupies the space of the same. God knoweth best 132. Note, the dank in Egypt three carats, in Spain two, it is though quarter or the sixth of a drachm, the tissue four or two grains of barley, the miscalminous one drachm, 970 appendices. Table of weights and patterns of TEE, largest known diamonds, other precious stones. The king of Portugal's, as large as a hen's egg, P-shaped, slightly concave on one side, color, deep yellow, and suspected of being a topaz, uncut. Weight, 2680 car. Mao, see the Raja of Matins, found at Ladakh in 1787, uncut, 367 car. Nizams, found at Golconda, uncut, 340 car. The Great Moguls, found at Kular. Weight in the rough, 787 car. Cut as a rose, 280 car. S, the Great Table seen by Tavernier at Golcon in 1642. Weight, 242, car. It was on sale for 500,000 rupees. He paid 400,000 for it in vain. The Regent, found at Pudiel, in the rough, 410 car. Cut as in Brilliant, 2367, eight car. The Orloff, Indian cut as a rose, 193 car. It has nine faint yellow tinge. The Star of the South, found at the Bogagini Mine, Brazil, by Negris, 1853. In the rough, 254% car. Cut is a brilliant 1,244 car. The stone has a decided tinge. Some say of rose, others of yellow. The Koh Noor Indian cut, but retaining nearly its native weight, 1,864 car. Recut 1862 as a brilliant 1,024 car. A treatise on gems, 971. The Grand Duke of Tuscany sometimes named the Austrian cut as a double rose, 139% car. Its color is decided yellow, and there is a tradition that the stone was bought for a trifle as two mere colored crystal at a jeweler's in Florence. The Shah, Russia, a long prism retaining many of its native faces, 95 car. What greatly adds to its interest is a Persian inscription cut upon it. Bada Chasros, Abbas Mirza's youngest son. The Nasak, the Marquis of Westminster's, captured from the Paishwa of the Maharadas, Indian cut, 89% car. A pear-shaped stone recut as a brilliant in London, 788 car. The Pigot, 824 car, was disposed of by lottery in London, 1801, for 300,007. The present owner is not known. 
66 Mr. Dresden's Diamond from Brazil, 1860, heart-shaped, a shallow, brilliant, 76 car. The Empress Eugenios, a brilliant, 51 car. Six, the Pasha of Egypt, a brilliant, 40 car. The Dutch, 36 car. Pope's Blue Diamond, suspected to be that of the French regalia, stolen in 1792, and then weighing 67 car, and afterwards recut as a brilliant to its present weight of 44 car. This was probably at its origin the stone dune bow violet, weighing in the rough 112% car, but disadvantageously shaped, being flat and thin, brought. 972 appendices from India by Tavernier and sold to Louis V in 1668. The polar star, Princess Yasapu, a brill. Lion, 40 car. The treasury of Dresden's, emerald green, 31 car. Halfen's rose colored, 22% car. Prince de la Riquez, Rose colored, 15 car. Paul I, ruby colored, 10 car. Tagore Brilliant, about 48 car. $6 a run back. ANSI, ANSI, ANSI. Ma also mentions as belonging to the Portuguese crown two other diamonds, rough of great beauty. The one weighing 215 carats, the other three little less. Both were found in the river Abat to the east of the district of Minas Gerais by three men banished into the interior. Besides these, he notices two nearly perfect octahedrons of 134 and 120 carats each. And to conclude, the state waistcoat of Joseph I had 20 buttons, each a single diamond worth 5,000 L. The largest known emerald is the Devonshire, two inches in diameter, and of the finest color, not cut. It came from the Muzo mine, Santa F. de Bogota, and was purchased by the Duke from Don Pedro. The Treatise on Gems, 973. The largest sapphire has got its name, the Wooden Spoon Cellars, from the occupation of the man who found it in Bengal. It is also called the Six. Six, Raspoli after a former owner. Lozen shaped, with six faces, one 321 carats. It was bought by Pere, a Persian jeweler, for 170,000 francs, 6807. Now in the Muse de Mineralogie, which possesses another of rare beauty, measuring tooks one inches. The largest pearl in the world is beyond all rivalry the hope, weighing three ounces and two inches deep by two, in circumference at the larger end. It is pear-shaped and of a dark opalized hue. It is mounted for a pendant in a crown imperial of five vertical bars, set with brilliance upon a lining of crimson enamel, with a gold border of emeralds, sapphires, and rubies. The largest cat's eye, also the forehope, is uh, spherical, one inches in diameter, and formerly was the great pride of the King of Candy, from whom it was captured in 1815. It has been celebrated for many ages, and appears to be the one mentioned by Ribeiro in his History of Ceylon, as at that time 16th century, belonging to the Prince of Eura. It is mounted in massy pure gold, set with cabochon rubies in the Oriental manner. The largest ruby ever seen in Europe is that presented by Gustavus III, of Sweden to the Tsarina upon his visit to her in 1777. It is equal in 974 appendices, bulked to a small hen's egg and is a fine color. This was the size of Rudolf II, already quoted, and therefore must weigh at least 100 carats. The highest weight of those seen in India by Tavernier did not exceed 50 carats. None in the French tree, Gallia weighed above 81 carats. General remarks upon the term sea carat. The word carat is probably derived from the name of a bean the fruit of a species of erythina, which grows in Africa. The tree which yields this fruit is called by the natives quara, sun, and both blossom and fruit are of a golden color. The bean or fruit, when dried, is nearly always of the same weight, and thus in very remote times it was used in Shangalas, the chief market of Africa, as a standard of weight for gold. The beans were afterwards imported into India and were there used for weighing the diamond. The carrot is not of the same weight in all countries. The ounce's weight is used for weighing small and baroque pearls, coral, peridots, and rough. Garnets, Treatise on Gems, 1023, The Occult Powers of Gems, and Precious Stones. In the previous general remarks on each kind of precious stone, the beliefs of nations and individuals as regards the marvelous and medicinal properties of those precious stones have been given. To the scientist, as well as to the generality of men, such beliefs will no doubt appear superstitious, childish, and laughable. But such beliefs still continue and there have been men of erudition philosophers and sages in every age and in every country who have not thought it beneath them to make this the subject of their ardent researches and who have left behind them the written record of their experiences. Nowhere more than in India, the land par excellence of occultism and spiritism 
has the research after the occult virtues of precious stones been pursued? And if all the knowledge and experience gained by Munis and Rishis, Yogis and Siddhas, had been preserved and handed down to the present generation, what an insight would have been obtained into the hidden arcana of nature, and into what beneficent use such knowledge and experience could have been turned. Modern Western spiritualists have endeavored to discover in the present day what was so well known in ancient times about the hidden virtues of gems. Apart from their medicinal properties, it has 1,024 appendices been ascertained that certain gems facilitate the rapport of certain classes of spirits with the owners of those gems. Mons. Cahagnet, the well-known magnetist, obtained from his celebrated clairvoyant Adel certain interesting information on this subject. He thought of studying the question thoroughly, and with that view he addressed himself to the spirit of Emanuel Swedenborg, through the assistance of Adel, when in magnetic sleep. He sought for light from Swedenborg, because the Swedish mystic was the most learned mineralogist of his time, and perhaps of our time as well. If his revelations, says M. Cahagnet, are not more precise than those of the ancients, they have at least the quality of novelty. Poe wished to know the truth, if that was possible in this life, and he therefore thought that any means to attain that object should not be thrown away. The following are the revelations of Swedenborg on the subject. Can you give me some information on the spiritual and material powers of certain priest shy stones? And tell me whether they really possess the property of putting material man and rapport with spirits who have been freed from matter, or of facilitating such rapport, and also of curing or preventing certain diseases. A, I shall do my best. Question me. Meiji Magnetique. Par L.A. Cahagnet. Paris, 1888. A treatise on gems. 1025. What are the spiritual virtues of white diamond? You know that there are diamonds of various colors. Yellow, red, violet, black, ampsi, A. This gem is beloved by the spirits of light and consequently puts one in rapport with them by illumining the intelligenco of those who wear it for this purpose. What do you think are its physical virtues, P.A.? I've already told you, it has influence over the intelligence, that is, it purifies the brains. Zero. What are the spiritual properties of the ruby? P.A. This color is loved by spirits who are ardent in study, desiring to know much. The ruby influences in this way him who wears it. Vav. And physically, what are its properties? It has influence on the blood. What are the spiritual properties of emerald? It is sought after by lucid spirits, and it places one in rapport with them. Q. What is the physical power of the emerald? The same as its spiritual powers. It alua. Mines, clears, and strengthens the globe of the material eye. Q. What is the spiritual power of the sapphire? A. This gem puts one in communication with the spirits of many societies, fond of different studies, but united in one society. 1,026 appendices. QD. What is its physical virtue? It strengthens the nervous fluid. Q. What do you think of the spiritual power of the amethyst. A, the spirits who love this gem are less elevate, ed, and less advanced than the others, puts one in communication with them. Q, what are its physical virtues? I, A, it has much influence on enlargements of the spleen. Q, what are the spiritual qualities of the topaz? A, the wandering spirits in the sulfurous atmosphere of the earth are fond of it. It puts one in communication with them. Q, what are its physical properties? A, is applicable in cases of uneasiness occasion. Ed by Baal, two. Do you attribute any spiritual powers to the coral pie? It has those of the ruby and agrees with heated blood, and also with those who have florid faces. Q, what is the spiritual property of the opal? A, it is regarded with affection by the spirits of peace and quiet. Q, what are its physical virtues? A, it is beneficial in cases of sleeplessness and of too light sleep. Q has the Cornelian any spiritual power. PA, it has but little concern with spirits. Treatise on gems, 1027, zero. Has it any physical virtues? A, I have already said that it has several, accord. Ing to its colors. The pure white is good for eye diseases, that is for growing cataract. The pale red agrees with a feeble state of the blood. The deep red with the heart with heated blood and liver diseases. Those with specks of deep red and crimson are good for diseases of the spleen. It must be understood that, to bow really efficacious, these gems should be pure and should be worn on the ring finger of the left hand. This finger being preferred to others in consequence of its ramifications with the heart, which is the seat of life. The spirit of Swedenborg likewise affirms that the medicinal influence of precious stones physically is perceived when those stones are in constant contact with the body and not when disconnected with it. 
Such a ring, set with the several kinds of stones whose virtues are desired to be felt, cannot but be more powerful than a ring of a single stone. It has further been affirmed that silver is the best setting for emerald, as, like the latter, silver is much liked by spirits of light. It should be remembered, however, that in this, as in every other thing, there are conditions to be observed. This should not be forgotten. Twenty individuals may, at the same time, be in possession of the portrait of a handsome woman, but it does. Not follow that the woman will love all the twenty possessors of her portrait. In the same way, a lapidary may possess twenty kinds of precious stones, each having contrary influences, but the lapidary receives no benefit therefrom, except from selling them as high as he can. That kind of love and, shall I say, worship, which the possessor of such a stone should have for it as a medium of communication with the spiritual world, is far from his mind. He who regards it as the receptacle of his affections and who confides to it hid griefs appealing to it by its correspondence with the spirits who love it in order to obtain aid and protection from them will find himself in a condition in which he can hope for something. An idea of the researches and opinion of those who have treated on this subject will be obtained from the following notes from the magic of J.B. Porta. The precious stones of here have been classified alphabetically and not according to their value. Agate strengthens the heart, prophylactic, against plague and cures the bites of venomous animals. Amethyst neutralizes magic incantations. Cornelian ensures victory. Chrysolite induces a man to repent of the faults committed by him. Chrysoprasis strengthens the sight, enlivens the spirit, and makes a man feel free and joyous. Coral arrests blood, keeps off evil spirits. AC. According to Marcel Fison, it removes panics and protects from thunder and hail. Crapendine, which is found in the head of toads, is good for the purposes of witchcraft. Diamond contends against sleeplessness, spells, and enchantments. It calms anger. Elos, it soothes headaches. Emerald cures epilepsy. In powder, it arrests dye. Century and cures wounds by venomous. Animals. Galakai blackish stone secures from flies and insects, put into the mouth it, discovers the secrets of others. Getty brings on changes in the atmosphere, brings rain, wind, and clouds. No, one sees this stone now, heliotrope, stone unknown in our days. It is said that it could render one invisible. I assume that if suspended from the neck, it keeps. Off plague and thunder strengthens the heart and increases riches and honors. Jade alleviates pain of the kidneys, expels gravels from the bladder, and when, worn as a charm, is a preservative against venomous animals. Opal stimulates the heart, preserves from malaria, and contagion in the air drives away. Despondency prevents fainting, heart diseases, and malignant affections. Perithe yellow stone, cures gout. Geminius lapis prevents miscarriage. Strassi fabulous stone, facilitates digestion. Seracite precious stone, to which pliniatry. Butes the power of retaining spirits, evoked. Eagle stone, which is found in the nest of eagles, discovers thief and accelerates child birth. While on this subject, it will not be out of place to give the following extract from that valuable and really wonderful work entitled Art Magic, or Mundane, Submundane, and Supermundane Spiritism, edited by Emma Hardinge Britton. The splendid array of experiments by which Baron von Reichenbach has, within the last half century and under the most stringent test conditions, proved that magnetic emanations streamed from shells. Stones and crystals displaying different degrees of force and different shades and color, form and radiance supplement the opinions of the most authoritative writers of different ages on the same subject. That all metals and crystalline bodies give off magnetic force is now proved beyond question. That they are capable of producing somnambulic or ecstatic effects in different degrees on Reichenbach's experiments with over 150. A treatise on gems, 1081. Sensitives have abundantly demonstrated, hence we may be justified in regarding with some interest the classification of the different qualities of minerals and precious stones. Put forth by Rabbi Benoni, a learned writer of the 14th century, said to be one of the most profound alchemists of his time, who alleges that the lodestone. Sapphire and diamond are all capable of producing somnambulism, and when combined into a talisman, attract such powerful planetary spirits as render the bearer almost invincible. All precious stones, when cut with smooth surfaces and intently gazed upon, are capable of producing somnambulism in the same degree as the crystal, also of inducing visions. Their varieties of color prove that they absorb different degrees of light, and they are said to impart unequal degrees of heat. The Buddhists esteem the sapphire above all gems, claiming that it produces tranquility of mind, and when worn by one wholly pure and devoted to God, ensures protection against disease, danger, and venomous reptiles. 
Orpheus exalts the virtues of the lodestone almost as highly as did Paracelsus that of the magnet. The former says, with this stone, you can hear the voices of the gods and learn heavenly things. It will confer strength, banish disease, and when worn constantly about the person, ward off. 103% appendices, epidemics and plagues. Sitting down before it and fixing your gaze earnestly upon it, you have but to ask of the gods for light on any subject. And the answer will come breathe out through the stone. Your soul will hear it and your senses will discover it clearly. Orpheus says of stones in general, the earth produces every good and evil to man, but she also provides a remedy for every ill. These are to be found chiefly in stones. Every virtue is hidden within them. Benoni affirms that the diamond will deprive the lodestone of its virtue and is the most powerful of all stones to promote a spiritual ecstasy. Amongst a variety of similar aphorisms, he says, the agate quenches thirst if held in the mouth and soothes fever. The amethyst banishes the desire for drink and promotes chastity. The garnet preserves health and joy. The sapphire impels to all good things like the diamond. The red coral is a cure for indigestion when worn constantly about the person. Amber is a cure for sore throat and glandular swellings. The crystal promotes sweet sleep and good dreams. The emerald promotes friendship and constancy of mind. A treatise on gems. 1033. The onyx is a demon imprisoned in stone who wakes only of a night, causing terror and disturb. Ants to sleepers who wear it. The opal is fatal to love, and so is discord. Between the giver and receiver. The topaz is favorable for all hemorrhages and imparts strength and good digestion. We give these quaint aphorisms not as guides or scientific indications, but to show the ideas which the latent powers of magnetic bodies suggested to observers of natural forces. It is sincerely to be hoped that as science and philosophy march hand in hand towards sublime development, things which were known to our forefathers and to the wise of ancient times, and which lie buried within the ponderous debris of ignorance, bigotry, and unbelief will gradually be brought to light, and that along with other wonders. The hidden properties of precious stones will be made clear, as the hidden powers of light and electricity have been made clear to the students of modern science and to the world. Concluding remarks, I beg of my readers to bear up with me yet a while and to pardon me if before bringing to a conclusion my self-imposed task. I take them back to the days when I was but a little child. The memories of bygone times are crowding thick upon me, and through the long vista of departed years, I can see myself sitting on the lap of my gentle mother. While she amused me by trying to impress on my mind the names of different kinds of precious stones. It was thus that my love for and knowledge of gems grew apace. Perhaps the narration will seem dry to my readers, but to me the remembrance of those innocent days is full of pleasantness, and I would therefore. Again, beg them to bear up with me yet a while. I remember I was six or seven years old when my revered mother used to gladden my boyish heart with presents of finger rings set with jewels of no great value. She taught me the name of each gem. This yellow stone, she would tell me, is Pukraj, Topaz. That piece of red stone is a Emnic, Ruby, Emnic, the wealth of seven kings. This is called a cat's eye, and so on. I was somehow inordinately fond of the Topaz and the cat's eye, and would stop crying when I got them. These two rings, I may mention in passing, are still in my possession, and have been very carefully preserved. My mother understands the identification of precious stones thoroughly, and as she... A-P-E-N-D-I-C-E-S is also well-educated in other respects. I had an intelligent and experienced teacher in such matters. She is in about the 74th year of her age, and her eyes are not now what they were. She can, however, give a very correct opinion on the genuineness or otherwise of a stone, and accurately judge of its qualities, as soon as it is placed in her hands. From her, too, I learned to be cautious when purchasing jewelry. I remember that, in order to guard me against being imposed upon by dealers of precious stones, she would frequently remind me of the trick which a certain Jewish jewel merchant had played upon my uncle, the late Babu Sorji Kumar Tagore, by palming upon him at a very high price. Two bits of colored glass ingeniously pasted together and made to appear exactly like emerald. Having this wholesome lesson in my mind, I am careful in deciding upon the merits of gems and precious stones which are brought to me for sale or opinion, and I would advise everyone to do the same. About 30 years ago, the time when I had been taking my first lessons in jewelry from my respected mother, the rage for gems and precious stones was high among the aristocracy of Calcutta. In those days, the native nobility used to invest a goodly portion of their income in valuable jewels. A treatise on gems, 1041. Jewelers came to the metropolis in larger numbers from the northwestern provinces of India, 
with splendid assortments of gems and precious stones and found profitable market for them here. Their constant attendance on the wealthy gentlemen of the town brought about a sort of intimacy between them and their noble customers. And the latter had thus ample opportunities of learning a great deal about jewels and their qualities. A respectable jeweler in the olden times was considered fit company. And the brilliant gatherings in the Baitakanas of native noblemen always counted one or two of the trade among those present. By constant association with them, some of the leading members of the native nobility became perfect connoisseurs of gems and jewels. Among these may be mentioned the names of the late Rajas Vaidyanath Roy and Kali Kissan Deb Bahadur, the late Babu's Kasanath Mullik, for nursing Mullik and Sidnarain Goes, the late Kumar Kali Kissan Roy, and Babu Srinarain Baisak. My much revered father, the late Babu Huro Kumar Tagore, was also a good judge of jewels, and he likewise took pains to initiate me into their mysteries when I was a little further advanced in age. 1042 Appendices. Prem Chanjahari and Perun Chanjahari, two of the highest authorities of that time in the matter of jewelry, were in constant attendance on him. My respected brother, the humble Maharaja Jyotiendra Mohun Tagore, CSI, has considerably helped me in improving my knowledge. A piece of sapphire possessed apparently of all the requisite qualities of a perfect stone of that description was once brought for sale to my uncle, the late Babu Gopal Lal Tagore, by a Singhalese merchant. Babu Gopal Lal, who had great faith in the knowledge of jewelry possessed by my respected brother, had the sapphire sent to him for inspection and opinion. To the surprise of all, my brother at once pronounced the stone to be a counterfeit one and corroborated his bold verdict by satisfactory practical proofs. With the growth of age, my taste for gems took a wider sphere and I began to feel the want of. Written works, which gave definite accounts of pre Shia stones, the mode of testing them, the way to find out their defects and imperfections and such. Other matters as could materially help one in attain in a pretty correct knowledge of the science of jewelry. I hunted for Sanskrit books devoted exclusively to the subject of precious stones and hunted for a good long time in vain. Sometime after, I came across a work entitled The Ratna Parish, which I procured from the library of the Asiatic Society, Calcutta. This book, though, written in, A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-G-E-M-S, 1043. Sanskrit had notes attached to it in the Ongolese language, and these notes, therefore, came to be of very little practical use to me. About this time, Babu Jahar Lal Jahari, jeweler of Calcutta, gave me much information on the subject. But I was curious to know something of what European jewelers have written about precious stones and had to procure from England the works extant on this subject, there being none available here at the period. With the help of Babu Jahar Lal Mokim, my knowledge about jewels increased. It gave me much pleasure to compare the views enunciated in the English works with those of modern jewelers. And it was at this time that the idea of compiling a book, which I had entertained in my mind from a very early period of my life, commenced to assume a definite shape. The Purnas and the medical and astrological works of the Hindus have thrown a flood of light on the subject, and it became my earnest endeavor to profit by it. The Persian and Arabic works on jewelry that were in my possession helped me to a material extent in obtaining an insight into the views of the Mahomedan authorities. The materials now in hand having been considered sufficient to start a work with, I employed myself in putting them together with a view to publication. Fresh light, important as well as interesting, began to pour in from all sides, and I eagerly took advantage of the new materials thus furnished to me. Latterly, 1044 appendices. Babu Giridhari Lal, a well-known jeweler at present of Calcutta, assisted me in giving anything like a definite shape to the crude views of modern jewelers that have been traditionally handed down from generation to generation. I have succeeded in collecting the names by which the people of Burma, China, Nepal, Afghanistan, and some other Oriental countries designate some of the principal jewels and have inserted them in the body of the work, along with other information obtained personally from them on the jewels in use in their respective countries. I am grateful also to Mr. Caithness of the firm of Messrs. Cook and Kelby Jewel Merchants of Calcutta and to several native jewelers for the identification of many of the stones and for general help through the kind help of my esteemed friend, Mr. O.C. Dutt, I have been able to add a new feature to my work, namely an account of the occult powers of gems from a spiritualist's point of view. My grateful acknowledgments are due to him for the translation from the French and certain other extracts furnished to me. My acknowledgments are also due to the authors and compilers of the several works, to the editors of magazines and newspapers, which I have had to consult while engaged in getting up this work and from which I have sometimes given copious extracts and reproduced illustrations. 
I have a treatise on gems. 1045. Already given a list of all the works which have supplied me with materials for the present compilation. And I take this opportunity of expressing the sense of my gratefulness to any gentleman, professional or amateur, and to the compiler of any work or the editor of any journal or newspaper or not. Enumerated in the list given, from whom I have received help in connection with the present. Work. It only remains for me to express a hope that this work, which I have attempted my best to render useful to those for whom it is intended, will be of practical help to them in testing. Valuing and identifying precious stones and other jewels, and ascertaining various important facts regarding them. I trust also that it will be found quaintly interesting and curious by the general reader. 1046 appendices a treatise on gems, and if among numerous shortcomings the learned find even some merit in the work, may I find favor in their eyes for the same, is the prayer I prefer with my hand upon my head. The end.